All right. Let me just make sure, as usual, that everything is working properly. And as people trickle in, I'm going to finish doing setup for the run, because I have not gotten everything all prepared yet. Figured it would be better to start the stream and get all of this last stuff done as people work their way here. And also, I feel like some people may like to watch the whole preparation side of things. Uh, yeah, I probably don't need to use Staff of Jordan. That works. All right, so uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following along with my shopping list and making sure that I have everything prepared. So I can let me just toss that stuff into a separate bag. So I can go here and organize all this stuff in order of when I will actually need it. So at low levels, I'll need Drums of Fury. We'll also need, uh, what other consumables like? I put Brilliant Wizard Oil here, because I will be starting as Restoration, just because of, you know, dungeon leveling and stuff like that. And what else? I think next would be the level 30 stuff. So this would be, I put there, there, and then my scrolls. Uh, oh, I should also include lesser healing potions here, just in case I end up needing them. Probably won't, I shouldn't, especially if I'm going to be the healer, which will be the case. But it is always better to be safe than sorry. I'll throw that there, then a level 50 stuff. That would be this, 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 fried bonefish goes there. Uh, all right, I think that's all of the consumables that I'll need. Ooh, I still need um, intellect stuff. So what do I want to put up there? Intellect items would be, just bump this over. I think I'll stop at like level 30 for playing Restoration, so I don't really need anything past that. But I have some basic intellect flasks. Uh, hello, Riley World TV. Good to see you. Your druid run the other day made you resub after six months, Loopnock. Ah, good to hear it. Uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty fun run. I'm glad you, or I assume you enjoyed watching it if it got you to resub. This is not going to be like nearly as fast as that, but I will be at least trying to go somewhat fast getting most of the time saves done. I'm not going to be doing stuff like uh, preparing armor sets and whatnot. I think that's probably a little bit too much just for like a casual stream run. But I'm going to be trying to do something similar for Horde. So I can throw that, restock it. Love your streams videos. My guy, keep up the great work. Really helps me get through my work shifts. Awesome. Uh, glad you enjoy them. And I definitely plan to keep going. I don't plan on uh, stopping doing these anytime soon. Now, of course, obviously, once I get all of my testing done for the 10.1.5 changes, which is the main reason I'm doing so many speedruns right now, this will slow down. So, of course, I've done a bunch the last few weeks. And it kind of comes and goes, right? Whenever there's like a new patch, new changes, I like to test out all that stuff, make, you know, changes to my leveling route. And especially with a patch like 10.1.5, which is making significant changes for 60 to 70 and some changes for 10 to 60, I figured it was worth doing a bunch of these runs. And I think the main reason I did as many as I have is also because of the 50% buff. So I already got all the testing that I needed just from like the first few runs, but a lot of people wanted to see how fast can you do it with the 50% buff. I figured, hey, there's leveling changes coming too. You know, two birds, one stone and all of that might as well. Uh, so I did a few more. But I will still, after the patch goes live, I'm going to be doing at least like for another week or so additional 60 to 70 runs because that has a lot of stuff where the changes affect dungeons and I can't realistically test that on the PTR. So I will need to wait for live servers to actually like thoroughly test all that stuff and update my guide. So I still have a lot more runs planned, but eventually I'm going to start pivoting to 
non-retail stuff, so I have a lot planned for like classic speed leveling, is what I'm going to try to get into kind of once all this retail stuff settles down. Uh, I've already been doing classic hardcore, as you can see by the title. I'll be doing that later in the stream. But I think uh, I, I want to try to get into more classic speedruns going forward because it's fun. And it's something that a lot of people have been asking me to do for a while. And I think I'm finally in a position to actually do that. Oh, yeah, can't forget uh, Cracked Radnax Control Gem. Uh, my live split on my screen is covering chat slightly. Let me move that. Uh, hope you're doing good. I have been spam leveling thanks to your guides and the XP buff. It has been great. Can you tell me how to get Dollar on Hearthstone as a DH? Um, is it different? As a DH, you should still be able to pick up the Legion intro. Uh, if you're not, for whatever reason, if they have changed that, if you need to get a Dollar on Hearthstone and you're unable, for whatever reason, to do the Legion intro, or maybe you already did it before and it's bugged, if you talk to the innkeeper in Dollar on in... The main neutral area, I think maybe any innkeeper will do, but I know the one in, like, Ledger Domain Lodge, I think it's called, that one will give you a dollar on Hearthstone for free. And in fact, a lot of people have recommended to me for my speedruns that I just go to Dalaran and talk to the NPC, and they don't realize that it is actually faster on a fresh character to skip the Legion intro and get it that way, just because you actually need to make it to uh, Dalaran before you can do that. But that is, like serviceable as a backup strategy if you can't get it for whatever reason. But I, I do think you should be able to. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to hear that you like the guides and stuff, Anthony Meyer. Glad they've been helping you. Uh, hello, George Isaacson. Good afternoon or good morning. It is, I guess it is technically morning here. It is 11.20 a.m. where I am, but it is almost afternoon. So I guess good afternoon or good morning is the perfect way to say it. Do we have any clue when the Allied races will become free-to-play? No unlock. Uh, yeah, on Wednesday for Europe, on Tuesday for North America. Basically, with patch 10.1.5, they will all become completely free to unlock. And I've already checked it on my alt account. You don't need to do anything. Like, on my alt account right now, if I go onto the 10.1.5 PTR, I have all Allied races. And the only one on that account I've actually unlocked is High Mountain Torrent. So... You don't need to do anything. You literally, I think it's like you get to level 40 with one character, and that is it. Once you get to level 40, you get every single allied race just completely for free. Uh, nice, you're going to make all your characters that you can Kul Tiran. Yeah, Kul Tiran is a very fun race. I definitely play more Kul Tiran if, um, actually now I can. I was going to say if, you know, Alliance was more something that I was able to play, but now technically there is no restriction. Because there's cross-realm guilds, as far as I know, Alliance characters in a guild still count towards, like, um, whatchamacallit, like, the guild kill achievements. So I remember I asked my guild at one point if I could transfer to Void Elf on one of my characters, and they said, you know, they don't want too many Alliance because then it would invalidate the guild things, which is fair, right? And at the time, I also still needed to be Blood Elf so I could do Arcane Torrent on Diurna ads. But at this point, I really don't think I would need to be Ord for any reason, so I might actually play more Alliance characters now that that's an option. Why is everything so expensive on the AH for you? I'm not sure. Uh, depends on the server, really. Uh, Adonasium? Uh, Adonalsium? I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, hello, good to see you. Uh, where am I? Like, in the US? I'm in the US, if that's what you're asking. If you're asking for my server, I'm on Area 52. It's only uh, 319 here in Iceland. Oh, nice. Uh, Rain said, so hyped. I only have two unlocked. I want them Dark Irons. Yeah, Dark Iron is really nice. I'm actually on my main account. I am unlocking an allied race, technically speaking, because if I log out real quick, uh, you can see here, I never bothered to unlock Mechanome. Honestly, purely out of spite, I just, I hate Mechanome so much, I've never done it, and this is my main account, right? So technically speaking, I am getting an allied race uh, unlocked for free with the um, the changes in 10.1.5. So that's nice, I suppose. Uh, you think you have them all? Yeah. I, I mean, if you played during BFA, I think anyone who's played for a little while has them all. The main issue with allied races is, obviously, it sucks as a new player, you know, going to the game and seeing that not only are all of these races unavailable to you, but 
you need to play like a shit ton of the actual game before you even get a chance to unlock them. You can even before the restrictions, you can technically, you know, plan out your stuff. Like on my fresh account, I unlocked High Mountain Tarn relatively early, but still it's for a new player, that's not something that would be very easy to figure out. And also as a returning player, you know, having to go through all this old content that you've never done just to be able to unlock these new races. It, at this point, it is just not great, and I'm glad they're removing the restrictions. You're currently leveling a Windwalker Monk. It took you three hours to get to 40. Was hoping to be a bit quicker. That's still pretty good. Honestly, like, 40 to 60 is the fastest part, I would say, of the early levels. So, yeah, uh, three hours just to 40 is pretty solid. You have a Dark uh, DK Dark Iron. Oh, I also have... Oh, no. I have a DK Regular Dwarf, not a DK Dark Iron. But yeah, DK Dark Iron is a very cool combo. You're in Poland. It's 5 p.m. there. Nice. It is technically 1522. Oh, yeah, because you guys go by, like, the 24-hour um, time windows and stuff. 0% chance you were unlocking Mechanomes. Isn't it a multi-week unlock? I'm not sure. I mean, actually, I think if I wanted to, I could probably go unlock Mechanomes right now. I don't remember what the changes are now. It used to take a while, right? Because you used to need a bunch of different achievements. Now I think you just need the reputation, which I have. I have it all. I just have refused to complete the Mechanome unlock quest. So, yeah. Uh, I do know Mechanomes, like, Mechagon in general, if you didn't play it current content, was a bit of a pain to go back through and get all the rep stuff done. You played a lot in BFA, been playing since Mop, really? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was the nice thing about the allied races. You know, if you played current content, right, it wasn't too bad to unlock. You kind of got a lot of that for free. But yeah, it, it was a little bit rough going back. All right, let me, let me quickly go back. I need to get comfortable riders barding. So if you're just joining, uh, I am still doing setup. Hopefully shouldn't take too long, but I... Uh, whatchamacallit? I actually... Uh, ended up doing classic raids, uh, or, or rather, I was in the roster for my classic guilds raid night last night, and that lasted until like 2 in the morning, so I was planning on doing some of the prep before I went to sleep, but then that went like way longer than I expected, so I didn't want to delay the stream by like another hour while I got all this set up, so you get to watch me do it live, and I'm still missing a few things. I'm not going to be getting like all of the fancy stuff. So I'm not going to be getting gear sets or uh, like going super crazy with consumables, but I will be getting bags, uh, Darkman Fair quest items, because the Darkman Fair is still active, I believe, unless I just got my days mixed up, which I have done in the past, so I would not be surprised. i just do Chrono Cloth, and there we go. Actually, before I forget, let me just make sure I haven't fucked that up. Uh... Yes, the Darkman Fair ends at midnight, so we have plenty of time. Uh, also, if you guys want to follow along with my prep, here, let me get this copied. Uh, so I'll throw this in chat real quick. I have that linked on uh, my Discord as well, and I included it in the description of that video, the, the recent speedrun I did. But this is my shopping list that I'm going through kind of step by step, making sure I have everything. So this is kind of my process for preparing for runs. I have this Google Doc and I will just kind of go through it top to bottom, check my bags. Do I have everything, etc. And eventually I will make this Google Doc into like, you know, a more polished page on my website and stuff like that. But for now, I think this is this is like good enough for me. Right. So I just whenever I need to create a checklist or remember something i just throw it in a google doc like i mentioned on my speed run that i had a cheat sheet right and some people were like oh can you share the cheat sheet and to be clear it is literally just like shorthand bullet points of most of my leveling guide it's just i've condensed it into like one word or like phrase things so that i could quickly glance at it and be like oh yeah remember to do that kind of thing uh, it's like nothing revolutionary just kind of like a, a memory mechanism to help me in the middle of runs uh, let me catch up and chat a little bit. What's the best DPS spec for Retail Shaman? Um, so, I would say, obviously, that stuff, you're talking like endgame, it always changes, right? But I can quickly, you know, if you want an idea, I can pull up Warcraft Logs, which I would say, if you're ever trying to look for statistics, Warcraft Logs is a great resource. So I can look at Raids, Avarice, and then I'm going to click the Statistics tab. I can, um, I'm, I'm not going to, like, quickly 
change my screen, but I'll just read you the results. So the best generally regarded as the best way to look at it is go to like the recent raid, which in this case is Aberus, then go to statistics, uh, 95th percentile for damage on all bosses on Mythic difficulty. And as of right now, Elemental is marginally ahead. Elemental is in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th place for overall damage. And Enhancement is close behind at 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. But the thing that you need to remember is Enhancement provides the group with Wind Fury Totem, which is extremely powerful. Like, Wind Fury is a very powerful bonus for a lot of melee specs like Warriors, Demon Hunters, etc. So even though Enhancement is still slightly lower than Elemental, its actual damage contribution in a lot of uh, cases will be larger because it provides a lot of valuable utility that it, Elemental doesn't have. But both are doing really solid, right? Like, both of them are above the midway point, and that is really all you can ask for. Like, there's a lot of good specs below the midway point in terms of balance here that are still run. Like, Balance Druid is considered to be below average according to these statistics, but I think anyone can tell you that Balance Druid is still quite good. And, you know, Windwalker Monk is below here, but Windwalker still has a lot of really niche use cases, you know, like AoE damage and stuff like that. It brings a Monk buff, so if you don't have a Brewmaster, it's really nice to have. So I would say, as always, don't treat damage rankings as gospel, but specifically for Shaman right now, things are looking pretty good. You have two very strong specs. Uh, why not level 1 to 60? Why start at 10? I'm playing an allied race. Allied races start at level 10. Sadly, you have to go, but good luck and have fun. Hopefully see you again today when I come back. Uh, yeah, no problem. And I will probably be streaming for a while. So I think by the time you come back, if it's like within a few hours, I might be already done with the run. I'm not sure how long this will take, probably around four hours, but I will be still streaming Classic Hardcore after the fact. So you may catch that. Uh, the server you're on is garbage. There are two Cracked Radinax control gems, and both are for a lot of money. Um, let me see, Cracked Radinax. How much is it on my server? Yeah, so on Area 52, it's actually not bad. But the thing about Cracked Radinax Control Gems is I will always say, uh, if you miss the speedrun, by the way, these things are back. They have no level requirement, so they're viable for speedruns once again. Thank goodness, because they are awesome to use. But you can very easily farm this yourself. If you don't know how to farm it, uh, go unlock Argus, and that is really easy. All you need to do is you have to like complete a few quests in Dalaran. Uh, you talk to Khadgar. And then you go over to, uh, where is it? I think, oh yeah, I have to go to Broken Isles, then click Argus. And then you go to Antoran Wastes, and there are three rare mobs. It's Admiral Relvar, Commander Tezlaz, and Zanarian the Allseer. Three rares in this section. Uh, and you can see here right now, Admiral Relvar is a world quest. And so is Commander Texlaz. So actually right now is a great chance to farm your own Cracked Radnex Control Gems. You can kill each rare once per day on every single character. And it has like a, I think, 33% drop chance from each rare. So I would say if you kill all three, you have good odds of getting one. Obviously it's randomness, right? So you may get none. I've had some times where I get a Radnex Gem off every single one of those rares. So whenever I'm like preparing for a speedrun or something or trying to stock up on Cracked Radnex... I will park a bunch of my alts in this little area in Antoran Wastes. And then whenever these two are part of uh, World Quest, I log on, I kill both of them on every single alt, and I end up with like six or seven Cracked Radnax gems. It's a really good way to farm it. Because when these guys are part of the World Quest, they will respawn like once per minute. So you can very easily kill them. It's really easy to farm it. Uh, honestly, I would never recommend buying a Radnax gem off the auction house unless it's really, really cheap and you're really, really lazy, which sometimes I am. So I have done it, but if you're trying to save gold, definitely just farm it yourself. Uh, not too difficult. Uh, what keyboard am I using? Um, it's, uh, to give you an idea of how garbage my keyboard is, and I mean, I say garbage, right? But it's, it works just fine for me. I literally, I replaced my keyboard a little while ago. I googled cheapest Amazon keyboard, and I found some $10 keyboard on Amazon, and I ordered it, and it got here within like a day. And that's the keyboard that I'm using. It's nothing special. It literally costs $10, 
It has no, none of those flashy little buttons. Like it, it doesn't do that thing where it has like little rainbow lights. It's just a keyboard and it works fine for me. So yeah, that, that is the keyboard I'm using. It's also the mouse I'm using. I have like a, also like a five, $10 mouse from Amazon. And I play on a laptop, which is not really that fancy. And um, yeah, basically nothing about my setup is fancy at all. And I couldn't tell you the names of any of the stuff that I'm using because it is not notable whatsoever. Uh, what got me into speedrunning WoW? I first started speedrunning WoW in the Shadowlands pre-patch, or at least officially speedrunning it, right? Like, I've always been interested in speed leveling just for fun. So I've been doing this for years just for shits and giggles, right? But never recording it or never actually doing it seriously. My first recorded run where I got the world record was uh, back in, yeah, the Shadowlands pre-patch back in October of 2020. And I... I don't know, I, it was, my guild had already gotten Cutting Edge, uh, Blizzard had just announced that they were delaying the Shadowlands launch, and I was bored, I had nothing else to do, so I was like, why don't I try to, like, actually record one of my speedruns and just post it for fun? And then after that, I said, why don't I make a leveling guide? Just for fun. And they blew up. And then ever since then, because I know people like watching these, I've just been recording my speedruns and doing that. Uh, one is melee DPS and one is range, so yeah, obviously, you know, whether you play elemental or enhanced depends on your comp, and I would say, if you are playing Shaman in an endgame raid environment, it is generally speaking expected that you know how to play both enhanced and elemental. Like, I, obviously depends on your, you know, level, right? If you're joining a casual guild and you're telling them, I just play enhanced, sure fine like if they're just doing slight mythic prog or aotc or something like that but if you're joining like a serious cutting edge guild i can tell you right now like if i was recruiting for a serious cutting edge guild and somebody applied and basically said i only play enhancement shaman i would basically be like okay but you you at least need to be comfortable with ellie as an off spec and that's kind of the case for most pure dps classes the only one that kind of gets a pass is hunter i would say generally speaking if you play hunter like you're not expected as a ranged hunter to know survival. So you're usually expected to be able to play BM and MM. But if a ranged hunter is like, I don't touch survival, I'd be like, yeah, that's understandable. Uh, on the flip side, though, if you main survival, you are expected to know how to play BM and MM. Uh, for, and this is all, once again, for like serious endgame mythic progression. Obviously, play whatever the fuck you want to have fun. Uh, don't listen to me on how you should play. But since the entire question is what is good for endgame rating, I do think that is an important disclaimer to make sure that, you know, if you are seriously trying to get into Mythic, you have your expectations set. That is generally speaking the expectation with any serious Mythic guild. Uh, my man, 12 Euro Logitech keyboard here. Yeah, I, I'm using something similar. Am I planning to speedrun on official hardcore? Fuck no. I, I literally have zero interest in speedrunning hardcore. Because... To me, speedrunning, right? Like, I've leveled in WoW so many times over the years. This is just me trying to challenge myself while, you know, having fun leveling characters and stuff like that. The entire point of this is because I've already done it so many times normally. I have not played official hardcore normally. I, obviously, I played on the PTR a little bit so far. I'm gonna play the official hardcore servers when they release, but I'm not gonna speedrun it. I'm gonna do the exact opposite. I'm going to slow run official hardcore when it comes out. I'm going to play it at my own pace. I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to do anything risky or stupid. And I'm just going to enjoy the experience and try to hit level 60. That is how I plan on playing official hardcore. Uh, yeah, I just to be clear, right? Like, I don't speed run everything I play. Speed running is like an additional challenge when I've already done literally everything there is to do. I like playing games slowly the first 20 times, just like most people, I would say. Uh, hello, Infinic. I'm doing good today. Hope you are as well. Uh, you found mouse makes a big difference compared to a cheap one, but the keyboards don't. Yeah, it, it definitely depends. This mouse is fine for me. Uh, Dominic said, oh my god, I finally made it to a stream. Good to have you here. Uh, Gregor said, you measure this all in real time, but what if you go by slash play time? Are there any leveling tricks? Yes. Um, too many to count, really. There are definitely, like, uh, people have shown me times where they're able to get to, like, max level in slash played times of an hour or something like that. There are technically sets of daily repeatable quests that you can do that take, like, five minutes 
they get a lot of experience. So if you level a character over the course of like two months or something like that, doing the same daily quest for five minutes every single day, I guess? I suppose you could also kind of cheese it by like letting your rested XP accumulate every single time and then logging off and doing it that way. Basically, there are a million different ways to kind of cheese slash play time, which is why I don't really care about it. Because personally, I've never enjoyed leveling like that. I've never enjoyed finding tiny little things that I can do um, every single day. Because half the time, I figured that's more work, right? Trying to make sure that like I log in every single day to do like little different tasks. I'd rather just sit down, power through it, and watch Netflix while I go. Or in this case, you know, stream it, right? Um, but before I ever did videos or streams, I would always just watch something on another monitor while I leveled. And just power through it in one sitting. So, uh, yeah, it's also not that much faster, right? Like, let's say if leveling in retail took like 24 hours and there was a way to do it in like two hours slash played, that's a different story. But when I'm already able to do like 10 to 60 in, what did I do it in my world record? Like two and a half hours or casually I can do it in three and a half hours as I showed in my runs last week. And then let's say if you did all of the really cheesy stuff for slash play time, you're doing like an hour and a half or something in that range. You're saving like an hour or two for all this extra effort, and it's it's not worth it. So yeah. Uh, first time in stream here. Hello from Australia. Hello, Alex. Good to see you. Do I do a speed run every day? God no. Uh, I would die. <laughs> I, I would fucking die. Um, I'm doing a lot of speed runs recently, right? So like right now, I've uploaded a bunch. Uh, that is just because uh. The new patch is coming out, 10.1.5, and there's leveling changes, right? And I I have a leveling guide, right? So I need to make sure that I get all of my testing done before that so I can update my guide and, you know, other people can use that stuff. So I'll be honest, even the amount of speedruns I've done so far, it's exhausting, right? You know, uh, getting all of this stuff set up, um, doing all of these different runs, it, it definitely gets tiring. But, um, I mean, I think it's worth it, right? So, uh, I will probably, like, once I'm done with all of my testing, specifically for 60 to 70, like, after, you know, in a, a few weeks or so, these runs will slow down, and then eventually, you know, I'll, I'll do other stuff, right, as usual, until, uh, let me throw that there, yeah, I'll do other stuff until I get to a point where, let me make sure I have this set up properly, yeah, because I want to do this, okay, um, do other stuff until, you know, there's more leveling changes. And usually I post, like, one speed run every few months at the bare minimum. So, like, for the past few months, I've at least uploaded one run every so often. But obviously, yeah, there's been a bunch recently, and that's why. It's for the, the testing changes. How long have I been playing WoW? Since 2005. Yeah. Uh, since I was six years old, I've been playing WoW. It was either late 2004 or early 2005, like right around when it launched. Obviously, I was still extremely young, so it's not like I was doing anything very serious. But yeah, I, I have been playing, like sitting next to my dad uh, on the couch, right? Ever since I was, you know, very, very little tiny kid. So this is this game has been basically my entire childhood. Uh, anyone know what the best tanks for 10.1 are going to be? Well, 10.1 is already out, right? Um... 10.1.5 is doing slight changes, but it's not going to really shift the meta that much. Um, I think the only notable thing is that Guardian Druid is getting some sizable buffs, so that'll push it up a little bit. Um, but honestly, right now, tank balance is pretty solid. I would say the only tank that I really can't strongly recommend at the moment is Prot Warrior. Prot Warrior is kind of in a weird spot where it doesn't do a ton of damage, it's not the tankiest tank out there, and it brings nothing special to the group. So... It's not bad, right? Like, overall, tank balance is definitely extremely tight, but it Prot Warrior offers nothing. Guardian Druid is, like, a little trickier to play, but it does massive damage. Blood Decay does low damage, but has great utility and great survivability. So, like, basically, every single tank is either just overall good. Like, Brewmaster and Vengeance DH are both very strong. Prop Heli also very strong, has insane damage. Uh, and Prop Heli is, like, unkillable right now. It also offers fantastic utility. So I think the best tank overall at the moment is probably Protection Paladin, just because of how much it can do. It's extremely tanky, it does ridiculous damage, it has great utility. 
Uh, but Vengeance is also tanky when played well, has pretty good utility. It's a little bit more on the niche end of things like Sigil of Silence and stuff like that. But still, in some cases, Vengeance utility owns. And also its damage is ridiculous. Uh, so there's a lot of like really good tanks, a lot of um, them that bring like different good things to the table. Brewmaster 2, good survivability, good damage, uh, solid utility, like Ring of Peace and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it really is just Prot Warrior at the moment that's kind of in a weird spot. Protection Warrior is kind of always either really good or really bad. Because it's either, you know, like Season 1 early of Dragonflight where he was like the top dog, or... You have cases like the very end of Shadowlands. Like I think a lot of people didn't even realize how good Prot Warrior was towards the end of Shadowlands because it kind of popped off in Season 4 and towards the end of Sepulchre where there was no real race to world first for it to be showcased in. But like Banner of the Necrolords or whatever that thing was, Conqueror's Banner, uh, Prot Warrior was actually busted at the very end of Shadowlands. It's just... It was kind of like a blood decay scenario where it required them to get really good gear to be able to pull that build off with like 100% uptime on Banner or Conqueror's Banner, but it was really, really, really busted. It just kind of wasn't in a race to world first scenario, so it wasn't as good. And also, Prot Warrior was really good at the same time when Blood Decay had Sepulchre 4 piece, so... Yeah, uh, Prot Warrior also couldn't run Gavel, whereas even Guardian Druid could run Gavel, which was kind of whack. Um, but Prot Warrior basically is either insanely tanky and does insane damage, or it is just de dead in the water because it offers nothing else. It's a very weird tank. Guardian Druid is kind of in a similar spot, where if Guardian Druid isn't really good at like one thing, like extremely tanky like it was in Legion, or like right now, does ridiculous damage it also kind of falls off because it's like why would you bring a tank that offers no great utility or raid buff if it doesn't do anything special but like i said before right now a well-played guardian druid it does stupid damage it is like on the level of a dps it's crazy so yeah uh guardian druid at least is a solid tank option and also it, it is just like i said very well balanced overall uh let me, I'm going to quickly read the rest of messages in chat right now, and then I'm going to finish doing speedrun prep, and then we can kind of jump into the speedrun, and I will continue to read messages as we go, right? But I, I want to get this thing going, because right now, you know, I'm in a weird spot where I still need to finish prep. Um, Thank you for all you do for the WoW community. No problem, uh, Zophir. Uh, I, I enjoy doing this stuff. Uh, you, Same here, but you're a bit older. Awesome, yeah. Uh, what does everyone do with all the characters at max level? I don't even play most of them. A lot of times at this point, I just level characters for the sake of it. I finish a lot of my characters in the PTR too, which means I never get to play them after the fact. Or I have to re-level them on live servers. So, yeah. Uh, what's the daily quest you speak of? Uh, back in the day, I don't even know. Because I've never done it, right? But I remember there was one in Missa Pandaria that some people use. But like I said, you can do it with a bunch of stuff. Like, the specific one that somebody sent me was, like, a daily quest in Mop. I don't remember which one. Uh, but there's, like, a bunch of different quests like that, like daily quests that give good experience. So if it, a daily quest hub gives good XP and is really fast to complete, yeah, you can do it in, like, five minutes and then repeat it ad nauseum over months to level up. But, you know, it's, in my opinion, not worth it. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, SKVNK? finally caught alive good to have you here um sorry I, I don't really know how that's supposed to be pronounced uh tiller rep dailies i could see it being tillers yeah that i would believe that i think you'll use your alts to do dailies for the wow token no i i don't really care about buying wow tokens and stuff uh you can right that is absolutely something that people i know use their alts for personally i'm not interested in doing that the amount of time like honestly think about like paying for your own sub with gold is 99 percent of the time i think the amount of time it would take you to farm gold to pay for the wow token i'm gonna be really it, it's just not worth the time right like i i'd rather just pay for a sub i mean it's what like if you get like the one year thing it goes down to what's the discounted version like 12 dollars a month like 12 dollars a month is infinitely more worth it to me than farming 300,000 gold just to buy a single month. I That is my personal perspective on it. I know some everybody has their own different situations. Uh, if you're in a position where it is very easy for you to farm gold and you value you know $12 more than that, go for it, right? Um, I'm just saying for me personally, I don't care enough. I have enough stuff that I need to spend my time on. 
Uh, you love my persona so jolly. Uh, I appreciate it. I don't know. Um, I, I, I never would have thought to describe myself as jolly, but uh, I will I will take that compliment. Uh, how much gold do you spend usually with the items for the speedruns? I mean, it depends, right? Because to give you an idea, like I spent like about 100k stocking up and all of this stuff, but you'll notice I haven't used like a lot of these items. So I have like about 100k worth of consumables on my banking character, the one I'm on right now, but I only go through like maybe 5 to 10% of those items in any single run. So the idea is I just prepare it ahead of time and then I use a bunch of those runs for an individual speed run. It's hard for me to say exactly how much that costs. I think you can maybe say like the faster runs uh, maybe take like around 5 to 10k gold tops. And if I'm doing a super serious speed run, run with gear sets, it's kind of variable. It depends on how much I'm willing to spend on like BOE armor sets. But I only do that for like the world record runs, like the Druid one that I did a little while ago. Uh, hello, that Hobbit. Howdy from Down Under. You love my speedrun videos. Glad to hear it. Uh, back when you started playing, a buddy got you into the game on the pretense of it's basically free. You can just farm the gold for a sub. Never managed that once. Yeah, it, it's... I, I Obviously, if every single person in the game could easily farm enough gold to pay for a sub, it, it would be nonsensical. That would not be actually a thing. So... I'm sure there's a lot of people who are extremely good at making gold who can reliably pay for the sub on their own, but that narrative that people keep saying of, oh, you can just pay your own sub by farming gold, it's like, at that point, are you really enjoying the game, right? Like, if you're spending all that time just paying for the ability to play the game, I'd rather just spend $12 and be able to do whatever the fuck I want with my one month of time instead of having to constantly farm gold to pay for it. Also, if you pay... $12, right, and get the discounted sub, right? You could then use that gold on other things that aren't a WoW token, right? Because it is just objectively a better conversion rate. So just spend your time farming gold to buy whatever the fuck you want. I don't know, mounts, pets, transmog, anything. I just, I don't know. Personally, like I said, I consider it to be a waste of time, but to each their own. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, obviously, people who uh, like farm gold for a living, right? Yeah, that that's a, a different thing. Uh, hi from UK, loving the speedruns. Only just discovered them on YouTube. Glad to hear it. Uh, thanks for joining the stream, Jackie. Gotta agree about the token. The one month sub of WoW is about one hour of work for you. For you, getting 300k gold is a lot more than one hour of work. Yeah. Um, what's a good DPS class for endgame to level for those of uh, us choosing to come back to Dragonflight? Well, I would say don't choose your spec based on how easy it is to level, right? Like, I'm doing speedruns, leveling speedruns, right? And I can say which spec is better or worse for it just because I'm doing it for fun. But you should never decide based on leveling because obviously leveling in this day and age in World of Warcraft, it's just a means to an end. Um, it is, you know, the real journey, I would say, for modern WoW starts when you hit max level. It's the process of, you know, getting gear, preparing for raids, PvP, dungeons, whatever it is that you're interested in. So some specs are going to be worse for leveling. Uh, oh, somebody whispered me. Uh, yeah, uh, some specs are going to be worse for leveling than others, but don't base your decision on that. If you're asking, like, what's good for endgame stuff, there's a lot of different sources. Like I said earlier, check Warcraft logs, look at statistics and stuff like that. This is my banking character. What does my main look like? This character looks awesome. This character is literally not transmogged. It is in uh, generic Zerolite Caverns gear. Uh, I, yeah, this character is just generic stuff. I, um, uh, if Pater, if you're watching the person who just whispered me, thank you. Glad to hear you love the videos. Um, yeah, I literally got this character into Zerolite Caverns just to farm rep tokens to transfer to my main, which is why it has like basic Zerolite Cavern stuff. But yeah, I can I can maybe show my main again uh, before I start the stream. I main a Vengeance Demon, Demon Hunter for reference. Just remind me before I start or start the speed run. I mean, uh, congrats to your world record. And good luck on this one. Thank you, Marco. Appreciate it. Uh, not deciding based on leveling, just asking what to level. Uh, it would depend on the class, right? So if you um like if you have a, a class picked out, like oh this is the class that I want to play or something like that, and you're asking like which spec would be the best within that level, that would probably be a better thing that I can answer. Uh, you also main Vengeance DH, awesome. Yeah, Vengeance DH is very very fun. Love to play it. How long would a good speed run take considering just we buff and draft, no other consumables and gear? Um, I mean 
with the 50% XP buff, I've done a bunch of stuff like that. I would say, for the record, right, I don't even really consider gun shoes and goblin gliders and this stuff to be, like, really fancy consumables. This is dirt cheap, right? If I go to the auction house right now, goblin glider kit, right? Goblin glider kit, how much is 20 of this? 69 golds. Haha, <laughs> funny number, right? That is nothing. I loot that off, like, killing two mobs in Zerla Caverns. Gun shoes is a little, little tiny bit more pricier. If I go to gun shoes and I buy 20 gun shoes, that's 1,500 gold, give or take. That's still not a ton. And right, you're not going to use all 20 gun shoes, right? But the amount of time that just 20 gun shoes will save you throughout a leveling run is worth way more than 1,500 gold. These things are very, 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 very helpful. The stuff that I would not recommend for casual runs and the stuff that really doesn't save a lot of time are all of these things. Like you can pass on all of these tiny consumables. This is like very, very, very minimal. But everything in this bag right here, I would highly recommend getting. Uh, you don't really need to get uh, swim speed potions and shimmer scale diving suits, though that said, uh, they are very cheap. Sh shimmer scale diving suits, uh, 22 gold a piece. If you buy 20, it's only 500. And I use maybe one or two at most in speed runs and only for Alliance, right? So you can buy 20 and use them across like five different speed runs and it costs you 500 gold, right? Um, even a lot of this stuff isn't super expensive, like lemon herb filet, speaking of which I should buy more, but lemon herb filet is, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Somebody just gouged the price. Never mind. When I was preparing for the speed run, this is dirt cheap. So it looks like somebody just bought all of them off the auction house, probably because of my prep video. But normally this is like five gold per. And also the recipe is really easy to get. Like the recipe is um, like, look at this. A thousand gold for this and you can get it much cheaper, right? This is just people gouging the age prices uh, in the wake of my prep video. Um, but this requires two Dark Moon Dagger Maw. Okay, well, how much is Dark Moon Dagger Maw? Uh, six gold. So a single lemon herb filet, once you have the recipe, is 12 gold. And realistically speaking, you can probably get the recipe for cheaper. And I see a lot of people selling it for really cheap. So you don't even need this stuff. But even then, a lot of it is not that expensive. It only gets a little bit pricier when you get to like battle scarred augment runes. And mind you, this is nine main stat. That's nothing. This is like purely min maxi speedrun crap that I do just for fun. Right? When I'm leveling casually, I do not use this stuff. I only use this stuff. Uh, also, like, mount equipment, Comfortable Riders Barding, that is, let's see, Comfortable Riders Barding is 65 gold. This is the best 65 gold you will ever spend if you're leveling as a DPS or a healer. Not being able to be dazed while mounted is so useful. So, yeah, absolutely, I would say... Invest in this stuff, bigger bags, right? You don't need Azureve. Like, Azureve Expedition Sack, that's the biggest bag you can get, right? Uh, but if I look, Azureve Expedition, that's like 2,000 gold per. That seems like a lot, right? For 34 slot bags. But then if I go over here and I go to Wilder Cloth Bag, Wilder Cloth Bag is 17 gold, and it's 32 slots. So it's almost as good, and it's infinitely cheaper, right? So whenever I'm casually leveling characters, I get the 32 slot bag, right? Super cheap. I only do this because it, on the off chance that I need those extra, however it is, two, four, six, eight bag slots, it's nice to have if I'm doing a speed run, but it is totally not necessary. Uh, for the first time Raiders Mythic, is it easier to learn as a melee or ranged DPS? Neither. I would say it, the easiest thing to learn for Mythic Raiders or Mythic Dungeoners, whatever you enjoy more. Don't pick your thing on, oh, some streamer said this is easier to play. Find a spec that you enjoy playing and main that, right? Even, like, let's say you decided to pick the hardest DPS spec in the game, which, I don't know, that it's up for debate. I think a lot of people would say right now it's like Arcane Mage, but, you know, don't get mad at me if that you don't agree with me. I'm just picking a spec that is considered to be hard. So let's say you decided to play Arcane Mage despite it being considered one of the hardest specs. Well, if you truly loved Arcane Mage, I would say that is your best option for getting into Mythic Raiding, because if you enjoy playing it, you're willing to actually put in the effort and learn it and get really good at it, and that's going to be the best thing. Rather than picking an easy spec, like, oh, somebody says BM Hunter is easy. Oh, so, well, I don't really enjoy BM Hunter, but somebody said it's a good starters class, so I'm going to put in the work to learn this. No, do not do that. Never a good idea. Never go by what is easy to get into or what is meta. Just pick what you enjoy, right? Like, people will tell you Vengeance DH isn't meta. 
I play Vengeance DH. Why? Because I fucking love Vengeance DH. A ton of people going into this tier told me that it was a massive mistake for me to pl be playing my Vengeance DH and I should be sticking with Brewmaster Monk. And I said, I don't fucking care. I'm going to play what I think is fun. Right. I need to, uh, I need to buy two more quest items. Uh, and okay, I'll read these last two messages. Then I will finish preparation and then I will catch up and chat and start the run. Uh, hey, I was just curious on what you meant for alts doing daily quests. I I'm not going to talk about that anymore. It's a, it, I was just responding to somebody answering a question. It's not something I actually recommend. Um, just ignore that, right? It's not important. Uh, it's always easier to learn something you actually enjoy because you're going to put the effort into it. Exactly. Hi, man. Thanks for your guides. They're the reason why I was able to level my alts just like I did in the 2010s. I started to enjoy the process a lot more. Yeah. Uh, it definitely is more fun when you're like really min-maxing it. Um, but yeah, uh, Rudy from Polska, glad to hear you like the guides. That's what you want to hear, Vengeance for Life. Yeah, I've been playing Vengeance DH on and off since Legion, and I absolutely love it. Uh, you have the same way with your Mistweaver Monk. So much fun to do plus 18 keys. Yep. Uh, you learned how hard Arcane, was. Arcane Mage is now after maining Mage for so long. You swapped to Rep Pally because you saw how much damage it was doing and fell in love with it. Yeah. Uh, best way you can try out new spec, or best way you can find something that you enjoy is just try out a bunch of new specs, see what you find fun, and then uh, stick with that. Okay, let me... I'm going to finish prep. So like I said, I have my speedrunning uh, Google Doc open. I'm just going to scroll through here. So I have, for weapons, Elemental Force... Um, I have rings, so these two, that's going to cover it. I have cloak with minor power, yep. Uh, necklace with mark of the claw, yep, yep. Shoulders with the Missa Pandaria shoulder enchant, got that. Uh, I'm missing chest with greater stats. Okay, so I need to get, open up my collection, heirlooms. Uh, let's go down to shaman. Uh, in case you are just joining, I'll just relink this just in case you want to follow along. Because uh, I linked this earlier, so I'll just throw this in chat. You can follow along in that Google Doc. This is basically the stuff that I'm reading out loud, that is what I'm reading from. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Champion's Death Dealer Breastplate out of my collection. And I will chuck this here, and then I'm going to get uh, Greater Stats. Oh crap, I need to mail it. So I think it's, I think it's Greater Stats. Enchant Chest. Yeah, increases all stats by four. And I cannot apply this directly to the chest piece because it's too high item level. But since this enchant doesn't have a level requirement, I can mail it over to a low level character. So I can do, um, where is it? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I can take this and then let's say I'm going to log out. Uh, I must have some low level character here. So I can create a new character, create... Um, Let's just go with a Maghar Orc Shaman, like what I will be playing. And I'm just going to create Harl Shaman Test. Doesn't fit. All right. Uh, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to hop back over. Basically, I'm mailing over my Heirloom and the scroll to this level 10 character. I'm going to apply the enchant and then mail it back. Am I using speed gems? Um, whenever I have gear with sockets, I use speed gems. I don't have... RL Shaman Test. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any crafted gear or anything on this character for this run, so I will not be using Speed Gems just because I don't have it available. But I use Speed Gems in um, my World Record run whenever I do have gear with sockets. <laughs> Silly Harald and Shamans and Speed are like oil and water. I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. Uh, really think Shaman is not the worst. Compared to some other specs, Shaman definitely, you know, it, it could be worse, right? Uh, also, I mean, this is what won the poll, right? So I'm not saying Shaman is like the best thing ever, but the entire point of me doing these runs and letting people decide what I play is I'm playing some of the specs that are considered to be less popular, less like speedrunning viable, specifically so that I can see exactly how good they are compared to, uh, you know, the meta specs like Guardian Druid, Windwalker Monk, etc., uh, what non-pet class do I recommend to someone doing their first speedrun? Not going for world record or anything. Any specific race that works better? I mean, Druid is definitely a good option. Druid is, I would say, very easy to pick up and just has a lot going for it in terms of speedruns. Really can't go wrong with that. So I would say that would probably be my recommendation. But, 
I mean, Monk is good too. The only reason I wouldn't necessarily recommend Monk is because Windwalker might take a little bit to adjust to initially, but it is still quite good. How much does it cost for a full set of heirlooms max level? Quite a bit. Heirlooms definitely are an investment, but I would say if you plan on leveling a lot of characters, they are a good investment because you can reuse them, right? You can use the same heirlooms over and over on a lot of different characters, but prioritize the ones that can be shared, like rings, uh, where are these? Like rings here, you can use them on any characters. This thing, Unstable Elemental Confluence, that's another really good one that you can use on every single character. Um, Minari Training Amulet is my go-to necklace. You can have these cloaks that you get from BFA Assaults. They have every primary stat. They have good secondaries. Uh, they actually do swap between Alliance and Horde, which isn't really well communicated, but you actually only need one of these. It will dynamically swap between the Alliance and Horde version when you mail it. So uh, this is another really good option. Uh, invest in those first. Make sure that you're getting heirlooms you can use on a lot of different characters, and then start going for like the armor set. So if you want to level a bunch of leather characters, get the leather heirlooms, etc. Uh, hi, Haraldin. Just found you on YouTube. Thanks for the great content. Question, how long does it usually take me to reach 60 on Classic on a speedrun? I don't speedrun Classic. So, yeah. Uh, I'm eventually going to try and play Classic speedruns, but as for how long it takes me to reach 60 in Classic, like a few days, I guess? Because when I level in Classic, I don't level, like, I don't do speedruns, right? Um, I'm working on getting, you know, uh, more familiar with the routing and stuff like that, and uh, it, you know, in a few months from now, we'll see. I might do classic speedruns. Um, but yeah, it takes me just about as long as everyone else. Maybe a little bit faster, because I generally level fairly efficiently, but I am not a classic speedrunner. So, uh, not fast, is what I can say. Uh, you've made Ellie Shaman all X-Pack, and you're fighting for your life to do decent damage. You played Devoker for two weeks and did really close to your sim. You're prepping to switch to Aug for your guild, though. Um, this is not PTR Hardcore. I will be doing um, classic hardcore after the retail speedrun. So it'll be later on in the stream. Uh, Shaman is really rough early on, but Enhance gets nutty later on in leveling. Um, Shaman's definitely faster than DK. DK is actually not bad. Um, and I have done a Rogue speedrun, and it was it was pretty awful. It was about as awful as you might expect. Rogue is definitely the slowest for leveling out of any class by far. Uh, why didn't I do Time Walking Dungeons at my last Druid speedrun? I don't think Time Walking Dungeons are as good as people think they are. Uh, I think they are heavily overrated. They're easy. They're fast, relatively speaking, right? Like, if you're not efficiently questing, spamming time walking dungeons is really simple because everyone's getting the same speed out of it. So it seems fast because if you're slowly questing with like an unoptimized route, time walking is going to be faster. But if you're questing with an optimized route and you actually know what you're doing, right? It's faster than time walking. So I really don't think time walking is as much, as good as it's cracked up to be. Um, but also, I was on the PTR. So. I wouldn't have been able to even if I wanted to. Uh, 60 to 65 is like five dungeons, which takes 25 to 30 minutes-ish. Eh. Um, depends. Uh, whatchamacallit. What's the add-on that shows the gear when you hover over it in bags? I believe that's Mogget. I could be wrong, though. When will I start? Soon, TM. Whenever I'm done preparing. Is there a community for retail speedruns? I, I mean, there's no, like, official community, but you can join my Discord. Like, I, I suppose my Discord technically is a community for retail speedruns, because uh, that's what we talk about a lot, right? A lot of the people in my Discord join there because they like my speedruns, so there's a lot of discussion regarding speedrun strats and stuff like that. Are the scouting map heirlooms worth it? That's a good question. Um, no, I don't really think so. So specifically, the, the map of these things, it's... I, I've, like, almost never used these. I have some of these scouting maps that I have literally never touched once ever. I got them just because, right? Might as well. Um, but if you are really trying to be conservative with your gold, this is like the last thing you should ever buy. The best map by far is Eastern Kingdoms. This is the only good one ever because there are certain flight points specifically for Alliance, specifically in Eastern Kingdoms along the leveling route, like Duskwood, Red Ridge, etc., like Loch Modan as well. This map, and only this map, I would say probably is worth getting. It's the only one I've ever used. All of the other ones, just avoid them. They're not worth it. Uh, really, really a waste of 10,000 gold. Also, like 10,000 gold is just, or what is it? it? I think it's 5,000 now. I always get that confused because they change the price at some point. Um, I, I don't remember which one it is. Either way, it's exorbitantly expensive at either 5,000 or 10,000 for something so 
useless. The fact that it costs that much is just fucking dumb. I don't know why Blizzard hasn't lowered the price yet. Because it's not good. I wouldn't buy it at a thousand gold, or at least I wouldn't recommend people buy it. I bought it because what the fuck else am I going to do with my gold? Um, it's 10k right now. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Yeah. Um, yeah, it 10k is way too much for something that you're basically never going to use. Um, hey man, love your content. Started playing WoW like two weeks ago and love seeing people like you to learn more. Glad to hear it. Uh, glad you're enjoying the videos. Okay, let me finish up my prep real quick. I'll catch up and chat after the fact. Uh, so I have all my heirlooms now. The only thing that I'm going to change is I'm going to be playing Resto Shaman for the very start of the run, which means I need a different weapon, which I have, and I need a different trinket instead of Infallible Tracking Charm. And I have that. Orb of Void Sight. So we're good to go on that. Uh, regular heirlooms. I need my helmet. Right, so regular heirlooms. Helmet. Uh, tarnished Raging Berserker's Helm. And I can take that. Boom. Slot it in there. Uh, trinkets I have. Okay, we're good on heirlooms. I'm not getting any gear for this run. Not getting any gems. Do, 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 do. Uh, not doing 60 to 70 for this run, so I can skip this section. I have... Uh, for consumables, Brilliant Wizard Oil. I have uh, Comfortable Riders of Barding over there. I have all my Augment Runes. I have enough drafts for this run. Healing Potions, check. I have all of my Damage Potions. Flasks, I'm good. Lemon Herb Filet, got that. Drums, I'm good on. Goblin Gliders, I have 40. 40 Gun Shoes, 40 x 1000 enough right i think I, I have 16 in one of the stacks swiftness potions more than enough uh probably won't be using shimmer scale or swim speed potion but i have more than enough for that scrolls i have fortitude and battle shout which is all i will need because this doesn't kick in until 30 and i'll be swapping to enhance at level 30 anyways or before then hard to say cracked red next control gems uh let me move that there i have more than enough Darkmoon Profession Items. Uh, let's see. I would need Thermal Anvil. I have Red Dye, Blue Dye, Coarse Thread. Simple Flower times 5. Alright. Simple Flower times 5. Let's go over here. 5. You can buy these off a vendor, by the way, but 99% of the time it's just easy to get it off the auction house. This is dirt cheap, right? Red Dye. Just buy one, one silver. That might even be the same as the vendor price. Blue dye, can't spell, uh, blue dye over there, and uh, coarse thread. These are for specifically the Darkmoon Profession quests uh, that you can do once per DMF. Darkmoon Ride Tickets, I have 20, yep. Darkmoon Quest Items, so I have everything except Ornate Weapon, Ornate Weapon at 400 gold, that's pretty reasonable. And Soothsayer's Runes. Soothsayer's Runes. Up over there, grab that. Ah, uh, and I think that's all I need. Yep, uh, that is everything that I have not yet prepared. So I can close my shopping list now. Uh, let me catch up and chat real quick. Rogue is the last one to level before you have full 60s in your new realm. Uh, yeah, Rogue is probably a good one to go through, uh, time walking, because, you know, solo questing as Rogue is not the most fun thing in the world. Uh, you have a bunch of Horde tunes already, planning, planning to start leveling ally tunes after work tonight, still haven't decided on which race class you're starting with. Uh, there's a lot of good options for Horde. Oh, fuck. I forgot I can't use my open all because of the Cracked Radnax control gems. Okay, grab all this stuff. Oops. I'll just read one or two more things in chat, and then I will start mailing things over. Uh, Resto Shaman, good for speed leveling. You figured Enhance would have been the pick. I'm using Resto Shaman for dungeons, uh, for healer queues. And also, in healer scaling at low levels is kind of stupid. Uh, ain't Heirlooms useless now if you don't have tons of rested XP? No, Heirlooms are still quite good. Uh, heirlooms have set bonuses, right? So, increases out of combat regen, blah, blah, blah. That's, like, nice. But also, the 5 set, at low levels... This is basically 40% main stat on 100% uptime. And also the burst of damage is pretty good. So that is really good. But also heirlooms just scale really well. There are certain slots where you can argue that replacing the heirloom with like a really good crafted piece is maybe fine. But a lot of those 
they will get outscaled after one or two levels anyways, so it's just not really worth using. The only case in which I drop heirlooms right now is for 60 to 70, certain Dragonflight crafted pieces that start at level 61 at 319 item level, okay, yeah, those are better than heirlooms. But while leveling up, you're not going to get anything close to that power spike from crafted gear. So heirlooms are just better. Now, they're nowhere near as important before. Um, oh, and uh, Music by Famora said, saves time not worrying about having to upgrade gear. That is also true. Like, the mental bandwidth you save by not having to constantly, like, equip new gear is also nice. But really, it is just some of the strongest gear you can get while leveling. So, yeah, uh, that is why. Now, obviously, the power spike from this compared to, like, just flat 10% experience like it used to be, yes, it is definitely weaker now than heirlooms were in the past, but they are still very, very worth using if you have the goal to upgrade them. Hello, Faze. Finally catching a live stream. Good to see you. Uh, hello, Sinclair TV. Enhance at 30? Yeah, after I do dungeons. It's honestly kind of scuffed how Enhanced Shaman's best tools are relatively deep into the leveling path. Yeah, a lot of specs are kind of like that. It's a little bit weird. Um... Makes it kind of awkward to level certain specs. Whereas, like, Windwalker Monk, right? Within the first five talent points, Windwalker gets a bunch of Fists of Fury modifiers, which make Fists of Fury just instantly kill everything. Guardian Druid is actually a little bit weaker, um, kind of similar, where a lot of their really good tools are in the midsection or bottom of the tree. But Guardian Druid just has so much raw damage early on that kind of makes up for that. But yeah, there's a lot of DPS specs that get a lot of their best talents either very early on or towards the top of the midsection, and then others that have to go really deep into their tree to make their spec really come alive and get all the really good synergies. Uh, watch your video yesterday as a new player, and it was really interesting to see how much you can push the game. Love the content. Glad to hear it. Uh, good to see you, Kriva. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, your Dragonflight character is Enhanced Shaman, and you were Ellie up until level 40. Uh, yeah, I've heard Ellie is also pretty good. I've done Ellie once or twice in the past, which is why I'm doing Enhance. Also, won the poll, right? Uh, did Enhance from level 10 and loved it pretty much until 30. You're just pressing what's in cooldown and one-shotting. Felt great. Then around 30, you get Crash Lightning, and it goes crazy from there. Yeah, I've heard that 30 definitely picks up. Okay, we're going to mail everything over to Casa. I'm not going to be immediately starting the run after I send everything. Uh, I'm going to quickly look at talents, because I did not prep that ahead of time. Uh, okay, so... When mailing stuff, you want to send the first thing uh, that you want to open first, right? If you have Postal. So I use an add-on called Postal, which is like some nice quality of life stuff for uh, mailing. And that means I'm going to send my bags first, because I always want to open that first. Then I'm going to send all the stuff that will stick around in my inventory for a while. So things like Draft of Ten Lands, Darkman Ride Ticket, all of this fun stuff. Uh... Grab that, and I'll put Thermal Anvil next. Uh, what do you think about the new Chromie Time changes in 10.1.5? It scales to 61. Uh, it's good. Yeah, I've talked about that a lot while doing some of my other uh, speedruns. I definitely think they're good changes. Grab all this stuff. And then level 30 stuff. Level 40 stuff. Level 50 stuff. Um, then I need to get the Dark Moon quest items. That's next on the list. Then heirlooms. So I'll send over all of the uh, Resto Shaman stuff first. Then I will send over my enhancement stuff. Order doesn't really matter. I just want to separate it. Then my Comfortable Rider's Barding, and with it I can also send, you know, any of these extra materials. And finally, one Radnax gem, and then we just send a bunch more. So open my mailbox, and I'm going to mail over... How much is enough? Let's say five Cracked Radnax Control gems. I probably won't use all of them, but better to over-prepare, I always say. Uh, oops. So, send mail to Takasa. Here we go. All hail the Radnax, totally tubular. Yeah. Gotta love the cracked Radnax control gem. And then before I actually start the run, I'm gonna hop back onto this test shaman and just, we're gonna look over the talents and I'm gonna figure out what I plan on taking before I start the run, just so I'm not sitting here in the middle of the run wasting time figuring out what talent points I'm gonna spend. Uh, how do you get 10 lands potions? I have an entire video about that. Uh, if you go... 
if you go into my website and you go into the leveling guide and find the preparation section, uh, you should find the video link there, or you can just search through my channel. Uh, it should be on there in one of these speedrunning playlists. Basically, how to farm experience potions. I have an entire guide telling you everything you need to know on how to get Draft of Ten Lands. Uh, what's the toy thing you used in previous videos? That is Cracked Around X Control Gem. Yes, we will be seeing that a lot in this run. Uh, if you had a dollar for every draft you didn't refresh at 49, don't remind me, man. <laughs> don't fucking remind me. Yeah, I, I just fucked that up in that other speedrun, and I'm still salty about that. Uh, you need to do BFA World Quests. There's a few different ways to get it. Uh, BFA World Quests are the easiest and the one that I usually do, but there are a lot of different options. Um, how do I feel about Warlock leveling? Uh, Warlocks are solid. I think Warlock, like, you're, you're kind of pigeonholed into Affliction, which isn't bad, right? Like, Affliction is solid, but it's just Destro. Destro, from what, I, what I've heard, is decent, and Demo kind of struggles because you don't really get a lot of your tools until later. And even then, it's just like, Seed of Corruption is really broken. Right, so Affliction can do a lot of good stuff. The only problem is you're always a little bit limited by the fact that Warlock is a caster. So it's good. I would say War like Affliction Warlock is probably an above average leveling spec. Uh, I did a speed run of it a few months ago, like about half a year ago at this point, and it was very solid. Uh, I had never played Warlock before, and I was still able to get good results out of it. At the time, it was actually my fastest run, though I've beaten it many times since. Uh, so yeah, definitely thumbs up for Affliction. Just not like nearly as top tier as some of the other classes and specs, but very, very strong. You can do the faction assaults. Yeah, uh, faction assaults are definitely the easiest way to farm it. Okay, so let's look at resto talents. So as mentioned before, this is going to be enhanced shaman towards the end. But because we're going to be starting the run with dungeons, whenever you're playing a DPS spec for leveling, I would always recommend swapping to either tank or healer when you're doing dungeons just because better queue times, right? Obviously, if you prefer to just do DPS, do DPS, right? But for pure efficiency, which it is a speed run, that's what we're going for, I will be playing Resto early on just because it is the no-brainer option for leveling. So uh, what do I take early on here? How do I spend... Uh, yeah, I'm thinking Chain Lightning, right, is... Have I leveled every class in the game? Which class would be the most challenging? Rogue. Rogue is the most challenging. I have leveled every class in the game. I have not leveled every spec, which is why I'm doing this, right? So whenever you see one of those polls that I put up on YouTube, I'm generally letting people decide between specs that I haven't really done speedruns with, because my end goal is I want to do a full speedrun on every single spec, and then eventually I will make a tier list uh, for how fast every single spec is. And I could probably make a rough approximation right now, but I don't want to spitball it. I want to make sure I've played it all, detailed speedruns, and actually figured out how fast each one is. Am I speedrunning Classic Hardcore? No, just uh, chill uh, Classic Hardcore leveling. I'm going to just take my time, enjoy it, and that is how I'm going to be playing it. And that'll be after the speedrun. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be taking Chain Lightning first. Definitely, right? Because Chain Lightning is kind of a, a no-brainer for low-level resto stuff. The question is, after this, what do I take? So I'm going to open up a Wowhead talent calculator and just see uh, how the points will pan out. I think I'll plan up to like level 25, and after that we can kind of spitball it. So tools, talent calculator, resto shaman. Okay, so start with uh, chain lightning, and then basically any damage adjacent stuff, right? So this is when you do damage with a melee weapon, okay? Probably won't be getting that a lot as resto. Yeah, I don't really think I'll need that a ton. Uh, Astral Shift could be nice if I rip Threat, which I probably will as Resto. Um, what else? Ooh, uh, Ghost Wolf Movement Speed. This could be kind of nice. Uh, you gain Increasing Movement Speed or... Okay, so that Speed Bonus only occurs once every 20 seconds, but that could be kind of nice. Yeah, I'm not sure which of these I would take. Probably Thunderous Paws, I think. Because I would be using it for bursts of movement speed. What is this? Increases all fire and frost damage. Uh, so that wouldn't buff chain lightning. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Number one is definitely Assassination Rogue. Uh, yeah. Assassination Rogue is... I would say Assassination might genuinely be the worst leveling spec in the game. Because Rogue is, like, bad. I think we can all agree on that. But I did my Rogue speedrun as Outlaw, and it wasn't the worst. 
Outlaw has fairly good AoE, and I do know that Sub has, like, really good single target if you're really good at playing it, but it's not the most intuitive thing in the planet, and not something I'm very good at. But Assassination is just, like, worse subtlety when you're leveling up. I don't see any redeeming qualities for it. What are my thoughts on leveling by AoEing down fast respawning mobs? It, it is a leveling method that exists. Uh, that Those are my thoughts on it. If you want to do it, do it. It's not fast. Um... But yeah, it, it is an option. I think honestly, yeah, early on. So if I look at my Wowhead talent calculator, the only really thing I can take is Chain Lightning for damage options. I think maybe I take Fire and Ice as my second point. So this. And then after that, none of these are great. I would probably take Interrupt. So Wind Shear, just so I have that. Um, Summon Earth Ellie is kind of nice, I guess, just as like an emergency backup tank if whatever dungeon tank I have is not doing super great. Uh, can't really think of anything else that's super important. I think after that, I would just take, um, I could probably take Earth Shield at some point too, just because throwing this up on somebody is just passive healing, and then I wouldn't need to really, like, actively throw heals into them, and I can focus on damage, so that's probably nice. And then I think after that, I would just go, like, Astral Shift, uh, Ghost Wolf Synergy, uh, Cap Totem, or something like this. But Maelstrom Weapon isn't really going to help me a lot as a Resto Shaman. So let's see. Astral Shift. Uh, let's take Thunderous Paws. Capacitor Totem. And... Yeah. That's that's level 24. I, I think, honestly, I don't need to worry about this stuff too much. It doesn't seem like a lot of that is going to really help me a ton. Sub requires 4D head chest to manage Shadow Dance. Yeah, I've heard it is fairly complicated. I'll have to try it at some point. Like I said, I eventually want to play every single spec for a leveling speed run. Just um, not right now. I'm going to do that. Uh, okay, so on the actual resto stuff, Riptide, kind of pigeonholed into... Are there any damage options? Because if I can take low-level stuff... Ooh, here's good. Stormkeeper. You get that as resto. Interesting. Uh, so that would obviously be what I would go for. Because that is very, very, very nice. I didn't realize resto had that. Uh... Do you get, I, I know Resto has that like toxic rain thing or acid rain. When do you get acid rain? Is that early on? Oh, it is early on. Oh, okay. Yeah, you get it really fast. I feel like this definitely is what I would be taking, Ben. Do I have any reason to go down here? No. Okay, so first point in Riptide. Um, I guess I could go for Stormkeeper early by taking Healing Wave, but... I think I eventually want to get down to Acid Rain. So I put two points into Deluge. I don't. I think that's how you pronounce it. Deluge. Uh, then probably just rip Stormkeeper as soon as I can. I could take that at level 17. Then I take Healing Rain. And then I just take Acid Rain. And I can get Acid Rain online at level 21. And... Let's see. Uh, I would probably take another healing rain modifier overflowing shores just to make that even stronger and what else do i even need to take at that point uh ancestral vigor i suppose hmm yeah i think by the time that i get into other stuff so there's like lava surge down here your flame shock damage has a chance to reset the remaining cooldown on lava burst that is nice but by the time i get down there i would have to go through spirit link totem and I would already be level 31. So I'm realistically never going to make it to Lava Surge by the time I swap to Enhancement. So that's not super important. So I think I can probably just go Riptide, Deluge, Stormkeeper, Healing Rain, Acid Rain, uh, Overflowing Shores. And then just take whatever I want for healing until I hit level 30 and stop doing dungeons. I think we've gotten that figured out. That is pretty much the Resto Shaman build that I'm going to be going. Um, let me now just open up Enhancements. So tools, talent calculator, uh, shaman enhancements. Uh, hold on, let me catch up on chat real quick. Um, wave early will be pretty much lay on hands too. Yeah, I think healing wave though, I probably won't be taking just because I can't really get it. Uh, am I copying over to PTR later? Yes. Uh, I will be copying over to PTR because I still want to test the upcoming leveling changes. This will, for reference, be... Uh, this will be the final run that I'm doing, uh, final 10 to 60 run that I'm doing before the patch goes live, because tomorrow, 
I figure at this point I can say my plans. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing a 60 to 70 run entirely on the PTR. It is going to be an augmentation evoker 60 to 70 speed run, which I think is going to be pretty cool because aug evoker has like a lot of support tools, but how good is it when you're just the only one doing it? Because I'm going to be doing a solo aug evoker speed run. So I think that'll be kind of a cool way to test its solo potential. So that is what I'll be doing tomorrow. Uh, which means I won't be doing another 10 to 60 run. And I've already done so many 10 to 60 testing runs that at least before 10.1.5, this is going to be the last one. So I will once again be doing the PTR just so we can see those changes in action once again. Uh, but obviously after that, right, all future runs will be on live servers because all of the changes will already be live. I love your content and you're talking like a waterfall. Uh, yeah. Based on what you've tested, Aug has a lot of self-sustain, way better than Devastation. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. I actually did, I did another run of Dawn of the Infinite, the new Mega Dungeon, and because it was on the PTR, I had two of my friends, and then I just posted in the test discussion channel, and I said, anyone want to DPS Dawn of the Infinite? And the two responses that I got were from Augmentation Evokers. So I did a double Aug Evoker run, and they actually were really tanky. Uh, they survived a lot of stuff that killed... Um, uh, the other players in our group so definitely seems like a really strong spec i'm curious to test it out because i've never played aug yet i've messed around with devastation in the past i have one at level 70 but i have never tested aug evoker on the ptr yet so you'll be seeing mostly my first blind playthrough of it tomorrow but uh i will probably at least look at it ahead of time and kind of figure out the synergies and stuff before i do the actual run just so i at least know somewhat what i'm doing but I will not actually be playing it, playing it until the speedrun. Very excited to switch to Augtree. Yeah, a lot of my Evoker friends can't wait to switch to it. It does look very fun. Uh, okay, so let me swap specs over here to Enhancement. And I will take a look at those talents. Uh, Enhance, I would imagine, is going to be a little bit easier to build, right? Because I'm just going to be uh, pressing on the things that give me extra damage. So I start with Chain Lightning and Maelstrom Weapon. Um... So by the time I swap to Enhance, I will be at least level 25. So I'll take Lava Burst. I'll obviously have Fire and Ice. Let me just quickly uh, throw this into my talent calculator. Fire and Ice. I'll have Wind Shear. Uh, Ancestral Defense, this thing here. That'll be nice. Just passive Leech. Uh, Flurry is, I think, yeah, this is a no-brainer. Definitely take that. Um, when Reincarnation is off cooldown, your maximum health is increased... And when you're at full health, Reincarnation cools down 75% faster. This is interesting. I don't really know how useful it's going to be. Uh, but I will probably, after I've taken Flurry here, I'll go down Astral Shift. Just having a defensive will be nice, so I'll, I'll lock that into my talent calculator. Astral Shift, Thunderous Pause over here. Um, I think Cap Totem will definitely be nice to have. And, okay, that gets me to the next part of the tree. So now I'll, I have enough to go into the midsection of the tree here uh, as enhancement. And what will I be taking? This is also pretty much what I will have um, higher levels on this side, the actual enhancement side. So I start with Storm Strike. Uh, let me look at an enhancement build real quick because I want to know which ones are actually useful and what talents are completely worthless and not worth taking. So I'm going to at least look at the enhancement wowhead guide just uh, for like... A basic understanding okay so the enhancement guide in wowhead recommends going wow it actually runs like none of these bottom talents does shaman just have really bad capstones or something this is the lowest it goes for ancestral guidance and go with the flow i'll have to look into this i doubt it these stuff or these things are that bad it cannot be that bad um what else so the shaman Guide recommends running Storm Strike, Lava Lash, Wind Fury Weapon. Makes sense. Improved Maelstrom Weapon. Also makes sense. Uh, Forceful Winds. Double Molten Assault. Okay. Ice Strike. What is this? Slash your target with an Icy Blade, dealing damage, and it increases the damage of my next Frost Shock. Oh, okay. So I guess Frost Shock is actually used as part of the damage rotation. That means I should probably take it. Uh, that is good to know. Uh, what else? Uh, they run Unruly Winds. That makes a lot of sense. That seems good. 
Raging Maelstrom. Maelstrom weapon can now stack five additional times and increases the uh, damage of its spells and the healing of spells. Okay. Um, definitely, I've been told Crash Lightning is an obvious pickup. Thundering, I've heard, is a really powerful ability just in general. Doom Winds, that seems like a no-brainer. Uh, what's this? Wind Fury Totem I wouldn't need. Consuming at least two stacks of Hailstorm using Ice Strike grants me one stack of Maelstrom weapon. Okay. So that, I guess, means Ice Strike is like a generator. I'm generating stacks of Maelstrom weapon by using this. It increases the damage of Frost Shock. Uh, okay. Storm Strike has a 25% chance to strike the target an additional time. It recommends running this. Um, chain or Crash Lightning stuff. Chain Lightning jumps further. This seems good. Uh, I feel like Converging Storms would be good, though the guide does not recommend running it. Obviously, Feral Spirit, like any cooldowns are a no-brainer. Primordial Wave makes sense. Uh, and then it goes down here. Each additional Lightning Bolt generated increases your haste. Hmm. I'll have to see. I I'm going to kind of try to play Enhancement by Ear a little bit. Oh, a lot of messages in the time I was swapped over to my other tab. Straight down the middle from Improved Maelstrom is going to be a lot of power. Uh, you mean, yeah, this thing? Yeah, that's what the guide seems to be recommending. Hello, Vetro. Good to see you. Forceful Winds, aka me after I eat chili. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Frost Shock is used when you get mail er, Hailstorm procs. It hits multiple targets, and Ice Strike makes it hit like a truck. Gotcha. Wait, so Frost, Str er, Frost Shock will hit multiple targets with this? Huh. Or am I... Oh, no, Hailstorm procs, you said. Where is Hailstorm? Is Hailstorm just like a baseline ability that I get? Oh, it's this. Okay. Uh, oh, interestingly, the guide says run Fire Nova. Or up to a burst of fiery damage from all targets affected by your Flame Shock. Um, and then... Interesting. I feel like, yeah, Frost, or Frost Shock might have pretty solid utility while leveling because of the slow as well. Um, have I tried Resto for leveling? I will be, yes, I, I will be doing Resto for leveling, yes. Skip Lava Lash Talent, Storm Build is lit, not sure for leveling though. Healing Rain Damage, yep. Ice Strike is a setup tool for Frost Shock using Hailstorm, but it can be difficult to set up unless you're doing he heavy AoE. I will be trying to do heavy AoE for speedrunning stuff. Uh, Crash Lightning is kind of ass for leveling, still worth taking, but not super amazing. Your biggest thing is going to be the PvP talent that makes you chain lightning on Storm Strike. Ooh. A lot of the time, you don't get spread Flame Shock enough for Flame Nova to matter. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I haven't. Let me look at the PvP talents really quick because I did not see those. But you're right that that definitely, for a lot of specs, makes a difference. So, which one is it? Uh, huh. Wait. Oh, Storm Weaver actually seems good. Maelstrom weapon no longer benefits Healing Surge or Chain Heal, but it makes your next one of those casts get the full thing. Uh, is it Ride the Lightning? Ride the Lightning. If there are more than two enemies within eight yards when you cast Storm Strike, you also cast the Chain Lightning. Okay, yeah, that is broken. <laughs> uh, otherwise, or oh, there's a benefit even if it's not AoE. Okay, so Ride the Lightning is definitely the first PvP talent that I'm going to take. That is nuts. Um, Dominism now is a 60, or Bloodlust has a 60 second cooldown. Uh, increases haste by 20%. Oh, wow. Okay, so Shamanism also seems really broken. What else? Thunderstorm doesn't seem great. Yeah, definitely Ride of Lightning and Shamanism sound like the best ones here. Uh, and then there's a lot of other really nice utility options. I like Stormweaver just for the survivability bonus. That seems pretty nice. Uh, Ride the Lightning. Counter-Strike Totem is good on AoE pulls. Ride the Lightning is broken as fuck. Yeah, okay. Let me look at Counter-Strike Totem. Let me just see. Counter-Strike Totem, what does this do? Uh, whenever enemies deal direct damage, the totem will deal 100% of the damage back. Yeah, that seems good. Uh, I will probably take that after I take Shamanism and Ride the Lightning. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of play a little bit of this by ear. Uh, finally caught a stream. Hello, Jasmus. Good to see you. The Bloodless CD things seem like the worst of the three. Yeah, I, yeah, I could probably take that at level 40. I think that would be a good last option. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm just going to play the talents by ear. There's uh, some obvious ones, right? Like every single thing that I'm looking at right here says Ice Strike uh, and Molten Assault and stuff like that. Uh, Feral Lunge, 
I don't really think that's worth a talent point compared to damage options, but... Uh, yeah, I could try Hailstorm. I think that seems pretty nice. I'll just, yeah, like I said, I'll play it by ear. Uh, and I think I will go ahead and start the run now, because it's been over an hour. Uh, this one has taken a while to set up. But like I said, uh, at the earlier part of the stream, it was either I do the setup in the middle of the stream, or I delay it by an hour to figure all this stuff out on my own time. Uh, 45 second CD, 100% reflect. Yeah, that seems definitely really good. All right, uh, so I have everything mailed over. I'm going to hop in, and I'm going to start as Resto. So, as always, if you want to try to queue into me in dungeons, you're welcome to do so, but uh, I will be playing as healer. So, ideally, you know, queue as a tank or something, because if you queue as a healer, then my queues will be longer, which will not be super ideal. But okay, I can... The moment I skip the cutscene... And there we go. Oh, one nice thing about Maghar Orc, you now start all the way over here, right next to Chromie, whereas before you started all the way in Valley of Honor, which was kind of annoying because Valley of Honor is like really far away from anything useful. So it took like an entire minute to actually get to Chromie. I don't know when they changed this because I did a, a test like a little while ago and Maghar was still starting in the original spot, but it seems like now they've changed it, which is really, really nice. Uh, hello, Michael James. Good to see you. Okay, let me get this all set up. Uh, I also need to... Uh, before I, I get started, I forgot to enable my action bars. So there we go. Now I can keep opening stuff from my mailbox because I can actually get my bars set up here. There, lemon herb fillet, just throw that there. It is technically not a super serious speedrun, but I still like to you know, at least play it somewhat seriously. Okay, uh, now we're good to go. I can take Comfortable Riders Barding, I can put it here. I'm going to equip all my heirlooms that I'll need. So, all that stuff. Orb of Void Sight. And my staff, I think that's everything. So now I'm going to select Chromie, Portal to Outlands. I'm going to do this. I'm already going to queue for a dungeon, but actually I'm not going to queue yet because I still need to set up one or two things and I don't want to be completely unprepared. But I will stop here. This is a new thing that we're adding to the route. Take the Enter the Dark Portal, Zanger Marsh, Broken Shore can do this. Yeah, I want to make sure I get all the Darkman Fair stuff set up before I do anything else. What else do I need? Uh, Brilliant Wizard Oil, I can put over there. Move that a little bit. Uh, mounts up, and that goes there, that goes there. I will be getting the dollar on Hearthstone because Magcar has nothing you know, crazy that I can use to bypass a lot of the travel time, so I will actually just go ahead and get this. I'm not going to be doing Zangermarsh, just to be clear. Uh, Zangermarsh, you need to click on the Zangermarsh quest to get the Legion 1 to appear. So, yeah, uh, sorry if I didn't explain that properly. Uh, I have to click on that first. That is why. And now, okay, I'm playing a Horde again, so I can actually go ahead and head over here. Uh, and I'll read other stuff in chat in a second. Just trying to go through quickly. Now I will queue for a dungeon because it'll probably take a little bit to pop. Then I head to Old Dalaran just because that's the fastest way to get to the Darkman Fair for Horde. Uh, where's my Ghost Wolf form? Ghost Wolf, I'll put Shift E, Shift Y. Take me to the fair staging area. Have I ever considered a fresh account run? I've already done it. You can check my channel. Uh, I might do more in the future, but I have actually done a rogue fresh account um, 10 to 60 run. Actually, it was a 1 to 60 run. Uh, crap, where's my Radnax gem? Here we go. Radnax control gem. Take that, put it on control R. Goblin glider over to the carousel. Uh, put this on. Put Lightning Shield on Shift-G, why not? And... There we go. 
Uh, now before I forget, I forgot to pick my spec beforehand, but that's not a big deal. Someone declined the queue. All right, I'm gonna step off the carousel just so it doesn't bug out or anything like that. Uh, oh, somebody declined the queue again. Okay. Flame tongue weapon. Oh, so this is a buff that I can just apply to my weapon. And I'll just take Primal Strike, put it there. For now, since I'm playing Rest, I'll just put Healing Surge on yeah, Shift F. Uh, what else can I do? Purify Spirit, sure. Ancestral Vision, that's my Max or Mass Res. Chain Heal, uh, probably going to be using that a decent bit. Ooh, I should probably put. Yeah, I'll be using Lava Burst likely a decent bit more. Um. Okay, so I don't want to use... It's kind of a shame that the queue popped and then a bunch of people declined it early on. That is uh, unfortunate timing, because this would have worked out really well if it didn't uh, just have all of those queues immediately drop. Don't know why that happened. And unfortunately, sometimes the Dungeon Finder bugs out a little bit when a bunch of people drop the queues, and then it puts you like in the back of the line for whatever reason. Uh, which I think is what happened here. I forgot to pick up tailoring and stuff, so we're not going to be doing those quests, but it's not the end of the world. I will actually probably wait to do them later anyways. Um, but I do want to do at least a few quests. Here, I'm just going to do two of them. All right, I got two quests done. I'm going to be... Actually, let me just do one more while I'm here. Grab that. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy top hats and then we will head back and start doing silver pine and stuff while I sit in queue for these dungeons. I can top hat throw that there. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello, Pat Bob. Good to see that you enjoy the streams. Okay, let me see. I can take this. Hopefully it actually pops. It did. Mad Cart Orc Shaman is the most fun leveling experience you've had. I had to see. Um, let's see. Uh, Crashing Storms is worth taking purely for the two extra chain lightnings. After that, you follow Elemental Weapons, Primordial Wave, and go down the far left from there. Uh, you'd probably take the generic M plus talents, but swap out Wind Fury Totem for Storm Flurry. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll have to... I don't remember all the names, so I'll have to kind of see when I get there. But I definitely appreciate, like, recommendations on talents, because obviously I know basically nothing when it comes to shaman talent choices. So any any advice helps there. Usually I look this stuff up ahead of time. I didn't really have time to do that before this stream. But also I figure kind of the learning process is something that a lot of people tune into the stuff for anyways. So should be fun. Rats in the Druid Run. Thank you, Berthal. I appreciate it. Uh, Primal Strike, you can take it off your bars. Yeah, I think while I'm playing Resto, I doubt I'm ever going to be in melee range enough to make use of that. So I think Chain Lightning Spam is pretty much all I'm going to be doing. Ooh, this guy's kind of... This monk is taking a lot of damage. And... I'm going to try to Chain Lightning... Yeah, I think the one problem with Resto Shaman compared to Priest is Priest, I can just spam Holy Nova, right? And it heals and does damage. Here, I am actually having to swap to this Brewmaster Monk and keep him alive a little bit. Uh, he's got some sort of self-healing. It's not too bad. And also, obviously, having a cast time there makes this a little bit trickier. Primal Strike for Resto is like Steady Shot for Survival. That's a good way to describe it. Alright, I'm going to trust him to stay alive for at least this pull. You know, you're a Brewmaster Monk, you have tools. You have some ways to keep yourself alive. Alright, he's good. He got it. okay there we go uh i i'm not familiar with this so i will not be 
looking at chat often while I'm at least doing these first few dungeons as Resto. Just, wow. Lava Burst does a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to at least somewhat figure out what I'm doing. So I don't want to make mistakes. So I'm going to be mostly um, just focused on not fucking up here for a little bit, and then I will catch up on chat. Yeah, I definitely know that once I get some of my other healing abilities, this will be a little bit easier. Like, healing rain when I get acid rain. When... No! Oh, my fucking trinket pulled the fucking next mob. Okay. Uh, stupid elemental confluence. At least this monk is on the ball, but that could have been disastrous if he wasn't ready and my trinket just fucking ripped it. Okay, I'm just gonna use... Chain heal on this dude. Uh, was literally talking about that last night. Remember that 10.1.5 gives new players crummy time, so it would be a little different? Yeah. I definitely, I stopped doing the fresh runs because of that. Because they're changing it, right? But, oh god. Yeah, he, um, he did not wait for me. Unfortunately, the moment I look at chat, this guy rolls into like three packs and pulls them all. Uh, a little unfortunate timing there. Uh, and this is why I always say Blood Furnace is the deadliest dungeon. Right? It is probably the only dungeon that tanks actually need to watch what they're doing. It can kill you very easily. Oh, that didn't reach him. Okay. And I can't, can't really damage and heal at the same time. Yeah, I don't mind him chain pulling, but at the end of the day, if you chain pull as a tank in low level dungeons, you need to at least somewhat be self sufficient there. Like on my Guardian Druid, I would kite and stuff like that. As a Brewmaster, you need to be kiting with Keg Smash. What level is he? Oh, he's. He only just <laughs> started doing dungeons, so he's probably not going to have Keg Smash or anything, really. Yeah, Brewmaster at level 10 is not the best dungeon tank, unfortunately. What's that? A trinket? Oh. And not stand on bombs. Yes, true. Standing on bombs is generally not the best idea. Um, but yeah, uh, for what Naomi said, definitely with the changes in 10.1.5, doing like now another fresh account run at some point could be interesting because now they get access to all the same stuff. So the challenge would be more doing the same run that I always do, except uh, you don't have any heirlooms or consumables or whatever. Something like that could be interesting. As many times as he says, not the end of the world, I kind of wonder what will happen when it is. Uh, end of the world is what happens in my first attempt of my Druid speedrun, where I don't get a Q-pop for 10 minutes. That is end of the world. Oh my god, he just LOS me as I'm fucking casting healing. Okay, well, uh, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> Let me see if I can catch up to him and save him. Uh, is he dead again? Oh, no, I got him in time. Fucking hell. Okay. Alright, we're good. There we go. Now teleport out and teleport back in. You'll get Earth Shield and Riptide early. I'm going to be picking up it up a little bit later. Riptide I will be getting early, right? But Earth Shield I'm going to wait to take until I've gotten other damage options. It is good, right? But at this point, honestly, if the tank dies and I can solo the dungeon, I'd rather it. I'm at least trying to keep him alive right now, but I, I probably should just be spamming chain lightning and ignoring him uh primal strike becomes storm strike for enhance but for ellie resto uh primal strike is a meme gotcha and i am still level 14 which is good because that means i don't have escape from Durnhold yet so that is exactly what i want to happen a uh, cloak off that okay that's not ideal DM the screenshot of a talent calculator for what you use in the enhance run. Um, if you want it, uh, I'll try to check later on. It's usually, it's hard for me to like check Discord in the middle of uh, speed runs, but if I get a chance later on, or streams in general, I will, I will take a peek. How are warriors? Warriors are good. Warriors are like solid A tier for speedrunning. They are, they're not special. They don't really do anything crazy, but they are 
tanky and they have uh, good survivability. So yeah, they are just solid options. Warriors are like the baseline, right? Warriors will just level at a relatively efficient pace and you can kind of judge whether something is like good or bad, whether it is faster or slower than a warrior. I think that's probably a good way to, to describe it. Uh, I missed that jump. Not the end of the world. Well, there, I said it again. Not the end of the world. That is like my go-to just, I don't know. I do say that a lot. It's kind of funny how I don't realize how many how many times I say certain phrases until I see it in YouTube comments where people are like, like, what was the, there was something that I was saying a lot in one of my speed runs. And I got like a few different YouTube comments about like, oh, he says this phrase a lot. And it's not something that I consciously really think about that I say. But then when it got brought up in comments, I'm like, yeah, I do kind of say that a lot, huh? Okay. Uh, we have a prop paladin. Oh, this guy's level 55. So I'm hoping that he at least kind of knows what he's doing and I won't need to babysit him quite as much as the monk. Uh, oh no, he's dying. Oh, please don't die. There we go. Oh, that did a lot of damage. Yeah, it's like when I can sit here and press chain lightning... Resto Shaman seems pretty good. The problem is you can't sit there and press Chain Lightning unless you have a really good tank who isn't, like, nearly dead. Uh, I mean, he kind of topped himself up there right before my heal. So, I think I might just kind of let him, let him chill. I think, you know, it, a good prop paladin honestly shouldn't need a healer, right? Like, I can solo dungeons as a prop paladin at low levels, so... Maybe I just, I let him do that, and uh, don't really worry about it. I'm gonna grab that quest item. Uh, I'm also, how do I want to spend my talent points? I'm gonna take this, I will just take Earth Shield early, just to make sure. And then, crap, we're in combat. Okay, so I can't spend the rest of my points. And, is he dead? He shouldn't be dead. Yeah, no, he, he's got it. Okay, I'm just, I'm testing him now, right? Because, you know, he managed to live. So, he should be fine, but I'll still try to heal him when I get a chance. Uh, I need to take two points into Deluge, apply changes. Right, now I have Riptide, so now I'm just going to throw that on him. Ricky Feral, just, okay, Ricky Feral is apparently, I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, but uh, he posted something in chat, I assume that's like, Questy or an add on similar to it. Uh, I can grab these supplies. All right, that's the last one I needed for the quest. Um, yeah, the whole it's like having a hunter in my trinkets. Left. A lot of people liked that comment. I got a, a few, few mentions of the hunter in the trinket slot thing. Uh, Resto is insane for leveling since the shaman rework made four talent points into baseline. Nice, that seems pretty helpful. Uh, scroll up a little bit. Um, oh no, <laughs> I've missed a lot of stuff in chat. Sorry if I, I don't read your message. I'm gonna try to uh, catch up on everything, but it, it it is really hard to actively read chat. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try to throw a Riptide on him. Oh yeah, that actually did a lot. Chain heal. Uh, Miss Weaver is a better dungeon tank at level 10. Yeah, honestly. Massive XP drop off from questing trying to get to level 70. Is Zerla Cavern something you should check out? No, 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 no. Zerla Cavern is not something you should do ever while leveling. It is not a leveling zone. It is not. It, it probably doesn't even give XP. Uh, and if it does, it would not be efficient whatsoever. Uh, Holy Priest is, a, is the best tank? Yeah, Holy Priest honestly probably is the best tank at level 10. How many level 70s do I have already on the second WoW license? A lot of my characters in the PTR, so not, not as many as you might think, but I do have a lot of level 70s. Okay, I'm going to whack this guy with my staff. All right, that did one damage. Oh no, I, I did 13 damage with um my auto attack and one with Flame Tongue weapon. All right, big. Feel like your groups are much better than mine. It's hit or miss. I've had some practice runs with abysmal dungeon groups at low levels. 
I wasn't saying go check DMs just in case you wanted it for the run if you're ever stuck in challenge talent choices. Yeah, I will. If I get stuck, I'll definitely make sure to refer to it because looking there earlier, I wasn't 100% sure. I appreciate it either way. Impending victory definitely helps. Yeah, having impending victory at low levels is really, really, really good. Also, not having it compete with anything else that's really useful. That is a big change, even for max level, having impending victory. Okay. How much damage will Lava Burst do? Oh my god, that almost one-shot it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, definitely Resto Shaman has a lot of potential, for sure. Just gonna run to the start. This Paladin tank is good. So, uh, if he re I'll do it. Let's see. Oh, Paladin tank re -queued. Nice. Uh, it's always good when you get a tank to re -queue. Makes it much easier. Uh, you had... Oh. Uh, you had a level 11 XP capped warrior with full enchants queue into your random leveling dungeon and solo the whole thing. Yep. Uh, what are the elemental balls coming out of me? Uh, the kicking. Oh, poor guy. Elemental balls coming out of me are from unstable elemental confluence. The elemental balls. I like that. Uh, this speed run can fit so many dungeons in it. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I like that one as well. Hunter in the Trinket slot was a good one. Very accurate, too. Thought about it when you were in Lock Madon and randomly pulling neutral mobs you had no interest in. Yep. My reaction when I queued into the Slave Pen's last boss. Yeah, I was. I So, my my reaction there was I initially saw Slave Pen's and I was, like, it was just kind of a whiplash, right? Where I'm like, oh no, it's Slave Pen's. I've already done this one. And then seeing the final boss room as I loaded in was, like, amazing. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> well, uh, can't win them all. So, yeah. Fucking escape from, or, yeah, it, it, this is escape from Dernholm. Man. Um, okay, I, I don't know. I mean, the tank is good, right? So, uh, why did it have to be Escape from Durnhold, man? It was going so well. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll, I'll make do. Oh, you can use Radidex in dungeons? Oh, this is sick. Alright. Uh, well, this actually makes Escape from Durnhold maybe not that bad. Because now I can just bypass the entire early section and just go straight to the end. Oh fuck, I hit the water. I hit the water again! Oh, okay. Okay, this is this is tragic. I'm just gonna we're gonna fucking cross the water and use my next Radnax charge. <sighs> okay. Uh, I guess I can just start the trash now, all on my own. Yeah, th this makes it not quite as bad, I guess. Uh just solo the fucking dungeon. Can I an earth shield myself? I can also Oh no. I'm just gonna heal myself. Um It's definitely not amazing for soloing things. It's not that bad. Okay, let me... You've now leveled from 40 to 60 in one and a half hours. That's solid. What country am I from? I'm in the US. East Coast. I uh, started a priest last night, got into a dungeon group where you were being flamed for not healing. Oh yeah, that's always lovely. People who don't understand that, you know, healers can actually do damage and that it makes their run easier. Uh, the rogue pulled five fact packs. They aggroed to me because the shield stunned me and you couldn't heal the tank and died. Oh, that is... That is not fun. 
You speed run dungeons on your ten tank. Okay, actually, shit, shit. Now I need to focus. Someone pulled a bunch of stuff. Was that like a hunter pet that just aggroed all of that? Oof. Okay, let me. I'm gonna pull these guys. Yeah, this is definitely no Holy Priest, but it's it's doing solid damage. I drop the bombs here. I I am struggling to keep up with chat, I'll be honest. I, every time I go to look at chat, it is already scrolled past the last thing I saw. Compared to 10.0, Shaman got like flat 30% damage buff and another 50% talent made baseline. That sounds really nice. Um, Another run to watch... I'm a few runs behind. It takes me like a week to get through each one on and off, but you look forward to them each time. Good luck on this one. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I, I've definitely done a lot recently, so I understand it. It's probably a lot to catch up with all of them. <laughs> well, it's been a good stream. <laughs> yeah. You know, ah, uh, run's dead. Oh, no. Um, hey, I'd rather get bad RNG during like a testing run on stream rather than the actual world record speed run the fact that i didn't see dernhold keep a single time during my world record guardian druid run that is good enough for me i will take as many dernhold keeps as i need to outside of world record runs if it keeps me getting good rng when i need it uh you're not going for world record so it's not that bad yeah exactly it's it to repeat it again it is not the end of the world right there you go uh, okay, this is the last one. Or, did someone get this one already? Oh, yeah, somebody got that one already. Uh, do I want to sit through all the RP? I'm going to be honest, I think I just, um, I think I leave after this and eat the 15 minutes. Like, this at least hasn't been terrible. But, uh, I think I will turn in the quest at Thrall, just to get credit for that. And then I will probably leave, which, you know, it, it is what it is, right? But at least that way I get one dungeon quest's worth of XP, I get the boss, and, uh, yeah. Harleton has made it to the water. <laughs> uh, you've been playing WoW for about a month now, you use my guides and leveled a Fury Warrior. Uh, awesome. Uh, glad to hear the guides helped you, Andrew. Touch grass, not keyboard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, Wrath Economy is weird. Someone bought a stack of random coyote meat. I threw up looking for 250 gold. Uh, you'll legit be doing 10 times everybody else's damage and be flamed for it. Yeah. No, but you f you forget you're a healer, right? That's your job. It's just like if you're a tank, your only job is supposed to be to stay alive or whatever people think tanks are supposed to do. Like the whole, whenever somebody says that tanks aren't supposed to do damage, it just drives me up the fucking wall. It's such a, like, classic era mentality as well. Oh, they, uh... Did they start Thrall before I could turn in the quest? I think they started Thrall before I could turn in the quest. Or can I turn it in after... After combat? No, I can't turn in the quest? Okay. Yeah, not wasting my time then. That's lovely. Uh, I should I should have known that would probably happen, and it's only a single quest anyway. Um, at least, now I don't feel bad about leaving, because they bricked my quest anyway, so fuck that. It's, a uh, Escape from Durnhold is a lovely dungeon in so many ways. Let's see, is the, the rare bat is not up? Yeah, rare mobs are probably not going to be super easy to find, because I am in chromie time, and it is, like, middle of the day. So, you know, is what it is. Uh, you'll never forget the day they announced the Spectral Tiger Cub in Trading Post. All the TSM sniper bots were buying out the 250k Spectral Tiger Cubs. Yeah. Those, uh, those people probably regret their life choices now. And I will say, as for, like, the classic coyote meat selling for large amounts... That is obviously weird. I don't know for sure why that would be selling for a lot, but I know a lot of random items in Classic are uh, used for, like, special recipes and are sometimes just harder to farm, uh, you know, than 
it is to just buy it off the AH. 250 gold is definitely a lot, though. But if it was, like, for a stack of 20... But if it was a single singular coyote meat for 250 gold, that is definitely odd. Uh, copper is also going for 6 gold a stack. That honestly sounds pretty normal. Right? Because 6 gold at level 80 is nothing. But... Imagine as a level 80 having to run all over the place in Duratar or whatever to mine copper. At that point, you make more money by doing a single Argent, Tourn Argent Tournament daily and then buying the copper off the AH. That's what I did when I was leveling Engineering. How delayed is the stream? Um, there shouldn't be any delay. I know sometimes, depending on latency, right, there's just kind of an unavoidable delay. But I don't have, like, any manual delay on my stream, so... If you're, like, hearing me respond to comments late, that's just because I'm way behind on reading stream chat. Uh, but the actual, like, stream itself should be pretty much, like, zero delay. Tried twice and couldn't make it in? Yeah. I'll still be doing a few more, right? I'll be doing... Hopefully we don't get, like, Black Morass or something really bad. But I will be doing at least, like, two more dungeons before I swap to the PTR. I'm hopefully going to get to, like, 25 or something without getting, like, really bad luck, but it's possible I just keep hitting Black Morass and Escape from Durnhold, and I just say fuck it and give up, right? So, who knows? Um, No debuff for leaving? Oh, yeah, so if you kill the first boss, you don't get a debuff. That's why I stuck around just for the first boss. Because if you leave immediately, you get hit with a 30-minute debuff. If you kill the first boss, you at least get some XP, and there's a 15-minute cooldown period, and that will start ticking down the moment you enter the dungeon, right? So realistically speaking, it's like a seven-minute cooldown period, which that is not terrible, all things considered. The amount of times you'll pug raid and keg smash will be a taunt or something because the other tank's doing like 10k DPS, but you'll be told to do less damage. Yeah. Oh, man. Tanks that like can't hold threat and then will bitch and moan when you rip threat off them, that is also one of my biggest pet peeves. I actually... Uh, funny story about the Twilight Devastation days of Vengeance DH. On Raw Den, uh, Mythic Raw Den back in Nyatlotha, I was playing Vengeance Demon Hunter again at that point, and I had I however many Twilight devs you could run on my gear with, you know, getting away with it, right? Uh, it was really, really sketchy, right? But as Vengeance DH, the debuffs really didn't matter. I wasn't doing the thing that would, like, make you effectively die but i was right before the point where you started taking extra damage we had to deal with like the eyeball and all of that other stuff um so we're stacking a shit ton of twilight dev and my co-tank was a brewmaster monk who for starters didn't really know how to play uh he wasn't exactly playing correctly but he also was running like a bunch of just versatility percent corruptions um and like survivability stuff which as a brewmaster in nihilotha if you need to run survivability corruptions you're doing something wrong like, Brewmaster, I think you were supposed to be running Gushing Wound, because Twilight Dev wasn't as good for you, but running Gushing Wound and some other stuff was generally, I think, how you were supposed to play. Either way, he wasn't playing correctly. Uh, he was doing, like, one quarter of my damage, and I was just ripping thread off him with Twilight Dev. But the thing is, right, and, and this is the annoying part whenever people complain about losing threat because they're playing tanks uh, incorrectly, is even if you aren't um, holding the boss 100% of the time, on a lot of bosses, the only thing that matters is the taunt swap. So there are some bosses, like for instance, Echo of Neltharion, where uh, even before the tank buster goes out, if one tank has the debuff and is like taking auto attacks, they're probably going to die. So it's a little bit sketchier there. But for instance, like let's take a boss in this tier, Kazara. Kazara, the auto attacks mean nothing. 99% of the time, if I'm just holding the boss whenever, it's not a big deal as long as the other tank taunts off for the buster. And Rod Den was one of those. All I needed him to do was when the tank buster was about to come out, taunt back. And the thing about tanking, right, is if you taunt right before it comes out, you have the boss on you guaranteed because taunt forces him to attack you and it baits the tank buster. And I tried explaining this to the guy. I'm like, look, if you're not going to min-max your damage at all and you're not going to even try to optimize your threat, at the very least, just time your taunts 
so that when the tank buster is about to go out, the boss is hitting you. That way, it doesn't matter how much damage I'm doing. And he refused to do that. He basically said, like, I shouldn't need to change the way I play because your play style is, like, interfering with mine or something like that. And he was basically arguing with uh, myself and the officers, right, who obviously the officers and raid leader agreed with me because, duh, um, obviously you're going to agree with the tank that is actually min-maxing their damage instead of the one that's trying to be lazy. And they said, like, dude, if you're not going to try to do this shit, you need to at least be able to do the tank mechanics correctly. And he was basically like, oh, no, it's impossible. I can't play around this. So this guy, no bullshit, donated money to, at the time, Limit Max, and his donation was something to the effect of, like, my co-tank is a Vengeance Demon Hunter running six Twilight Dev. I'm a brewmaster with zero Twilight Dev. How is it possible for me to hold threat against my co-tank? And Max looked at his donation, read it on stream, and laughed and said, yeah, you aren't going to hold threat against him. And then Max proceeded to give a quick explanation, basically saying, you know, um, obviously if you're running like that, basically gave the taunt explanation that I had been trying to explain to this guy, and then said you should probably also consider running damage options, but this guy clipped Max's stream at that part of the donation, ended the clip where Max said, laughed and said, yeah, you're not going to hold threat, and then posted it in our Discord and pinged me and the officers as this was his irrefutable proof that he was correct, that I was wrong, and that he was completely in the right. There was nothing he could possibly do to fix the fact that he was losing threat. So then, of course, somebody went to the stream, found the actual timestamp where Max then proceeded to say, you should probably be actually doing things to hold your threat. And then the guy quit the guilt. So I have had some really, really bad co-tanks in the past who just refused to improve their damage. And that was the best one ever. The fact that he was literally willing to donate money to a streamer to try and win an argument and was still completely wrong. People who really just think that tanking is not about doing damage, they can be wild when it comes to trying to prove their point. Anyways, that was a, a long rant. Let me um, catch up and chat. And I think 10 seconds I could queue for a dungeon again. So if you're trying to snipe me, uh, there you go. Five more seconds and then you can queue. It'll probably be like, I, I would imagine there's a 10 second delay or something. So but I doubt I'll get an instant queue as a healer anyway. So if you're like a tank or something, you might have a little bit. Um, only an eight minute, not bad. Yeah, the shittiest part of Dernhold is someone can block you from the quest. Yep, that was honestly a little bit frustrating. There we go. I'm going to kill the rare. The delay is eight minutes. No, the, um, the dungeon queue was eight minutes, I think is what they were saying. Uh, tanks are supposed to live, not do damage, despite living being super fucking easy. Exactly. Yeah. As long as the tank is alive, that is literally all that matters. Anything past that, like reducing your damage taken is obviously ideal, but if you're reducing your damage taken after a certain point, it's really not that important. It's more important to just, you know, actually put effort into improving your damage. Um, obviously, I know we agree on that, but yeah, I just, there are so many people that don't understand that, and it is frustrating. Uh... If you manage to convince somebody to leave, I think there's also no debuff if you're not the first to leave. Yes. If you're not the first to leave, I think there is... You might still get the 15-minute the penalty. I'm not entirely sure, though. I could be wrong in that. Oh, this person's just going. All right. It's a level 11 troll druid, and they are one-shotting everything, though, so I think I probably don't need to worry about them. Uh, is this a twink? Let's inspect him. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so either I just lucked into getting a twink in my dungeon, or this is one of you guys in chat and you just queued into me with your guardian druid twink, which if that is the case, uh, thanks, I guess that, that is, uh, helpful. Um, obviously this is one of the reasons why, like, if I were to stream this, I would feel bad if I was literally getting carried through like a world record attempt, because that is effectively what is happening here. I am getting carried by this guardian druid right now, but... Um, you know, if it's just luck of the draw in a world record attempt, like I got that one priest during, I think it was my Hellfire Ramparts run in the world record, then yeah. And I was actually, you know, pulling my weight in that attempt as well. Uh, the claws for rage potions are awesome to farm. Yeah. Uh, when you were playing TBC, Classic Copper was going for 15 gold to stack. Yeah, that checks out. 
It was a stack for 20. Uh, Coyote stake is usually going for 3k. Wow. Uh, Mithril bar stack is 120 gold. Yep, yeah, for classic, I can believe that. Uh, you're going to snipe that Q. Horizon Devastation Evoker Lizard. You have to AFK two seconds before pull to start doing damage. Yep. Twilight Dev back in Blood Decay with full TD set. Yeah. It was kind of crazy on Blood Decay as well. Blood Decay, I think, got like higher highs for Twilight Dev. Vengeance was weird because to really maximize it, you also needed to be in meta. So all of the top... Oh, this... Oh, is the Guardian Druid waiting for somebody? I guess the, the Warrior has fallen behind a little bit. Uh, we don't really need to wait for him. He can catch up. He's a big boy. He knows what he's doing, hopefully. Um, but yeah, my main issue with playing Vengeance back then is a lot of the top parses were running whatever that talent was that would like randomly put you in meta at points. So like all of the 100 parses were just people who would RNG into a meta proc right as their Twilight Dev proc. But on average, that build actually did less damage than just optimal Spirit Bomb play. So I ran Spirit Bomb because I like the playstyle of Spirit Bomb, and uh, I think overall it had more damage, but it was really annoying seeing people just, like, get crazy good luck and beat my parses. I did not get a single rank 1 all of Nihilotha because of that. I got multiple rank 2s and rank 3s, but I always lost to somebody who got, like, godlike RNG with Vengeance procs, and that felt really, really bad. Uh, don't forget to get another cracked Radnax. Um, true. There, I don't think there's a mailbox until I get to the next area. There's no mailbox in the Forsaken High Command, is I believe where I am. Uh, but when I get to the shore area with like all the like orcs and stuff like that, there's a mailbox there, and that is where I'm planning on getting my next cracked Radnax gem. I also don't really need it right now. Uh, it's and quite frankly. I'm not going to go through too many of them, right? It's it's not a super fast speed run. If I'm just, like, auto-running on my mount and wasting, like, 20 seconds so that I can catch up on chat, I'd rather catch up on chat. When you're doing M+, and forget to take TD off for stats, and you go to an, uh, a Tall Dazar and one-shot a totem early on the boss, oh, yeah. I See, that's the reason why I hated a Tall Dazar so much. There's so many, like, just janky mechanics like the totem boss, which until you said that, I completely forgot about, where all it takes is one person just not paying attention and killing their totem early, and then it fucks the entire thing. And then, like, Razan, Razan just, it was so easy to have, like, one person fuck it up and just run on top of all of the raptors and stuff like that. Ugh, I, that's the main reason I hated Atal Dazar. Oh, also, there, there's, yeah, Atal Dazar had so many bosses like that. There's the blood boss, right, where, what was it, you needed to, like, take the debuff into the pool so that she didn't heal or something like that? And then if somebody didn't do it, she would heal and it would just make the fight take longer. I just remember there's so many cases in Atal Dazar where I got into pugs that just had no idea how the fights worked. And it just ended up being a massive pain, which is one of the reasons I didn't really like that dungeon. Uh, is Harlden's mic cutting out for anyone else? Uh, not cutting out for me. Okay. Um, yeah, I've gotten like a few notifications on YouTube saying that like some issue happened with the bitrate or whatever, which... From what I've been able to tell in the past is nothing to do with my actual stream. It is literally just YouTube being garbage sometimes. So if it is cutting out, it doesn't appear to be on my end. It just appears to be a YouTube thing. Yeah, because if I look at OBS, everything looks fine. Uh, I'm not getting any like problems with it. But yeah, sometimes YouTube just has issues. It just is what it is. Every low DPS tank taunts as soon as they possibly can and then get over aggroed. Yes. Oh. The like the panic taunt into immediately losing threat again is the absolute worst. It's uh it, it like I understand why that's a habit. You know, I can understand if you're a new tank and you don't really know what's going on and you lose threat, your instinct would probably be to, oh my god, I just lost threat. Like, you know, I need to get it back as soon as possible. So I kind of get that, you know, at an early level. But when people are still doing that by the time they make it into Mythic Raids, at that point, you should probably have learned to break that habit. <laughs> I pay to play my own game, don't tell me what to do. Yeah, it was basically that. Uh, what and how many materials do you need for the first craft XP? I have a list on my website for blacksmithing. And if you look into the, uh, the prep list that I linked on my world record run, I have a list for tailoring and enchanting as well. So, 
Uh, you can find a list of all the materials there. Funnily enough, the best tanks uh, I've plugged into in raids and the ones that haven't been an issue when it comes to aggro have been the lowest item level ones who are alts. Yeah, true. I mean, also, when I'm playing an alt, I'm usually going like full sweat mode just because I don't want to look really bad and I don't want to do crap damage. And you could still do pretty decent even like on a fresh character as long as you know what you're doing and you're building your tank properly. Especially if you're playing like a prop paladin or guardian druid or something. Okay, let me turn all this stuff in. So getting Underbog here was definitely good. Uh, okay, the tank left, so then I'm not going to requeue. Uh, scroll down. How tanking is brain dead? Tanking is brain dead easy most of the time in raid? I wouldn't say that. Depends on what you mean most of the time. Like, obviously, certain heroic bosses, yes, but... Uh, like, I don't think tanking is necessarily as hard as some people make it out to be, but I, I don't want to say it's brain dead easy. Especially, there's a lot of bosses, like, tanking Heroic Saskarn in a pug is actually quite difficult. If nobody else is doing bombs or anything like that, it can be a little bit rough. Same with stuff like Echo of Neltharion, where you need to do the breaks and stuff like that. Um, not necessarily brain dead easy, I would say. Uh, people don't understand how to DPS as a tank because they don't think it's important, so they put zero effort into learning how. Yeah. I have also seen, I think a lot of that has to do with the guides. Now, you know, obviously... Every guide is created different, but uh, some tank classes, the like popular guides like Wowhead and stuff, fixate way too heavily on survivability builds because they think that, oh, well, new players will probably want to go with the survivability option. So they do that instead of actually really teaching them how to do it. So I think that's part of the problem. It starts new players off with really bad habits and doesn't really give them the tools to correct it. So they kind of have to look for that on their own, which... Maybe a lot of them won't. But there are, of course, a lot of, you know, really good guides out there. Like, I think the Brewmaster stuff is generally well-written. I am biased, of course, because I am friends with a lot of the uh, Monk and Brewmaster guide writers, but I do think that they generally do a good job. I was always a fan of, like, the Peak of Serenity stuff, even before I joined the guild with all the people that run Peak of Serenity. So I've always thought that they do a better job than a lot of other discords. Also, like, Protection Paladin, um, I know... Uh, Lincoln, his guides are good. He does sometimes prioritize survivability, I think, a little bit too much. But overall, I still think Lincoln's guides um, show you, like, both sides of it. I like Lincoln. He's a good dude. Uh, and I haven't really looked at too many of the other tank guides recently. But I know, like, the Blood DK one, last I checked, doesn't really give you uh, a ton of information on that. Uh, the Discord is definitely better, though, about that. And Vengeance DH... Uh, Vengeance DH, I would say, is my biggest gripe, though. I, uh, like, I, I don't really know the guide writers much, so I'm not really going to comment too much on, you know, their level of play or whatever. But let's just say that I think a lot of the Vengeance DH guides are the most inaccurate ones out there. There is a lot of, like, near-blatant misinformation in some of those guides where, like, I get that it's not intentional misinformation. I think they just don't really know how to play it correctly. But there are so many things that I've seen both in the Vengeance DH Discord and in, like, the Wowhead and stuff guides that I'm just like, no, no, that's wrong. Please don't recommend that to new players. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but some of the stuff that they were saying about, like, Spirit Bomb versus Soul Cleave before the patch came out was just not correct like saying that you still use soul cleave on like aoe pulls on like three plus targets like no you use spirit bomb it's it was just kind of scarily wrong where it's kind of like you can literally just do the math and figure out that no spirit bomb is better and like the only advantages on like pure survivability on like high mythic plus keys or like right before a boss um tank buster or something like that yes you want to use soul cleave more uh, regardless of damage, just because it builds up more frailty stacks, but that's like a very specific situation. And generally speaking, you're using Soul Cleave on single target anyway for boss um, busters. So, yeah, it's uh, there was a lot of stuff in there that maybe wasn't blatantly misinformed, but uh, I would say not entirely correct. And I did not love reading through the Vengeance stuff. I kind of, oh, please, no. All right, uh, swapping to the PTR now. <laughs> <laughs> that's really bad um yeah so i got kind of garbage rng with um with this but is what it is it's just how it goes sometimes it also means i won't be getting any cracked radnax gems on here but 
So be it. Uh, I was hoping I wouldn't queue into double escape from Durnhold Keep, but oh well. Uh, let me get this set up real quick before I catch up and chat again, because that is, I, I wasn't really expecting to have to switch over this early. That is honestly a little bit frustrating. This is definitely the worst luck I've had in a while, but thankfully it is on just a testing run, so it's not uh, the end of the world. Where is Takasa? There we go. There's my shaman. And I can hop in here. Uh, you do indeed get the 15 minute penalty, but it's from the time you got into the dungeon, yeah. Tanks start damage dealers, an argument you've had too many times with other tanks. Yep. Uh, okay, I can let me just quickly swap to edit mode there. And then, what? Uh, why can't I enter the armor? Okay, apparently something about this quest bugged out when I copied over to the PTR, so I think I need to abandon it and then re-accept. Actually, never seen that before. Uh, so I'll pick this up, and then I will go. Maybe something to do with the NPC makes it active? Because that NPC wasn't there before? And now it's working. That is very odd. Um, interesting. I never knew that it could bug out if uh, the NPC despawned. What the fuck, this druid, can you show his gear? I think it did show his gear. Uh, what expansion of the best choice for questing? Uh, I have an entire leveling guide that will answer that question. Uh, Spirit Bomb is one of my favorite skills in DH. Yep. Uh, you tried Guardian Druid leveling today and got seven great dungeons in a row. Too bad it was your first attempt and you can't do an insane time even with this RNG. Uh, yeah, I mean, it still helps, right? That'll still get you, like, way ahead. Is there a best race for speedruns? Kind of depends. Uh... I'm going to try to, like, speed run right now through uh, chat, catch up. Uh, yeah, Naomi gave a good TLDR for the route. I doubt there's a specific race that's best, but of the races that have extra transport options like Volpera and Dark Iron, definitely. Um, fastest way from 60 to 70. I also have a leveling guide for 60 to 70. Uh, if your question is just generally, what is the fastest way to level? I literally have a leveling guide, so, so refer to that. You know, you can find it in the description of the stream. It's also on my website, right? If you have specific questions about parts of the route, I can try to answer it. But as a general overview, that's literally what the guide is there for. When I'm playing an alt, I'm going full sweat mode. You getting purple logs in season one gear. Yeah. 405 prop pally 2 set was cranking in plus 14s for sure. Uh, tanking is just more pressure. If you fuck up, it's GG. Yeah, it definitely requires a lot more responsibility for sure. Tanking isn't hard. It's when others can't adjust to changing situations. Yeah. Blood TK guides have been terrible sometimes. Fine at best for the last couple expansions. The writer isn't a bad player, but he shouldn't be writing guides. Yeah, there's a lot of good players who are just not great at like transferring their skill into like written form for other people to understand. It definitely is kind of hit or miss there. And then there's just some guides that are terrible because of the person who writes it, like um, all of Azertharian's guides. Uh, Azertharian is the worst guide writer. Not because his guides are, well, I was about to say not because his guides are necessarily poorly written, um, just because a lot of it is blatantly misinformation because he wants you to pay money to get access to the actual guide that contains the correct information. Um, yeah, uh, th there is like a difference between bad guide writer and just total fucking scumbag guide writer, which is Azertharian. Uh, that guy can fuck right off with like his paywall bullshit. It is... It is really, 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 really fucking shitty and shady. Uh, at this point, I should probably also switch to Enhance. Because now I'm not doing dungeons anymore. So switching a little bit earlier than I expected. Threat management is really a lost skill. Massively buffing tank threat did make the game better overall. Um, but it left a real hole. I guess. Um, I, I kind of disagree, though. Because having played a lot in Classic, I... I keep hearing people talk about this mystical, like, threat management, and let me tell you, I have not encountered it at all playing a prop paladin, because half the time I'm just out DPSing the actual damage dealers. And I'll hear people say, oh man, I was doing a dungeon earlier with this uh, prop paladin who just couldn't hold threat to save his life, and I just have to wonder what people are doing to not be able to hold threat in Classic, because it is one of the easiest things I've ever done. It is really, really, really not hard to just, like, Press your buttons correctly. 
really, really, really straightforward. Uh, let me take forceful wins, unruly wins. Yeah, I'll just take that for now. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna have to really change up my here. Let me just. Uh, I'm gonna put myself on auto run. I can also now that I'm on the PTR, I can hit up some of the. Uh, yeah, I can hit up some of the. Uh, rare mobs that have likely respawned. That's why you always check out top players' guides. You can adapt to them way better than a generic guide writer. Avengers DH and Prop Heli have been hit or miss as authors change. Yeah, I would say for Prop Heli, I think Lincoln's guides are generally pretty good. Once again, I am biased because I know the guy, but like, I do think he knows what he's talking about for Prop Heli. But he doesn't write like all of them, I think. Uh, so if it's not his guide, then definitely might be a little bit hit or miss. Um... I don't have my bar set up, so this is actually going to be a little bit tricky, as I still get this all working. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, sorry that the dungeons didn't really turn out as planned. I know a few people were looking to snipe into me. If only I had gotten slightly better dungeon RNG, maybe that would have been possible. But alas. Uh, take that off. Can I'm just going to head over here to find the wolf. Uh, I think Wind Fury is probably going to be my go-to. I'm not even going to use Flame Tongue. Rush Shock, I'll keep on here. Lava Lash, I'll put on two. I don't even really know if I'm going to use Lightning Bolt at all. So I'm just going to take that off. Storm Strike, and... Yeah, I think Frost Shock actually... I don't like that. I'm going to take Frost Shock, put it as a Flame Shock modifier button, and... I'll go with this, this for now. I think that should be a good setup, and I can figure out what my other buttons are going to be as I get there. I'll put this on Shift Q. What else do I need? Uh, I think that's it for now. I have oh, I didn't put wind shear on my bars. Storm strike, lava lash, and then. Yeah, this feels pretty good. I have a lot of instant cast abilities. Most stuff is dying relatively quickly. Uh, I can also open the dungeon bags to see if I got anything good, but it doesn't really look like it. Last chance? Nope. Yeah, nothing good off the dungeon bags. This is like pretty much the definition of the worst possible RNG you can see in a speedrun. Unfortunate, but luckily it's not really that impactful. Uh, okay. Uh, do I think Blizzard should change the character selection UI? Having 30 plus characters in a single realm makes it very tedious to scroll through. Well, you used to be able to, like, drag, and then they just removed the ability to drag down the, um, or to drag through the different characters for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure. Only Spirit Bomb at 4 out of 5 stacks, even in AoE. No mention of how to gain aggro fast and Mythic Plus. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, like, the fact that they don't mention that in many cases it is worth using Spirit Bomb at 3 souls is crazy. Like, I saw... I saw like a post basically talking about when it's worth using Spirit Bomb, and it basically said at three souls, never use Spirit Bomb. And I'm just like, huh? Like on five plus targets, it is just a damage gain to use Spirit Bomb. Obviously, like, I think what a lot of people will say is, well, if you have the ability to very easily use Fracture without like overcapping, then yes, get up to five souls, right? But there are definitely cases where if you know that you're about to, like, if I'm um, here, what I can do is I need to learn this as a toy first and put it here. Um, okay, it's not, whatever, I'm just gonna Del Hearth. But like, yeah, if I'm about to hit Immo Aura or something like that, and, or I'm gonna do like Fiery Brand Soul Carver and I'm about to get up to five souls really quickly and I have three souls left over and I have like zero Fracture Charges or something, there are cases where it is definitely worth um, using Fracture or using a Spirit Bomb at three souls. And you're right that like a lot of guides don't even mention that and it's very annoying. The white background is kind of flashing your eyes. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, it's just, it, I, I needed to throw together a transition screen in MS Paint, so that's what I did. Okay, war mode is active. Uh, let me go ahead and take... What do I, what do I want to take here? Um, I don't know. I guess Thunderous Pause, probably, just for movement speed. We'll do Hearthstone again. Uh, just a testing run, so it's not the end of the world, exactly. 
Uh, I'm not going to check Discord right now, Shalestorm, but I will look um, after the uh, after the stream. I can check. That's what I'll do. Chat catch up any percent world record. Exactly. Uh, that is pretty much how it feels half the time, trying to look through stream chat. Trying not to fall behind. Uh, how do I decide what questing areas are the best? Uh, timing, right? I do a bunch of practice runs. So I'll do a run where I run through, you know, zones that aren't the ones in my leveling route, and I'll see, like, okay, how fast does this take me? And, I mean, it really is just practice, practice, practice. You do a run through non-traditional zones, and then you're like, oh, hey, that actually felt pretty good. And then you're like, well, can I include any of this in the standard route, etc.? Um, you know, that's how I added TBC Dungeons to it. I realized that TBC Dungeons were good, so then I was like, okay, well, where in my route can I squeeze in TBC Dungeons? Like, what's the best place? And then I figured that including them right at the start when scaling is the best uh, is probably a good option. And also because, you know, it's all instanced, you are you don't benefit at all from flying, so it's better to do it there and leave uh, outdoor zones for once you actually get flying and you can move really quickly and stuff like that. So it's all, it's really just testing, theory crafting, um, combination of both. I lost my stupid orc peon guy, so I need to go back and grab that. Forgot about that. I uh, would love if they would change character select screen to have an option to expand your character list across the whole screen. That could be cool. Thoughts on time walking? Time walking is not bad, just not the um, best thing in the world. It's good if you want to just like shut your brain off and just power through some dungeons. That's the main reason a lot of people do it. Uh, you see, you joined at the right time. Female mag Magheart Orc is Shaman. Nice. Yep. I don't really do a lot of Magheart Orc speedruns, so I figured it would be fun to do uh, this one as a Magheart Orc. Because I'm going to be honest, the Maghar racials are kind of awful. Uh, I think Maghar Orc may have some of the worst racials in the entire game. None of these racials are good, like, at all. Because uh, they're racial with, like, speed bonus. This, like, doesn't stack with a lot of other things, so it's just really not good. Reduces the duration of all of these things is terrible when you consider that there's a lot of other races that literally can just remove all of these effects. So, yeah, Maghar Orc is, like... Low key, one of the worst races in the entire game, uh, which is why I basically never play it. It is cool though; it's a shame because, like, visually, I really like the look of Maghar orcs. But man, like, the only racial that does anything is the one that gives you a random secondary stat, which is really bad too. Because if it rolls a bad secondary stat, then it's just kind of a mediocre on use ability with a two minute cooldown. Yeah, I don't know. Maghar orc is um. It's in dire need of a racial rework. I, I really don't understand why they are just so much worse compared to every single other allied race. Like, Volpera has Make Camp, Dark Iron Dwarves have their Mole Machine, uh, Cult or Zandalari Trolls have, you know, their special racial where they can, like, pray at the shrines to get different effects. Uh, what else? Cult Huron have some cool options. Cult Huron is maybe on the weaker end of racials, but they at least have some nice flavor options where it may not be the best in terms of performance, but it's at least cool and does something instead of wh whatever the fuck this is, 10% pet health, when pet health literally doesn't even matter in retail WoW. There's just so many baffling racials for Maghar Orc that just do nothing. I just don't understand why it's like this. Uh, I need to refresh my buffs before I forget. Um, let me go ahead and throw that there. Get my Dark Moon top hat. Uh, I know a tank that struggled to hold threats on some classes, but does fine on his Paladin. Yeah, I mean, obviously Prop Pally is probably one of the easier classes to hold threat with in Classic, but I mean, I've seen Blood DKs and Prop Warriors do a lot of damage too, so I really think it's just if you know what you're doing, you can absolutely do a lot of damage on any tank in Classic. It's just most people don't know how, so... Mind you, I mean, I I have been getting 99 parses on my prop paladin in, like, Heroic Trial of the Champion, so I, I am on the upper bound of that, like, kind of the flex, sort of, kind of, not really, but, like, still, I do think that you don't even need to be doing 99% level damage to be able to hold threat in, like, a Heroic Plus Plus dungeon, which is what I've seen some people saying they've uh, seen bad paladin tanks struggle with. It's really not the end of really not the um the hardest thing to do almost defaulted to that again right Fuck no. uh suppose classic in 2023 is more optimized back when it was retail overall tank quality of play wasn't where it is yeah obviously some things change you know like 
it the general quality of player is going to be better now than before um so i can understand back in the day how it was a little bit more acceptable for tanks to not really be great at holding threat but the main issue is i have still seen people using that argument in classic to this day like just the other day when i logged into classic i saw somebody in guild chat saying something like man this prop paladin doesn't know how to hold threat or something like that obviously he was saying it from a perspective of like he should be able to so i think he probably would agree with me that a good prop paladin would be able to hold it but the fact that you still hear stories of people even in wrath classic to this day uh who get people who get players that are unable to hold threat on one of the strongest tank classes in the game it's a little bit sad it seems like the type of thing that people should have been able to figure out by now and it's not even like it's hard, right? You just press Hammer of the Righteous and Avenger Shield and shit just fucking dies. Uh, our prop Paladin right now is a little bit broken in Wrath Classic. Also, it feels like my AoE at the moment is not great. Um, like, obviously, when I have Storm Strike and stuff, it's good, but my only spammable AoE so far is Chain Lightning, which doesn't feel good. I'm also getting really bad RNG on these webbed victims. I I don't think I've ever had RNG this bad on getting the sailors. Uh, this run so far is not going well. Unfortunate. Okay. Uh, you completely understand if you had a sub on Patreon, and I'm happy to answer any questions and maybe leaving some of the fine details out of it, but his guides are ass. The main issue with Azertherian, right, is like, I am fine with somebody, like, kind of like you said, doing that. It would still be kind of shitty, um, but it, like I would still think it's bad if he just said, I'm going to go intentionally in less detail in my our actual like public guides, and you have to pay money to get more information. That, on its own, would be kind of shitty. What Azertherian does, that is just ultra scummy, is he literally puts out incorrect info. Like, he will post the wrong rotation or the wrong talent builds and stuff, and he will either hoard the information to himself so he can get better, better parses with it, or he will just only post the correct builds or the correct sims and stuff like that on his paywalled Patreon. So, it's not just that he is withholding information. He is putting out blatantly false info to mislead people and then basically saying if you want the good info you have to pay him money it is like genuinely the most scummy thing ever and i don't even understand like how you're allowed to do that it's one of those things where i feel like you know blizzard should maybe step in and be like hey that that is not something that we want like a public figure who is writing guides for a game to be doing i get that it's like not directly connected to wow so it's a little bit more disconnected but it is really fucking shady and you know everybody knows this right like he has been called out on it by a lot of other guide writers and theory crafters and he just still fucking does it right because he makes money off it it's it is what it is it's uh incredibly shitty but as long as people continue paying for it he's gonna keep doing it and as far as I know, there are people who actually pay money for that shit for whatever fucking reason. So, hey. And, you know, he, he'll always default back to the usual, oh, well, I've got to make money somehow. And it's like, there there are ethical ways to make money. And then there is that, right? And, like, it's, it's kind of, you know, from my perspective, you know, as somebody who also writes guides, uh, I could charge money for people to access my leveling guides. There are paid leveling guides out there. I could absolutely say you have to pay me even if it was like $1 to use my leveling guide or something like that. But I don't because I think that's shitty, right? I think paywalling information in general is shitty, but especially when you are blatantly misinforming people to kind of like encourage them, I guess, to pay you money to get the right info. That is just an extra fucking level. Uh, like it, selling guides and stuff is already, I would say, dubious and something that I'm against. But yeah, that is that is just above and beyond, which is why, like, you know, I, I he is probably the only guide writer that I feel comfortable name dropping and saying, fuck this guy, because what he does is genuinely scummy, in my opinion. And I do think he should be publicly shamed for it. Uh, other people, you know, if people write a bad guide, whatever. Um, but bad guide and blatant misinformation, two different things. Uh, the current Prop Heli author is pretty good, but when Trekkie was the guide writer for Prop Heli, the guides were slowly reducing the praise of him in the intro over time. Yikes. Yeah, I, I never read Trekkie's guide, so I can't speak to that, but, uh, I will, I will take your word for it. 
Trekkie is one of the best prop paladins in the world. Trekkie plays with one of the best guilds in the world. Trekkie is a CE raider. Yikes. Yeah, that sounds kind of, um, honestly, just cringe. Just self-praise in your own guide. Yikes. Uh, Flame Tongue is... Oh, let me see. I just skipped past that. Flame Tongue is necessary because it only goes off offhand. Wind Fury applies to main hand. Oh, okay, in that case, I will, I will apply it then. Uh, where is Flame Tongue? I think Flame Tongue is... Just on here. Okay, so I put Wind Fury on main hand, Flame Tongue on offhand. Gotcha, that makes sense. Um, meta is you generate three fragments every time, so double fracture is guaranteed to overcap. Yeah. Uh, how much slower would you say leveling is without dungeons? Not really that bad, honestly. Uh, dungeons help, but it's not the end of the world. Um... Only really changes 10 to 30 and 60 to 70. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, there is like a knock-on effect, right, later on because of the fact that you are uh, able to skip some of the inefficient stuff early on. But, it, I mean, my route accounts for all of that if you don't do dungeons. For a while, I didn't actually do dungeons while leveling, so it really won't slow you down that much. Okay. Slowly catching up on chat. Racials are bad because Blizzard do not care like the bugged and Mechanome Racial was. Yeah, Mechanome Racials were also... Mechanome Racials, I think at least some of them had like minor utility, but for the most part they were kind of awful. Uh, is there a community agreed rules to speedrun WoW? Um, not really at the moment, which is unfortunate. Like, the way I do speedruns right now is I just go with the rule set that I personally think is the most fair and enjoyable, and that's how I do my speedruns. Uh, there used to be community agreed rules, and then the community could no longer agree on it because the moderators just stopped giving a shit and just allowed effectively blatant cheating, which is when I stopped using speedrun.com. And now speedrun.com is just a fucking shit show clown fiesta, and I no longer touch it whatsoever. So uh, the problem, I, you know, I actually had a uh, whatchamacallit, discussion about this in my Discord the other night. Uh, basically, a speedrunning community is like competitive nature is only as good as its moderation and rule set. And right now, World of Warcraft doesn't have that. And quite frankly, I'm not willing to be that for the community. I'm not going to be the guy who sits around and moderates speedruns and tries to decide on what the best rule set is. At the end of the day, I'm going to just do the runs that I think are fun to do uh, with the routes that I think are the most efficient and applicable for the average player. And if people want to do something different, if people want to like abuse an exploit that is technically faster... They are welcome to do that. I will not include it in my runs. Um, oh, fuck. I have a stupid cinematic canceller on. Uh, so, yeah. It, you know, I, I've kind of talked that subject to death lately, though, so I'm not really going to get into it now. Um, but TLDR, there is no really official agreed-upon rule set. Uh, just, you know, do whatever you want, kind of. There's some obvious things, like, obviously, if you're doing a solo speedrun, don't get external help. Should be a no-brainer. But some people cheat that anyway, because, you know, whatever. Uh, let's see. Uh, how much would I reword their racials, and what would I give the pure orcs? Uh, pure orc racials are fine. I, th I just think Maghar needs some sort of redesign. Uh, you get players who are unable to hold threat in retail, too? Yeah. I, it's more understandable in Classic if a tank can't hold threat, because at least there, it's like you have less tools. But retail tanks not being able to hold threat? Unless it's against something like a Devastation Evoker, which is just a design issue on Blizzard's end. But yeah, you should be able to at least hold threat against your co-tank. On Resto, Frost Shock is no CD. Yeah, I, I might be better as Resto, but th the main reason I'm doing this run is it is an Enhancement Shaman run. I only did Resto because Dungeon Cubes, which I think is a no-brainer. Um, and I was planning on sticking with Resto a little bit longer, but I think at the end of the day, Enhancement Shaman won the poll. Enhancement Shaman is what you know people have wanted to see, so that's what I'm going to do for the run whenever it is at least somewhat makes sense to do so. Um, so obviously Resto for Dungeon Cubes is a no-brainer there, but past that, you know. Uh, Maghar RNG racial penalty, yeah. Enhanced Shaman AoE is terrible until Crash Lightning. Uh, I think most of us are blinded by our hardcore playtime. Casuals might only play three hours a week. Yep. Uh, I still think, like, you know... It, like, yeah, I, I think even if you're a casual player, there's a certain expectation of, you know, 
if you're going into harder content like higher mythic plus or raids you should at least do research because i'm not when i say that you know oh tanks are unable to hold threat i'm not shit talking like you know little timmy who's jumping into his first heroic dungeon i'm criticizing the tanks who actually try to push high level mythic plus or try to join like an end game raid guild and still don't understand the basics of holding threat that's when it's an issue Obviously, if you're learning, you're you're learning, right? I'm not going to say, oh, this guy's shit because it's his first dungeon as a tank and he doesn't know what to hold threat. No. Um, but there are plenty of people who still try to push high-end content without actually caring to learn. That is when it's a problem. Um, I I'm not going to actively... Yeah, so if you know who the, the Hunter Theory Crafter I'm talking about is, like, you, you know. I'm not going to actively spell out his name and tell you who he is so that you can go, like, harass him. And I should say... No, this should hopefully be obvious, right? Don't go and harass this guy just because I said that he does shitty stuff. He does shitty stuff, sure. But, like, just ignore him, right? Like, if you're playing BM Hunter, don't use his guides. There are other BM Hunter guides. Go use a, a free BM Hunter guide. Like, I think uh, Tarlo has a free BM Hunter guide that, from what my friends have told me, is really good. Uh, I remember asking some of them about that when I was trying to like uh, mess around with my hunter at endgame. And there are a lot of other good free options that are not written by Azertherian. Um, but don't give him shit, right? Um, believe me, the other theory crafters have given him enough shit about what he does. Um, it, it's never okay to just go and harass somebody regardless of what they're doing, right? Obviously, if somebody is killing babies, I think then it maybe is okay. But, you know, Azertherian just does shitty stuff in guides. He's not killing babies. So, you know, don't don't go and send him hate messages. That's always not okay to do. Um, but I do think it is something worth talking about, especially because I think the main issue is a lot of new players will read those guides, not realize what he does with them, and then make incorrect choices on their builds because they are misled by his uh, leveling guides. So I think it is worth calling out whenever possible, just so people don't get misled. But beyond that, you know, don't, don't do anything, don't do anything stupid, right? Just uh, watch from a distance, laugh at the stupid hunter theory crafter, but don't engage. That's how I think everything should be handled. Um, oh, Naomi even said that. Yeah. Wouldn't go spread hate. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, ain't trying to harass. I just want to see. Yeah. I feel that. I can understand. Um, and specifically, I should say that does not extend to the entire hunter community. Like I said, there are other theory crafters out there like like Tarlo. I, I only know Tarlo's name because I remember when um, when I asked one of my friends, what's a good BM hunter guide that isn't written by Azertherian? They mentioned Tarlo's guide. Apparently his his BM hunter guides are really good. So uh, that's the only one I know of by name. I don't mean hunter, so I don't know like all of the other detailed ones, but I'm sure there are a lot of other good guide writers for hunter. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, it, it's really just him that does this. I honestly don't even think there is anyone else for any other class that does, um, like shady, uh, guy writing tactics to the extent that he does it. It's, it is pretty bad. Uh, do you remember anything specific he says that's wrong? I can't find people calling him out in a quick Google search. I'm sure you should be able to find it in a quick Google search. Um, there was a, a pretty bad case where he... The, the last thing that I remember that was really, really problematic is in uh, Vault of the Incarnates, there have been a million different cases, which is why I'm surprised. If you dig a little harder, you can absolutely find it. Uh, the last thing that I really remember being bad is there was a broken interaction with one of the glyphs on Dire Beast in um, Vault of the Incarnates. And it caused your dire beast to generate like additional focus or something like that so it was a massive dps gain and he literally didn't even include it on his patreon he didn't include it on the public guides he wasn't including it on his patreon but he was abusing this exploit the entire time for months into vault of the incarnates until other theory crafters finally caught on and called him out for it and his response was oh i didn't realize that it was causing that interaction some random niche glyph that nobody uses, but he was using it, and it, it's, uh, from what I've been told, right, from other hunters, it is a noticeable difference, because you're getting a shit ton of extra focus, and the main guide writer claims, oh, I had no idea. Oh, but this glyph was causing me to generate a ton of extra focus and do a ton of extra damage? Wow, I, I couldn't have guessed, right? 
Uh, I've only been using it for three months, uh, and people found beta logs of him using it as early as raid testing in uh, Vault of the Incarnates. But no, he didn't know, right? It was just pure coincidence, and that's why it wasn't on any of his guides. Shit like that. That's the one that I remember hearing about recently where I'm just like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> like, that is just so fucking stupid. Uh, but like I said, I'm sure if you look, you can find plenty of other examples because it it's all the fucking time when he's getting up to bullshit. Uh, there was a classic example of, oh yeah, oh here's another funny one. Um, before this patch, 10.1, he put out um, a, like a, a sim C little chart thing showcasing the damage of different specs, uh, showing like which one was good and which one was bad. And the number one sim, uh, so he basically showed all the talents for it, he posted it on the Hunter Discord, right? Uh, and the number one sim was named subscribe to Azertherian's Patreon to get more secret hunter tips. And that sim was doing like 50,000 more damage than the others. So somebody found the sim and the sim was using an item level like 400 weapon or something. Basically like way higher item level than you can get or whatever it is. It, now we're up to item level 400. It was like using an item level 500 weapon. It was basically 100 item levels above what is currently possible. So he he posted that at the top of his sim charts that it showed up right there and then changed the name to subscribe to Azertharian's Patreon or whatever, just so that that was the top result. And then posted it publicly in the Hunter Discord as an advertisement and then took it down when people were like what the fuck are you doing man how can you fucking do this shit <laughs> like it's there are just so many cases where he does shit like this which is why like i said i i am surprised if you are not able to find anything with a google search because yeah that that one in uh <laughs> with the fucking 500 item level survival hunter weapon that caused a shit storm in a lot of other discords where a lot of people were posting this like can you believe this garbage uh uh, it, it's it, just too many fucking situations to count. It's just fucking ridiculous that he can get away with doing shit like that. Um. Anyways, let me catch up a little bit more. Uh, I don't think he was praising himself in it. Uh, I believe it was the Wowhead author's intro. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Uh, why are orcs and Maghar orcs two different races? Just put the Maghar in the customization of orcs. Well, it's an allied race, right? So it's not just a customization option. One starts at level one and the other starts at level 10. So there are like, it is kind of an important difference in that regard, which is the main reason why it's different. But I agree that like visually they are very similar. I think, you know, if it was just a customization option from the get-go, then they wouldn't have made additional races. But because it was initially implemented as an allied race, obviously kind of means they need to have different stuff. Uh, okay, I got all of the worgen. Now I just need two more orc sea dogs. I can get I'll leave those few. Opening the first pull of freehold with tip the scales, fire breath. Oops, I died. Yeah, devastation evoker's threat needs a modifier. It's kind of ridiculous that it's still as ridiculous as it is. Okay, last one. Is there any spec that I've never done a run on? There's plenty of specs that I've never done a run on. I've never done an Enhancement Shaman run, that's why I'm doing this. Um, obviously, before now, but that's why I had it on the poll, right? It's because I haven't done a run before with Enhance, so I uh, wanted to put it to the test, and that's why it ended up in the poll with... Uh, I put, like, random Hunter spec. I have done a few different Hunter runs before, but I still put Hunter in the poll because I haven't done one in a while. But I've never done a Retribution Paladin run. Because every single one of my uh, Paladin runs has been with Prot, because honestly, Prot Pally's really broken. And I haven't done a run with like a bunch of Rogue, uh, yeah, a bunch of the Rogue and Warlock specs. Like, I've never done a full Demo or Destro run. They added the Dark Rangers as customizations? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree that they could have made Maghar Orc as a customization. They absolutely could have. It's just, you know, that wasn't how it was initially implemented. So the problem is now, retroactively, it would be tough to go back and change them to just be a regular orc customization because they have the whole, like, starting scenario thing. Um, I don't know. It's entirely possible that, like, if Dark Rangers had come out in BFA, maybe they would have implemented them as an allied race. Who knows? Uh, but obviously, they did a bunch of the allied races when, you know, BFA was current content because they wanted to promote the new feature, right? Which... I always thought that, like, allied races as an expansion feature was kind of lame. I think the idea of trying to say that they're significantly different from other races and worth 
putting in all this time to unlock is maybe a little bit disingenuous. Like, allied races are cool, but I don't know. I think the fact that they've had to go ahead and undo all of the unlock requirements just so everybody can access it really speaks volumes about how interesting it is to actually get them. You know, people like new races, but the whole idea of allied races being these things that you have to recruit into the faction was just kind of marketing gibberish. And obviously now they are completely removing that. So, yeah. All right. Now that I'm, once I'm on the Gilneas flight path, I think I can spend some of my talent points because i haven't spent any talent points in a while i have yeah three left okay so here i'm gonna take ice strike right i definitely want to take um sundering crash lightning and then i'll take doom winds next and then i'll, I'll decide what i want to take after that uh here okay nature's fury is just good that's more damage anything in my class tree that gives me more damage i will take uh ice strike Increases the damage of my next Frost Shock. That actually seems quite good. Uh, where do I want to put this? It's a 13 second cooldown. Mm. Uh, hitting two or more targets causes Storm Strike, Ice Strike, and Lava Lash to also do damage to all targets in a frontal cone. Okay, that seems good. Uh, I I doubt I'm ever going to use Lightning Bolt, so I'm just going to take that off my bars. I'm going to put Sundering on R. I'm going to put um, probably that there. And I'm just going to put Crash Lightning on T, I guess? I don't know. I think you have... You, uh, there's no delay. Um... I'm just catching up on chat. I am about five to ten minutes behind reading chat at any given time, but the actual stream, uh, there is no delay. It's just, I don't really like, I like to read everything in chat. I don't like to fall behind. So uh, that is going to mean I'm constantly catching up. So if it ever seems like I am uh, like ten minutes behind, it is because I am just still reading chat. Also, the, the nameplates being broken makes it really hard to gauge at a glance um, how much damage I need to do. Uh, how can you not hold aggro on retail? Some people will find a way. You'd, you'd be surprised. It is uh, crazy. Uh, okay. Tarlo writes the current BM Wowhead guide. Survival 1 is by Dualby, who is fine. Yeah, I, I don't know who the survival writer is. Like, I, I don't know anything about Dualby, but... As far as I'm aware, it, it is a perfectly fine guide. I haven't heard anything bad about, you know, the other guide writers. So I would imagine nothing is wrong with that. Um, MM1 and Wowhead in all three specs on Icy Veins are Azertherian. We try to look for an MM alternative or just go to the class Discord. Unfortunately, the class Discord is also pretty tightly controlled by Azertherian. And anything that is, like, badly said about him, uh, he will censor. So... Uh, I would actually recommend against going to the Hunter Discord for really anything other than finding a different guide to use. Um, he, he keeps a pretty tight lid on any criticism or any alternative guides. Uh, yeah, uh, unfortunate. There was apparently like some drama early on, like in Legion, where when Azertherian was like initially taking over the Hunter Discord, there was some pushback from a lot of the other Hunter Theory crafters. And unfortunately, it did end up going the way of, like, Azertherian kind of got control over it. Um, but apparently there was, like, some big schism early on in the Hunter community back in Legion because of that. And they tried to make, like, some split-off Discord, which apparently died out because people weren't really willing to switch over. So uh, it does seem like Hunters, from what I've heard, have tried over the years to get people, you know, a better source of information through Discord. But it... Just kind of hasn't really worked out like that. Uh, okay, so Counter-Strike Totem, people are saying, was really good. Uh, Winds of Alakir seems good. Movement speed can't hurt. I'm going to make sure I don't get into combat here. I'm going to put Counter-Strike Totem on E. And I'm going to cancel this. Uh, refresh my food buff. There we go. All right. Uh, grab all this stuff. Devastation Evokers don't need a threat modifier. They need an extra brain still that stops them from blasting as hard as they can the millisecond a tank even looks at a pack. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but I think 
with the average WoW player, that is a little bit much to ask. You know, more than one brain cell, that's a premium. Uh, oh, wow. A lot of, like, just when I think I'm caught up in chat, I scroll down a little bit and then my chat snaps to the bottom and I'm actually like 20 messages behind. God damn it. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Uh, allied races should have been normal races to begin with. Yeah, like I said, the the whole allied races thing, entirely a marketing ploy to make people think BFA was more than just a shell of an expansion. BFA had so many features, quote unquote, that were actually just like regular content rebranded as something special, like Warfronts. Warfronts, the fact that Blizzard actually thought they could market Warfronts as a major feature when it is probably one of the worst bits of content ever added to WoW is depressing like when you think about it bfa had so many like things marketed as like new game modes or whatever and they were just all so fucking terrible like island expeditions island expeditions i think at least get some credit in that the end result by the end of bfa was not terrible and that is that is still being generous um but island expeditions at launch were some of the worst content i've ever had to play through grinding that for artifact power was miserable like i grinded hundreds literally hundreds of mob souls runs at the start of legion for artifact power and i did not mind it at all because mob souls was actually fun i enjoyed running mob souls like i think i did it like 230 times or something like that uh i remember counting it i did a lot of plus two mob souls runs but island expeditions I felt just dead inside by the time I was done grinding my artifact power. It was fucking misery. Uh, just really unfun content through and through. And that was one of the main selling points of BFA, right? So, yeah, unfortunate. Uh, it was cool for the first few, yeah. Uh, they left the restrictions the day after XP up. Well, that is literally the entire reason they're doing it, right? Obviously, it is intentional that they are uh, doing the XP buff right up until the leveling changes because they want to make sure that like people keep playing it. Because why would anybody level? And, and I'm not saying that this is correct, right? Um, obviously, as a player, I would much rather have the game, um, what should we call it, be like fun to play. Uh, with like all the modifiers at the same time. I'm not saying it's not fun to play now, but there is very much an intentional design choice on Blizzard's end with many forms of content of, we are going to intentionally make this slightly less convenient than it could be, because if we made it too convenient, then people would just stop playing after the fact. Like if they put all of the goodies at this exact same time, people would level all of their characters right now. And then the moment the XP buff ended, nobody would do it. But now at least they could say, well, if you... Uh, you know, the XP buff may be over, but now you can uh, level with any allied race that you want, and it's a way for them to keep some numbers up and whatever. And it's like, I get it. It's a business. It sucks. It is what it is, but yeah. Um, they, they were always going to do that. In fact, that's why when uh, they announced the XP buff, I said almost immediately that I think the patch is going to release on July 11th, the day after the XP buff ends, because that just made logical sense to me on how Blizzard does things, and I was spot on. And I predicted it like a month before they ever announced the uh, patch date purely because of the XP buff ending. And I'm like, it matches with their release schedule. It's the week after 4th of July, and they're obviously not going to release it on 4th of July. Yeah, knowing Blizzard, that is what we can expect. Um, decided to personally take a week or two just to unlock them all and took two days. Yeah. It's not too bad at this point. The times I've died taking threat to on Devoker were entirely my faults. Yeah. Uh, I'm a Wrath player, haven't touched retail in years. What are they changing about Alliance? Uh, we're talking about allied races. It's a separate feature. Oh, Naomi explained that. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, oh, I get Astral Recall is like, this doesn't share cooldown with Hearthstone. I think, so that's actually kind of nice. It's unfortunate that you don't unlock it until 32, so if you had Astral Recall at level 10, it would actually be kind of a substitute for Dalaran Hearthstone in some cases, but alas, by the time you get there, you'll already have wanted to pick up Dalhearth, so it doesn't help too much. I'll just take Winds of Alakir again. 
let's see. Uh, Skylar said, Hey, Harlden, as a returning flower... Uh, I butchered that. As a returning player to WoW, what's my opinion on my favorite tank? Uh, right now, definitely Vengeance DH. But... Harlden, save Blood DK. We need more of them to complain about our low damage to get buffs. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, Blood DK... Uh, I like Blood DK. It's purely for the damage. Uh, Blood DK really does need help. The sad thing about Blood DK, honestly, is Blizzard has buffed it so many times, and yet it is still not enough. They just keep throwing these, like, 3% aura buffs onto Blood DK. Like, surely if we buff them another 3%, they'll finally be viable. Not realizing that they would need to kind of entirely rework how Blood DK's damage actually functions for it to not be bottom tier in terms of damage. Um, but yeah. Uh, the other issue is you kind of can't really buff Blood DK that much because if Blood DK does a ton of damage, well, it also has like really good utility. So you'll end up with like a Sepulchre of the First One scenario where Blood DK just ends up being the best at literally everything because it's the tankiest tank, it has utility through mass grip, and then it just does more damage than everybody else. So why would you do anything other than run double Blood DK? Uh, which is unfortunately the reason why I think they continually keep it low on damage, but. I do think it is right now way lower than it should reasonably be. It it needs some serious attention instead of just slapping a million plus three percent aura buffs onto it, which is just not going to fix anything. It is just in dire need of like a minor rework. I just honestly, I want them to just go back to Wad Blood DK. Scrap this bone shield bullshit. Just go back to when like your death strike healing actually scaled off your attack power and shit. And you had what was all the stuff that we had in Wad? Breath of Sindragosa, God, that was those were the days. Fucking Breath of Sindragosa Blood Decay was some of the most fun I ever had tanking. Absolutely love that build. Oh, I got water walking, nice. I'm constantly catching up the IRL. Yeah. Any console gaming throughout life? Not really. Um, I mean I played Xbox and Wii with my friends a few times as a kid, but like I I've just never really played games with a console. It's just I, I mean, honestly, I find it inconvenient. It is way more annoying to have to grab a controller and, like, you know, sit down and, and play, like, a game on my console when I could just be on my computer playing something. And also, I, I have Discord open and I can, like, easily talk to my friends and stuff like that. It's, I don't know, I've never found consoles to be, like, convenient or enjoyable. You know, to each their own, of course. And like I said, I did play a little bit with my friends. But, like, the only time I ever played consoles were was, like, I'm over my friend's house and he wants to play, like, Call of Duty co-op on his Xbox or something like that. Okay, well, then I would play it. But if I'm playing on my own, I almost always played stuff on my computer. But I consider mogging in my casual speedruns. I've done it in the past. I, it's not impossible, right? It's just... If I don't have a transmog that I really like, you know, whenever I play a Lightforged Draenei, I immediately transmog the Heritage Armor. If I'm leveling a Nightborn, I almost immediately transmog the Nightborn Heritage Armor, but I'm not going to sit here and spend like 10 minutes creating like a new transmog or something like that. Just don't really feel like spending the time to do that. Uh, do I have add-ons for HP bars? You don't have dots and debuffs. I do not. Uh, so if, if you see something in my UI that you don't have, it is likely a setting in the default UI because I have I have a pretty minimal add-on setup. Uh, you can see here I have details. That's the thing down here. I have an uh, extra quest button. Uh, Naomi recommended that. It's if you pop up edit mode. You can't see it now because I have no quest buttons, right? Um, but it's this thing here. You can see it's like sometimes quest items will get an extra button. Uh, abandoned zone quest. This is so like if I open my questing log here, I can click click this so I can abandon my Zanger Marsh quests with the click of a button. That's pretty nice. Uh, what else? I have Leatrix Plus. This is like my go-to leveling add-on. It has you know auto quest turn in, um, cutscene skipping stuff like that. Uh, Postal. Postal is just like some nice quality of life stuff for mailing. Sexy map is the thing that makes my map, well, look sexy, right? It's the thing that gives it the glowy effects and whatnot. And speedy auto loot just makes your loot slightly faster. That's it. Um, that is all I have, right? So anything else that you see is all completely default UI stuff. So if you dig enough into the settings, you will find ways to enable it. I don't remember exactly how I enabled every single setting that I have on. Uh, some stuff I enabled a long time ago, and I forget what button does it, but 
Uh, it's all there. Hello, Harlden. I recently found your videos. I want to say congratulations on your uh, Druid speedrun, and thanks for making these. No problem. Um, glad you enjoy the videos. Stop taunting the boss. Auto attacks are his top DPS and details. Yeah. I uh, really like the idea of having to get races at the start, but weird they made it for the last two extra expansions. Yeah. Warfronts were a blessing if you put them against island expeditions. I would say, yeah, at the start, Warfronts were definitely better. But I do think, whereas Warfronts just kind of stayed the same throughout the entire expansion, Island Expeditions by the end of BFA were tolerable. They were not good by any stretch of the imagination, but I actually didn't hate running Islands. When you had, like, all of the dynamic events, um, and there was all, like, the little uh, transmogs and stuff like that. Like, I actually, I ran a bunch of Island Expeditions with my friends towards the end of BFA, and I didn't hate it. Because we would we would just pull the entire island, and every single time there was some new, different dynamic thing that would change, and that was kind of fun. And also, you would get like a lot of really cool transmog options that you know were fun to play around with. So, I I think purely I would say Warfronts was worse, just because they only did one additional Warfront, they only did Darkshore, and Darkshore kind of sucked, and they never fixed it past that. They just kind of left it as is. I really was not a fan of what they did with Warfronts throughout the expansion. But I do agree with you, yeah. Island Expeditions at launch was farm the exact same thing 24-7, or like you put it, you just fall behind. And because they gave better ways to farm, like, artifact power later on, it wasn't quite as mandatory. But yeah, early on, when it was literally required to unlock all of your Azerite traits, and there was absolutely zero diversity in it, and... Uh, stuff was kind of tuned to be annoying rather than, you know, you can chain pull the entire island and it's fine. Yeah, that was probably the worst that any feature has ever been in World of Warcraft. So I, I will give you that. Uh, okay. So now I need to go do Amber Mill Codex now that I've gotten these two rares out of the way. You really liked BFA zone design? Yeah, like BFA questing was fine. Um, I, the only thing with BFA questing is they've kind of tried, or at least before, they tried to make it the default new player experience, and that is tragic, I think. BFA is not the best new player uh, set of quests to do, but it's not terrible. I, I don't think it's the best, though. I don't really like how disconnected the BFA zones felt, because I think they were trying to go with this whole thing where uh, Horde players would actually have like a lot to engage with in the ally zones and stuff, and vice versa at max level through like the war campaigns or whatever, but the war campaigns ended up being just like some barely fleshed out feature that they just didn't really touch. And you would just do a bunch of really static quest lines that were heavily time gated and that was it. So it ended up being that you really just got like half the leveling zones as before for every faction. Of course you could play Alliance and Horde and BFA was the first expansion where I really did play Alliance specifically because I wanted to see the, you know, other side of the questing experience. But Overall, I think, you know, a lot of other expansions were better than BFA, even for questing. Like, Legion had, in my opinion... Oh, nice, we got a chest. Uh, Legion had a lot of really good questing zones. Um, WAD, obviously. WAD, say what you will about the rest of the expansion, fantastic questing zones. Uh, so, yeah, I think BFA kind of falls short, ultimately. Um, because I got that chest, I don't even need to check for the other locations. There should be a rare here. Aquarius the Unbounds. Um, I I found all of the other rares. Oh, I he somehow managed to get all the way behind me? I don't know how he juked me that hard. But I was like, there's no way that Aquarius is dead. And somehow he snuck all the way around the side when I wasn't looking, apparently. Uh, am I liking Enhancement Shaman? Yeah, I've... Um, I've played Enhancement before, like, casually, like, a while ago, back in, like, Legion and stuff, so I've never disliked Enhancement Shaman. It's always been a spec that I've kind of enjoyed. I'm not super familiar with it, and I haven't played it in recent years, which is why it's, like, kind of rough. I'm not going to be playing it super efficiently, right? But I've never hated Enhancement. Like, for instance, Shadow Priest, going into my Shadow Priest speedrun, I was expecting to have a miserable time. I was expecting to hate every single second of that Shadow Priest run and just not click with it at all. But by the end of that run, I was pleasantly surprised that I actually really enjoyed it. But Enhancement going into this, like, I played it before, so I at least know some basics of kind of how it works. And I know that, you know, I don't mind the playstyle. I think it's fine. So, yeah. I think once I get the feel for how all of the talents change now... Um... 
Let's see. Lava Lash cooldown. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Molten Assault and go down that way. I kind of want to do that. Uh, what is this? Oh, a Gust of Wind. Ooh, but Spirit Walk is kind of nice. Um, mm, I kind of like Spirit Walk for the burst movement speed. I'll have to figure out what to take after the fact. And... Alright, so now I have to go to Sepulchre. I'm going to quickly throw myself on this flight point and then try to catch up and chat. Fuck. I, never mind. I'm just going to auto-fly because I forgot to pick up the Sepulchre flight point. Fuck me. Um, I'm returning player, and man, this wins buff is crazy. You started fresh at the beginning of the buff, and now you have almost every class up to 60. Very nice. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Mob Souls, you were at least doing other shit and also optimizing your route. The amount of mobs runs you did was stupid, and you hated it by the end, but it was much better. Yeah. I still think Mob Souls, it helps that it was the most efficient dungeon to run, and it was, in my opinion, Mob Souls may be my favorite dungeon of all time. So, if I had to be trapped inside of one dungeon for 230 runs, I'm glad it was Mob Souls, because I really, really, really like Mob Souls. Uh, but, obviously, if I had to do it again, right, like, if Legion Classic were to come out, I probably wouldn't want to run Mob Souls over and over and over 230 times, but... It was at least a grind that I enjoyed, unlike everything in BFA. Quietly hides the 10 characters I leveled while the boost is active, uh, and not during the improvements. Yeah, I mean, right now is still a faster time to level characters compared to the leveling improvements, right? So, uh, I would definitely say if you're gonna pick a time to level characters, now would be it. Because th the other stuff is good, right? Like, you know, the scaling changes and the allied race stuff like it, it's nice quality of life but you're still going to get way more time efficiency at this exact moment in time uh let me raw shock this guy i'll do spirit walk here and then shift into ghost wolf uh you're forgetting the fact that race faction changes exist that's another reason they're adding race class combos allied race restrictions drops off after xp buff ends that's true yeah um Uh, what should we call it? If you're going for Gust of Wind, it saves you from fall damage. Well, yes, but I also have this thing called Goblin Glider Kit. So, I don't really think I need to worry much about, you know, avoiding fall damage when I have Goblin Gliders. Uh, Blood DK, here's an 8% buff, here's a 6.5% buff, here's 3%, here's a 5-10% to buff to your strongest abilities. Also, Blood DK is still lowest. Yep, exactly. But then, like, Brewmaster is already doing really good, and they get an entirely reworked talent. Which, you know, I'm not really complaining. I like Brewmaster, and I think the fact that they're turning Tiger Palm into a passive is really nice, because one of the biggest issues that I've had with Brewmaster is the button bloat. It's the fact that you have so many things to press. So, they're fixing Brewmaster and giving them more stuff than they already have to improve their damage and make their rotation feel more fun, and Blood DK just keeps getting aura buffs, which is kind of insult to injury, honestly. I think there may be a chest here, so I'm still going to keep an eye out for it. Um, flat percent buffs sometimes indicate we don't know else how to fix this, so we're trying to buff this and see what happens. Oh, absolutely, right? And there are times when aura buffs are all that you need to turn a spec from, like, dog shit into really good. The problem is, like, I can understand them initially trying to fix Blood Decay with aura buffs. Like, I get it as an initial solution, that's fine. But like Naomi said, they have done so many different aura buffs. And I, I'm assuming you copy-pasted that directly because that sounds familiar. So many different, like, aura buffs of varying degrees and then specific ability buffs, and none of it has actually changed anything. Blood Decay is slightly better, uh, but is still worst. So... At a certain point, I just don't understand why they haven't realized, okay, aura buffs are not working, so instead of doing yet another aura buff, let's actually look at their core kit, and yet they just keep doing it. Uh, here's hoping that at least they're just doing this to, like, tide them over, and they were more focused on other specs during 10.1.5, and that maybe in 10.2, Blood DK gets actual attention, but... It's getting a little bit ridiculous, where it's like every other week, oh, look, there's another Blood Decay aura buff that is going to change absolutely nothing. It's a, a little bit unfortunate. Also, at this point, I I think I kind of want to just... I don't know, do I abandon Silverpine here? Because, like, Silverpine is good, but 
I've already killed all of the rare mobs. And like the very end of Silver Pine, it's not like the most efficient thing in the world. Is only one may enter. Just yeah, okay. So I get full quest credit for this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna turn this in. And then the next set of quests in Silver Pine, it's not bad, right? But it is like not the most efficient thing on the planet. And I'm already level 36. So I'm just gonna kind of bail and I'm gonna do Wad intro and parts of Gorgrond, and then we're gonna finish up in Hillsbrad. Because Hillsbrad is definitely better, especially when I have fast flying. But until I get level 40, I think Wad Intro is going to be the best thing to do. And also, I still haven't turned in any of my Dark Moon quest items. So I can do all of that stuff. Uh, and I need to learn tailoring, blacksmithing, and cooking. I'll need to find a good place to do that. So actually, I could probably just do that in Dalaran. So let me, let me do that real quick. Fuck, uh, I didn't put Dalaran, Hearthstone, put that on my bars. There we go. Honestly, the way to buff Blood Decay is to nerf their passive stuff, Shattering Bone and M+, and put more into active rotation stuff. Yeah. Swap Breath of Sinjagosa and Empower Rune Weapon in the Frost and Clash Trees. Yes, please. I would immediately swap to Blood Decay if they had Breath of Sinjagosa back, and I could get that playstyle again. That would be the shit. What are some of my favorite zones to level through? Not just for speed, just for fun. Um, Probably, like, if I could say one of the main zones that I enjoy that isn't necessarily, like, fast... I would have to say Stone Talon Mountains. Stone Talon isn't even that bad, but it's like, it's not a speed leveling zone, but it is still something that I really enjoy. Uh, okay, let me take Tailoring here. There's definitely a better way to pick up these quests. I'm just doing it like this because it's easier. And then I'm going to pick up Cooking. We're going to do that. Uh, down. Can I pick up Cooking from this trainer? I think there's a Cooking trainer in here. Is there? No. Uh, must only be in, like, the actual other inns. Uh, hello, owner. Good to see you. Driving back from vacation. Still didn't miss the stream. Awesome. Always good to have you here. Am I the only one that despises wad leveling? So, I think wad leveling, after you've done it, like, a million times, it definitely gets old. But I think wad leveling, it, it honestly is pretty good. You know, I've done wad so many times over the years that I definitely get tired of it, for sure. But... There are many worse expansions to play through. Also, I forgot to swap my consumables at level 30. Uh, okay, let me take this. And then I can head to Old Dalaran. Also, I need to put Potion of the Tolvir on my bars. And these two things. Why is that? Okay, there we go. Now it's broken. Took a second. Um... I keep having to scroll up. Uh, discovered your channel recently. I've been enjoying watching your runs. Happy to be here for a live stream. Yeah, good to have you here, Rita. Glad you're enjoying the runs. Uh, got 10 to 36 in two hours on your first ever Druid attempt. Is that any good? That's very good. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely a solid time. Uh, go to the first staging area. Enhancement is really solid, especially loaded with heirlooms. Yeah, so far it feels good. Now that I have a lot of my AoE tools, like Sundering chain or Crash Lightning and stuff like that, uh, it's definitely starting to feel pretty nice. Spirit Walk is mathematically better, but you like Gust of Wind for feels. Yeah, I would imagine for, like, endgame stuff, like raiding. Um, I think most shamans I know run Gust of Wind, which makes sense. You know, it has really nice utility. But for leveling, it's just not needed. But it's a solid talent. Have I ever tried speedrunning a healer? Yes, uh, I actually played Resto earlier in this run. I would say the thing about speedrunning a healer is at low levels, healers are very strong due to scaling. At higher levels, they fall off. And they're also good for dungeons, right? If you, uh, if you don't have a tank spec, right? So generally speaking, if I'm playing a class that has a tank spec available, I won't bother playing a healer just because tanks are usually faster for dungeon queues and stuff like that. But um, yeah, for dungeons and then for low level stuff, they're solid. Uh, Resto Shaman is, like, decent. Preservation is actually not terrible for leveling, though obviously Evoker starts at 60, so it's a little bit skewed. Um, obviously we showed, if you haven't seen my Priest run already, I did a Holy Priest run that was kind of bonkers, uh, at least for the start, and then eventually swapped to Shadow. But, yeah, you can get some really crazy stuff going on with them. Let me grab Top Hats. Should be good. And then I can go pick up the cooking quest. Depends on the healer. Most are strong early, but some fall off super hard. Yep. I can't Naomi. 
I said exactly what I just said. Uh, perfect. Uh, Hope Blizzard realizes how good a 50% XP event is and adds it to the anniversary. Um, well, it's kind of like, I agree with you, Chori, but it's kind of like what I said before, right? Where because they already have an XP buff during the anniversary event, if they put in another 50%, then it would be kind of like, oh, everybody levels during then. So if Blizzard were to do an XP buff, the exact type of thing that Blizzard would do is they would put a 50% XP buff right before or right after the anniversary event. That way, there's always some buff going on, so you know players never feel like they're wasting their time, even if one is faster than another. Uh, let me drop my Thermal Anvil. And then, oh yeah, here this this extra quest button actually really helps. That is quite nice. I uh, remembering very early in 10.0 when they said they're nerfing all tank survivability and somehow left brewmasters in the category of tanks for those nerfs. Yeah, that was... Uh, I did not have a lot of fun tanking early Mythic Plus dungeons as a brewmaster. It's gotten better, but holy hell was it kind of bad for uh, some time. Oh, crap. Um, I forgot that I don't have my Hearthstone set, so... Oh, I want to do this. Can I... I don't really have any backup portals. Oops. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to need to take my regular Hearthstone, and I guess I will just head back to the Zeppelin Tower and teleport to Org. Yeah, that's kind of really all I can do here. Um... Forsaken rear guard. Um, I'm not too far off. Uh, so I'll gun shoes and then I'll fly over to the Zeppelin Tower. Minor time loss. I'm not really sure how else I could have played that. It's just a little bit tricky because I normally don't go to Darkmoon Fair there. Just a little bit odd the order in which I'm doing stuff here just because of the 50% buff. And this is why it helps to have backup stuff like Volpera Make Camp really helps in a lot of cases. Um, what were my plans for tomorrow's streams? Oh, yeah, if you missed that point. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be streaming a 60 to 70 augmentation evoker run. So, I think a lot of people will probably be interested in that because augmentation evoker is, you know, touted as a support class. So, I am curious to see how well a support class can level in a solo context. So, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, but that is the plan for tomorrow's stream. Also, probably some more Classic Hardcore after. Uh, the Classic Hardcore servers, for anyone who haven't seen, are going to be temporarily taken down uh, next week, I think. On, like, I forget what day they said, like, on a Thursday or on a Friday. So, I'm going to be doing, like, all the Classic Hardcore stuff after the main streams, like, today and tomorrow. And then next weekend, the Classic Hardcore servers will be down, so I'll probably do something else for the later parts of the stream. But... Uh, one thing that I can say for certain is next weekend on Saturday and Sunday, I will be doing live server 60 to 70 runs because I have to do them at some point. And initially I said I wasn't going to do many 60 to 70 runs on stream, but it seems like the memory leak issues have either been completely fixed or at least have gotten a lot better because I've really not experienced them a lot lately. So I feel like at this point I can pretty safely do 60 to 70 streams and not run into any main issues. So that is nice for sure. Hmm. Okay. And here I, oh yeah, before I forget. So if you have the Warlords of Draenor quest from the board, you need to go here and abandon the Burning Crusade quest. Because if you don't abandon the Burning Crusade quest, then when you talk to Thralmar Mage, it'll take you to Outland. But if you have none of the Outland quests, and you have the WAD quest, talking to this NPC takes you straight to Khadgar, so it is a minor time save compared to talking to the other guy. How did I get flying early? Uh, well, you don't get flying early. Nothing about that has changed. You always get flying at level 30. This is retail, by the way, in case you're, you're thinking of classic. This has not changed at all. Um, but how did I get flying without having to learn it from a trainer? That is a change in 10.1.5 where you just automatically learn it at level 30. And then eventually when I hit 40, I will automatically learn fast flying and I don't even need to uh, spend any gold to unlock that, which is very nice. Would I say macro racials are worse than the Nightborn ones? Absolutely, yeah. The Nightborn racials are actually decent. Nightborn racials are a little bit more niche though, because they like 
they buff magic damage, so it's good for casters. Uh, Nightborn has an AoE pulse, which is like decent AoE snap threat and um, also like a nice slow for utility. And on the uh, flavorful side of things, Nightborn also have... Ah, fuck. Uh, Nightborn have a portable mailbox. And portable mailbox actually has a lot of really good utility for speedrunning because you can drop that and pop out a cracked Radnax control gem. Uh, so it's like a substitute for having one of the other uh, portable mailboxes. And it, they don't share a cooldown, so you can use it on top of that. So yeah, Nightborn racials... Nightborn racials are not the strongest, but they are actually quite good. And I think they're fun to use, right? I like the Arcane Pulse. Um, they're flavorful, right? And they actually do something. Problem with Maghar Orc racials is half of them just, like, don't really do anything. They either have no effect in the case of the Mount Speed one, or really, really, really minimal effect. Which is just kind of weird. I don't know why they exist the way they do. Those last few quests with Godfrey seem great. Yes, the last few quests with Godfrey are good, which is why it's what I normally do in my run. But think about it like this. Are those last few quests with Godfrey better than the starts of or start of Gorgrond and Wad intro and all of Hillsbrad? No. Uh, that stuff is way faster than the last few quests with Godfrey. So I definitely would rather get all of that stuff done instead of doing the rest of Silver Pine and then missing out on like the really good Hills Brad Foothills quests. All right, we can head over here. What's my favorite quest in WoW? Uh, probably the final quest of Stone Talon Mountains, just because that was like my favorite Garrosh moment before they absolutely butchered Garrosh's storyline. If I had to pick, I would say just like without thinking about it too much, that's probably my favorite quest. But I'm sure I could think of a few others if I like really sat down and considered it. Valshara has been a big favorite for me when leveling around 30 to 40. Curious how your experience has been. Yeah, Valshara is not bad. Valshara is one of the faster zones. It's definitely, I would say, the fastest Legion zone. Um, main issue is it's like kind of isolated, not the easiest to reach. Um, and also, it just isn't as fast as the other stuff. But it's not bad, right? If you want to change a pace, I actually have Valshara listed on... I have a section of my website where I have alternative questing zones where it's like if you're bored of the traditional leveling route try some of these and i'm pretty sure i have Valshara on there as like a, a good alternative but it's it's like up there with um uh what you call it stone talon mountains and the other ones where it's not bad it's just not as fast as the the really good quests all right we can do like the stuff on fire uh, massive fan, love everything you do. Thank you, anonymous beatboxer. Uh, glad to hear it. I think I missed my crash lightning on the second target, so I didn't get the uh, the cleave thing. Unfortunate. I'll open this up. Uh, Valshara was one of the better Legion areas, and for a while, Legion areas were fairly efficient if you could time them during an invasion. Yeah. I mean, while leveling has changed a lot over the years, because obviously before you had to go through every single expansion in order so definitely when you still had to do legion for that section of the run valshara was good and uh, like naomi said lining that up with an invasion was like super duper efficient so that's usually how i did things back when you actually had to like go through legion but ever since chromi time has been a thing it's the route has kind of like shifted a little bit it's why i'm also kind of curious to see how leveling and like cataclassic pans out because there's so many zones that I think I'll end up doing for a Cataclassic speedrun that I just never really touch anymore. Because there's just better alternatives in modern World of Warcraft. Like, Stone Talon Mountains will probably end up in my Cataclassic speedrun route, because it's pretty good. But, uh, I never get to do it anymore, so. Uh, how do I feel about general spec complexity? Maybe I'm misremembering things from my previous experience, but I don't remember the specs being as complex as they are now. Um, I mean, the game... It, so, it depends on what era of WoW you're talking about. Because, like, the specs are complicated now, but this is definitely not the most complex that specs have ever been. I think it's probably safe to say that spec complexity was at its highest during Mop and Wad. Like, certain specs in Mop and Wad, you basically needed, like, a fucking master's degree to be able to play them. Um, some of them were just really complicated. Now, I would argue a lot of them were overcomplicated and had, like, a lot of needless complexity. 
but that is probably when certain specs were at their hardest. At the same time, there were a lot of specs even then that were like beginner specs and not very hard. Um, but this definitely is not the hardest that specs have ever been to play. Now, spec complexity in general is harder than, say, classic, right? So in classic, pretty much everything is easier to play. Even the hardest specs are easier to play than like some of the easier retail specs. So I guess it's all a matter of perspective, right? But like, I remember really having to like struggle to learn um, Warlords of Draenor, the optimal like Brewmaster Monk rotation. Like there, there was some funky stuff you had to do. I loved it, mind you. Once I got the hang of it, felt awesome. Same with like Breath of Sindragosa Blood Decay. Breath of Sindragosa Blood Decay, when played right, was one of the hardest tank play styles I've ever done. But when I finally mastered it and I got like that infinite Breath of Sindragosa rolling, it felt so, so good. Vengeance Demon Hunter, in my opinion, feels kind of similar, uh, which is why I really like Vengeance. And, you know, uh, Four Piece Blood Decay back in Sepulcher was also kind of like that. So there are times when spec complexity is really high, and there are some specs right now that are very complex. But I think on average, if you average out like all the different specs, Mop and Wad was probably when things were at their hardest. Uh, I enjoyed it a bit when it was efficient, but you just want to get out of the leveling experience ASAP and get to endgame? Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Saw some guy in hardcore run died because the healer was off spec and not heal spec? Yeah. I feel like if you're joining a hardcore dungeon, though, and you're not actually double checking to make sure everyone is really prepared for it, that's kind of your own fault. Like, I don't really plan on doing many hardcore dungeons, but if I did, I would probably only do them with a group that I was absolutely confident wouldn't be, like, you know, fucking up and running really garbage builds. Because when, you know, one death is all you get, uh, every little bit counts. You can't really fault people for wanting to min-max in a hardcore dungeon. I think it's probably the most acceptable place to do that. On a side note about augmentation, if you PvP, be scared of what's coming. They can 100 O people while gigabuffing teammates. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, makes me glad that I don't PvP at all. I just... It's so hard to take World of Warcraft PvP seriously these days. There's just so much unbelievably broken shit that I just... I have no interest in trying it anymore. It... Always, like, my least favorite times in WoW have been whenever I was forced to PvP to unlock something for raiding a Mythic Plus. Just make it its own game mode for the people who enjoy it, and let me stay the hell out of it. Whenever Blizzard tries to force interaction, that's always terrible. Do I need to refresh any buffs? Oh, well, I do kind of need to refresh buffs because I got... I just hit the new level threshold. Right, we can do that after this cutscene. You got flying in a level 27 and level 25... Uh, they were Project 60 and Project 70 Twinks, respectively. Oh, interesting. Uh, that is, that's actually neat. I was wondering how, uh, and then I read the, the next message. That is actually really cool. I did not realize that that was a, a thing that you could do. At this point, you should probably just like not touch those characters at all, because that's kind of like a special, unique experience. Uh, Crash Lightning, and then I can double Storm Strike. Ooh. Yeah, Enhancement Shaman AoE feels pretty good at this point. Can instant cast Chain Lightning, uh, Crash Lightning again, and then this, yeah, the PvP talent that a bunch of people recommended, definitely really, really good. Okay, Crash Lightning again here. Instant cast, I'm going to do Sundering there. Crash Lightning. Storm Strike. Oh, that probably could have been a little bit better. I like the arena here. The arena is like the perfect place to test out your rotation for AoE and stuff like that. You just get to kill mobs nonstop without having to worry about survivability. Just blast. Really, really fun questing hub. Uh, we're, we're close. We're almost there. And I'm going to hit these guys with a chain, or crash lightning. I keep calling it chain lightning. Okay. Crash lightning. Ride the lightning. There we go. Uh, how come people who join your server can't talk in it? Uh, I manually give rolls. Oh, Naomi said that. 
Uh, yeah, I'll do that after the after the stream. If you can't talk in my Discord, just wait until after the stream. I'll go through. I'll give you the talking roll. Uh, what should we call it? I'm gonna set up like a way to get a message. Unfortunately, because I spent so much time this last week working on the speed run and stuff, I haven't really had time to like make any updates to the Discord server. But it is it is on my to do list. I'm aware of it. I know. I know you're on PTR, but do you delete your characters when out of room or get more accounts? Um, I haven't really run out of room yet, so I guess neither. I have a second account, but I don't use it for extra characters. I just use it for testing purposes. So, like, kind of both, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm going to try Hailstorm. Okay, hold on. Let me... I'm going to quickly refer to the screenshot Naomi sent. Uh, Okay, I want to take... Yeah, I think I'm going to go this, and... I kind of want to take Crashing Storms. I like that. And then for regular class talents, probably just go down here. So, Windrush Totem. Oh, that's actually quite nice. Uh, Nature's Guardian is also nice. I'll take this, just as like an emergency heal. And I'll put Windrush Totem on H. Gonna pull these guys. I'll drop a Counter Strike Totem. And I can Crash Lightning you. And then that felt pretty good. Um, makes me sad. I really wanted to see Stone Talon Mountains Garrosh more. Yeah. It really is a shame what they did to Garrosh's character. He had so much potential, and they just kind of massacred him. I don't know. It, I don't really hate what they did with him in the mob story. Like, it could have been a lot worse. No, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty, right? So seeing what they've done with Sylvanas, right? Like, the treatment that Garrosh got in Mop was infinitely better than what Sylvanas got in Shadowlands. So... I guess everything is a matter of perspective in that regard, but holy hell. It could have been so much better, and it is still a shame the route they decided to go with Garage. I do like instant cast uh, Lava Burst. That feels pretty nice. Just gonna drop a Sundering there. And Crash Lightning. Storm Strike. Ooh. PvP and MOP was BIS, yeah. MOP PvP was probably the only time I ever kind of enjoyed it. Ever since then, it has just been, in my opinion, a steady decline for WoW PvP. To the point where I just, I cannot enjoy it at all anymore. I don't really find any redeeming qualities in it. Uh, sometimes Khadgar bugs here if you run ahead of him in WOD. I've never had that happen. I, I have done the WOD intro a lot of times. Uh, Khadgar has never bugged for me. In fact, you're supposed to run ahead of Khadgar. He runs faster to catch up to you. So I, I've never experienced that. I don't doubt you. There are a bunch of bugs in this game that are like really rare. And you only encounter every so often. But yeah, I, I do the WAD intro a lot. And I, I don't think I've changed my routing for the WAD intro in two years. It's uh, I found the fastest way through it. And that has been pretty consistent ever since my Shadowlands runs. That's actually three years at this point. But I've been doing the exact same path through it. Talk to all in Umberhide. How is Nagrand and Draenor? Nagrand isn't really that good. Nagrand is probably the slowest out of every single Draenor zone. Like, even Frostfire Ridge is faster than Nagrand. It's partially because it's so far away that it takes a while to get there. But also the questing experience is, like, just kind of weird and disconnected. So, I would not recommend it. I, I would heavily... Advise not leveling in Nagrand. Now, mind you, Nagrand is still better than like a lot of other zones and other expansions, but relative to everything else in WAD and like a lot of the um Cata revamp zones, it's just very, very, very subpar. Uh leveling via missing transmog zones has been fun. Yeah, that's definitely a nice way to do it. Crash Lightning, then Storm Strike. Counter Strike Totem. I'm going to tag this guy, then Crash Lightning. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, thanks for all doing this uh, for free. Love your content. No problem, Mervanus. Glad you enjoy the videos. Uh, when do you think Garrosh's story went bad? At what moment did you say they're messing Garrosh up? Um, hard to say for sure. Uh, probably the start of Mop. Like, Garrosh didn't get a ton of screen time in Cataclysm, but most of his screen time in Cataclysm was um, good. But, like, it's it's also kind of hard to say, right? Because there, if you don't know the context, they have confirmed this. The way that Garrosh's story went is a lot of different people wrote the stories for, the, like, the leveling zones in Cataclysm. So, effectively, the writers didn't properly communicate on what they wanted to do with Garrosh's story. So I believe, I think it was Chris Metzen that wrote Stone, Stone Talon Mountains, and he thought Garrosh was going to be, like, that heroic, honorful, uh, you know, war chief who, you know, values the traditional orc stuff above all else. And is pushing against, like, you know, the more radical elements of the Horde. So he wrote Garrosh and Stone Talon Mountains to be like that. And in my opinion, and I think almost everybody's opinion, that would have been the coolest version of Garrosh. Unfortunately, I think even from the get-go, their plan was to do that with Garrosh and have him, I guess, be corrupted or something like that. So it was never a point where they changed Garrosh. It was more so that... By accident, we almost saw a what could have been with Garrosh through the Stone Talon Mountain storyline, just because whoever wrote that story, I want to say it was Chris Metzen, didn't get the memo that they were going to try to, you know, do the shit with Garrosh that they did. So he wrote a different version of Garrosh, and then all of the other versions we saw after the fact were what they had initially planned the whole time. So it wasn't necessarily a this is when Garrosh went bad. It was just kind of like there were almost two versions of Garrosh in the story, uh, and they went with the version that most people weren't happy with. But evidently, that was the entire plan. It's also entirely possible that they're just making that up and that they are just saying, oh, yeah, it was an accident. You know, uh, we only accidentally put in this version of Garrosh and whatever, but who knows? Um, I do remember hearing that somewhere but I forget where. So don't take that as gospel. It's possible that I'm just like making up some interview that I read in my head or something like that, but I, I could have sworn they said that at some point. Uh, if they get to mop with Classic, you would quit retail and go back to 5.x Warrior PvP? Yeah, uh, if they get to mop with Classic, I'm going to be playing that a lot. Mop Classic would be just heaven for me. Mop class design in general was just so fucking good. I also never really played Brewmaster in Mop, which is kind of funny because I've played it a lot ever since Mop, but I was just playing Blood Decay way too much and I never got around to trying it. And I've heard it was really fun, you know, back in Mop when it first came out. Uh, and obviously I played it ever since, so I really want to go back and see the original version that I've heard so much about. But I would also still play Blood Decay a lot if Mop Classic came out, because I loved Blood Decay and Mop and Watt. Mop and Watt Blood Decay is like one of my favorite versions of any tank, up there with like Legion Vengeance DH. Mop was peak class complexity, most abilities on most classes, yeah. Uh, you don't know much about PvE, but you're super a modern fan when it comes to PvP, Mop being peak class homogenization was a good thing. Uh, yeah, I've heard like mixed opinions on class homogenization. I think... There's definitely a line, and sometimes they cross it, but I think overall, having every class be, like, completely different to play, and having, like, a lot of classes, like, have special mechanics that nobody else can do, so they're kind of, like, mandatory for raid environments is not necessarily the most healthy thing ever. Like, classes should feel special, but it shouldn't feel like, oh, if you're not playing XYZ classes, you're just subpar. That's always a bad feeling. Uh, you destroyed a fully geared PvP shaman friend on a boosted monk in 5.3? Sheesh. Let me mount up here. You set up your enhancement bar as Stormstrike, Flame Shock, Frost Shock, Lava. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... Right, it, it kind of depends. I I may end up changing stuff around if I ever play Enhancement Shaman more. I'm just trying to quickly find like a keybind setup that works for me. Usually the way that I learn new classes is I'll do stuff that I'm like, okay, this seems similar to a place that I put like a similar ability on my bar, right? Like... Windrush Totem. Well, when I'm playing Druid, I have Stampeding Roar on H. So to me, it makes sense to put Windrush Totem, the AoE movement speed thing, on a button, kind of like what I use for Stampeding Roar. So that's kind of how like a lot of uh, I build a lot of my bars, but it's 
it's not an exact science. And I'm sure that I could probably optimize it a little bit better. Honestly, I, I maybe won't even do Gorgrond at this rate. Because I'm probably going to exit the WAD intro at 45. I don't know if I'll get all the way to 46, but definitely I should be able to get to 45. And then 15 levels? I can definitely get 15 levels at Hillsbrad. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Um, What's the talent that la makes lightning at the ground after an attack? I believe you're referring to Crash Lightning. Uh, you love having gem slockets on literally every piece of gear with Reforging? Yeah. It's a shame they removed Reforging. Uh, really good, honestly. I'm just... That's... That's a long cast time. I probably shouldn't have done that. That's yeah, whatever. Uh, why not just run to level 70? Because it's a different experience, right? I could do a level 70 run, but I hope there is an add-on to choose leveling talents automatically. I wish there was. Actually, that would be really nice quality of life, but I don't believe that is a thing. I've looked for one, but there is not. These cinematics have been a work in progress for years. Yeah. Um, don't forget to refresh Lightning Shield. Oh, I'll have to make sure I do that. Um, Shadowlands Sylvanas doesn't exist. Yeah, I think we can all agree. Let's just collectively forget what they ever did with Sylvanas' character. I'm okay with that. I'm fine just pretending Shadowlands never happens. Um, but yeah, I'll make sure to refresh Lightning Shield. I ha definitely have not been doing that, so good call. Um... But yeah, I mean, the main reason why I kind of try to separate my runs, like obviously if I'm doing a big speed run like the one I posted before, that is a full 10 to 70. But for starters, when I'm not doing a super fancy speed run like that where I can get it done in four hours, a lot of those take time. Like if I were to do that casually, it would probably still take me around six hours, which is a lot. Uh, I don't really want to do six hours of straight leveling live on stream. I've done it before, like the longest stream speed run I ever did is I did um, I did an entire 10 to 60 run back in Shadowlands on Blood Decay. And 10 to 50 took me like nine hours. And then it took me like another, I think, six hours or so to get from 50 to 60 back then. So it was like in total something close to like a 15 hour speed run that I did on stream uh, across two parts like uh, for two days. Uh, and that was kind of exhausting, I'll be honest. And ever since then, I've tried to make sure that if I'm doing a speedrun on stream, it's a little bit shorter. And uh, I'll, I'll, generally, I try not to play something like Blood DK, which Blood DK while leveling is... Blood DK while leveling may actually be one of the worst specs. Because it's not, like, bad. Like, you will never die but it will take you ages to kill literally anything. And obviously you're a death knight, so you have like no mobility. It's not terrible in terms of mobility. And I think there are definitely worse options because at the very least, Blood DK will just be able to pull whatever. But holy shit, some of those pulls just turn into grinds. And it's just objectively worse than Frost and Unholy. Because Frost and Unholy are also maybe not unkillable, but very, very, very tanky. So you might as well just play that and still never die, but also kill things very quickly. But that run in particular was another one of those where a poll voted, or the people in the poll voted for Blood Decay. Uh, so that's what I played, right? And uh, I regretted everything. You're torn because the route they went with Garrosh also led to that wad opening cinematic, and man, that was so good. Yeah, true. Uh, wad opening cinematic was great, then they added garrisons, and it was a dead expansion. Yeah, pretty much. WAD definitely had a lot of potential, though. And I think th that's why I say I like the WAD questing experience. The whole, like, story and flavor of WAD had so much potential to be really, really good. And then it just kind of wasn't. So, yeah. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unlock my garrison just on the off chance that I need to come back here. Because if I end up being short on experience... Um... Okay, yeah, let me... Surround myself with lightning shield, do this, do that. I can also replace Potion of the Tolvir before I forget with um, this, Unbridled Fury. Take Bear Tartar. Uh, I can also, yeah, so I'm going to start the RP and then while they're running up, I'm going to refresh my food buff. Because I don't think I need to run in step with them. 
me just do this. Throw my augment rune on there before I forget. Uh, I need to remember at level 49 to refresh my experience potion. I'm not going to forget this time. I'm actually just going to send another one just in case I forget later on. At the very least, I have a fresh uh, experience pot rolling. But ideally, I just, you know, don't forget. That would be nice. We'll see, though. Frostfire Ridge is actually pretty efficient if you do a very specific route with specific timings. Yeah, Frostfire isn't bad, but it definitely does... There's, like, a lot of, uh, like, backtracking stuff. Like, I don't know. I think the way that I've always done Frostfire, even when, like, WAD was efficient, is I would take pieces of Frostfire out, like the eastern section... So this area around this quest area, this quest hub, I would do that and specific bonus objectives that are really good and then just kind of cut out the main story. It's not bad, but I think it, a lot of the stuff that's really good in Frostfire isn't necessarily locked behind prereqs. So you can kind of just do that without having to go through the entire story. And then you can just make up the experience elsewhere. At least that was my experience with it. Uh... For me, messing up the Garrosh story is maybe Theramore. Yeah, I think Theramore is definitely a good point where I think Garrosh went too far, and that was there was no real salvaging his character from that point. So that's probably a good way to look at it. Uh, speaking of Chris Metzen, did you hear he's back as a consultant advisory thing? Yeah, I, I mean, I saw that. When did they announce that? It was a while ago, right? I just, I don't know. I kind of wonder how much that will actually impact the WoW story at all, and I almost feel like they're just doing that to give people more faith in the WoW story, which, to some degree, it kind of works, because I was excited when I saw that, but I do have to wonder how much oversight Chris Metzen will actually have. Like, at the end of the day, if Steve Denuser wants to ruin World of Warcraft's lore, I'm pretty sure there's nothing Chris Metzen can actually do to stop him. So, yeah. Uh, but... Hey, it's better than nothing, so I do think it is good that that is happening. I'll throw down Counter-Strike Totem. This. And when I'm flying to Hillsbrad, I'll try to remember to spend the rest of my talent points. Right now, I don't really think it's necessary, so... Here we go, there's another Ronling. Crash Lightning here. I guess I technically didn't need it because these guys are almost dead anyway. And then one more Frostfire Gronling. Uh, was announced not long after Dragonflight release? Yeah. That makes sense. I, I vaguely remember hearing about it like a few months ago. I just wasn't entirely sure when. Uh, I think the book Chromie... That in a book, Chromie or another Bronze Dragon talks about how Garrosh was the best Warchief in another timeline. Yeah, I remember hearing that. That they, like, basically said, admitted that Garrosh's story was wasted, which, at, at least they acknowledge it, but, yeah, that's a shame. Definitely could have been so, so much better. Yeah, Enhancement Shaman's single target definitely feels good. Like, killing a mob like that, that felt pretty efficient. I think the AoE, I still have a few things to pick up to make it feel better, but it also doesn't feel terrible. Okay, I establish my garrison, and then the moment I pick this up and get my garrison hearthstone, then I will head to Hillsbred Foothills. And I'm mostly just doing this so that I have the garrison hearth as a backup. Oh, uh, the game is lagging. There we go. Garrison took a little bit long to load in. Okay, there we go. Garrison hearth. So now I'm going to use my regular Hearthstone, head back to Silver Pine, and then fly over from there. Uh, Mop Brewmaster was wild, putting a billion Absorb Shields on yourself and rolling backwards into walls to AoE mobs and heal yourself with Chi Torpedo. Yeah. Chi Torpedo, I remember being really broken. Even in Wad, uh, it was still kind of overtuned. When you use Crash Lightning, it does not change the ground. It might be like a particle effect thing. Not sure. The excuse they gave with Reforging being removed was Hit Chance being removed. Uh, yeah. I, I agree. Just because, like, oh, everybody used Reforging to balance hit, and that's the only reason it was necessary. It's still a fun system. So I agree that it should probably come back in some form. You enjoyed Shadowlands, uh, Eternity Hacks. Uh, I am sorry. 
I'm very sorry. Uh, you you clearly have not played many of the good expansions as well. I mean, I guess to each their own, right? But, like, you can enjoy Shadowlands for what it is. But, uh, yeah. I, I played Shadowlands the entire way through, and I struggled to really find enjoyment in it. I guess I'm more impressed if you really manage to enjoy your experience. That That is probably good, right? You know, being able to find the best even in a steaming pile of dog shit that is Shadowlands. <sighs> Reforging was honestly not as huge as people made it out to be because there were less options for endgame gear in Kata. You just ended up with everyone wearing the same gear, same reforges. It ended up as nothing special if it were still a thing today. Yeah, I definitely think that back in the day, I've been told like, oh yeah, it wasn't as impactful. I think it's more the applications that it could have in the modern day, like being able to rearrange the stats in a piece of gear because it feels really bad, right, when I right now get a... Uh, like a mastery versatility piece out of my vault. And it's like, well, it's item level, but also mastery versatility. And that really sucks. So the idea of like a reforging system being in place now and being able to kind of at least somewhat rebalance the secondary so it doesn't feel as bad when you get just a piece that's really good item level, but really bad stats. I think that could be an interesting way to take it. But I do know that it was mostly used as like, there was a, an optimal build in Cataclysm that you followed and that was it. Like, I vaguely remember when I played, uh, one of my friends would just tell me, copy this, do this with your reforging, and it didn't end up being super interesting. Blood DK is better than Rogue? Oh, yeah. No, uh, low bar there. <laughs> Definitely, I think anything is better than Rogue, but Blood DK is, it, it's down there. Uh, I, I don't want to ever level as a Blood DK again. It was not very fun. Crop Heli is best, but I think Vengeance is pretty high up as well. Unkillable, pretty good AoE damage, yeah. Next stream, all classes from 1 to 70. Yeah, that'll be the longest stream ever. I would die before I finish that one. One thing you might want to change for the Watt intro, instead of using Glider Gun Shoes, Skull of the Mad Chief is a separate CD, so you get another Glider Gun Shoes. What is Skull of the Mad Chief? Skull of the Mad Chief. Huh. I've never used this. I don't even know where I got it. I assume it's like a garrison thing that I just picked up back in WAD, but I have never actually used that, I don't think. So I guess it's something to try later on. Now just remind me after the stream and I'll mess around with it just to see. Uh scroll up. Oh, I'm behind on chat again. Damn it. Prop Heli is best laughs in Moonfire. Yeah, I mean, Guardian Druid is obviously really good, but Prop Heli is, is solid. Is Spires of Iraq still good? Um, no. Well, Spires of Iraq is fine, right? It's just, is Spires of Iraq still in the leveling route? No. And also, the XP... The XP bonus in Spires is not really what people seem to think it is. A lot of people think Spires is good because you get an XP modifier, but that doesn't change anything. You just have to factor that into how fast Spires is. And even with the XP bonus, it's still, it's not a bad zone. It's just like less efficient than everything else. It's a good zone though. It's like what I recommend people do if they fall short in XP after doing literally everything in my leveling route. But... It is definitely one of the zones that over the years has kind of fallen out of favor in terms of the chromie time speed leveling route. I used it a lot back in Shadowlands, but not so much anymore. I'm on the PTR. You should have Garrison Hearthstone as a toy. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I learned it, but... Uh, oh, for the record, you still need to complete the quest. So I think that is one unfortunate thing that a lot of people haven't realized about Garrison Hearthstone and Dollar on Hearthstone, them changing to a toy like does nothing. So I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, I'm so glad that Dollar on Hearthstone and Garrison Hearthstone are finally a toy, so I don't need to get it on my alts. And like, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Blizzard didn't actually fix that. So you still need to go and unlock the Garrison and uh, Dollar on Hearthstones. The only thing that it changes is literally just that it is now a toy. So that entire change, I remember I was initially very excited about it when I saw it, but the quest requirement's still there. So effectively, the entire change is you now save two bag slots. It's um kind of weird. I don't know why they bothered to go through all of that effort and still made it so you need to actually complete the quest to do it. I'm hoping that later on when they get feedback that it's really dumb, 
they make it so you just can automatically get it without having to uh, do the quest. But yeah, unfortunately, you, you do still need to unlock it yourself, which is very odd. I don't know why they did that. Have I seen Blizzard's key art containing Thrall? What are my thoughts on that? Um, I don't think that's anything special. Um, yeah, I, I really don't think that the BlizzCon art using Thrall means anything. Like, I saw some Reddit posts saying something like, apparently key art generally signifies important characters, and I, I don't really know about that. I, I'm sure that there's probably some correlation if you look that over time, whenever a character, like I think people mentioned Sylvanas was in the key art for BlizzCon before Shadowlands or something. And I, I guess, right? But I think that's maybe more so the fact that, you know, Sylvanas is a pretty innocuous character. Like, I don't think anyone was going into BlizzCon being like, aha, I put my tinfoil hat on, I see Sylvanas in the key art, so I'm magically going to predict that the entire expansion will be based on Sylvanas. Like, it ended up being heavily based on Sylvanas, but I think you could have just easily looked at that and said, oh, uh, Sylvanas is a popular character in Warcraft lore. That's probably why she's in the key art. So it kind of worked out. But it wouldn't have really given anything away. But I highly doubt that they're like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I highly doubt it has anything to do with it. It's possible. Maybe it's a similar situation where there's a, you know, a Thrall Lands expansion. But yeah, it's more than likely just Thrall is an important WoW character. He's the WoW representative on there. Yeah, I, I wouldn't really think anything more than that into it. Uh, I would prefer them just making more loot so you can simply aim to farm the exact stats you want. Um, no, no, uh, I actually don't want that. Uh, I, I mean, in theory, right, obviously if there was better diversity of loot, but if they just made more loot and just piled the dungeons with loot for every single stat combo, that would be even worse because then you would have to go through so many different random drops before you actually got the piece of gear you needed. Uh, I would rather it is more deterministic. Obviously, yeah, if you had a choice, like, y if you got, like, a piece of gear and you could choose the stats on it at the end of the dungeon, sure. But just, like, adding lots of different loot things, you can actually see that they did that in WAD. Like, the original WAD loot table had, like, loot with every single stat combination. And they've actually had to change that when they turned WAD dungeons into um, uh, Mythic Plus. They, like, completely reworked the loot tables and stuff like that. Uh, what am I stuck in combat with? Okay, there we go. Uh, Hearthstone Heroes, the mobile game, could all be featuring Thrall with no involvement in WoW. Actually, surprisingly, the mobile game does not have Thrall. That is something I, I was really surprised by. Thrall it does not appear in uh, Arclight Rumble whatsoever. A lot of the big characters don't. Like, Jaina's in there. Uh, Sylvanas isn't in there, though. Thrall isn't in there. Karen Bloodhoof is in there, so I guess he's one. Uh, but I was really surprised. Like, the Horde heroes are Sneed, which Sneed isn't even a Horde character. Sneed is, like, a boss in Deadmines. Like, it's, ironically, he's actually closer to the Alliance than he is to Horde, and he's one of the Horde uh, heroes in, like, the launch setup of Arclight Rumble. And then what are the other ones? Uh, Grom Hellscream. Which, like, I guess Grom Hellscream, like, kind of fits, you know? Warcraft 3 kind of vibes and stuff like that. Okay, before I forget now, I'm going to refresh my potion again. It's the PTR so I can kind of blow through them. I actually did it this time. But yeah, surprisingly, Thrall's nowhere to be found. I would imagine that later on in Arclight Rumble, it's a no-brainer that they will eventually add Thrall. Um, I would imagine they're saving characters like Arthas and Illidan for when they eventually do expansions to, like, Outland-type zones or Northrend-type zones. But, uh, yeah, Thrall, Sylvanas, a lot of the big ones, surprisingly not there yet. So, he definitely is not representing Arclight Rumble. Okay, let me... I do need to focus for this one, unfortunately, because if I look away for a second, you can accidentally one-shot these mobs. There we go. There's the chains on you. And there we go. I think it's 35, or I could just proc and nearly kill it. That works too. I'm going to Doom Winds here and hope it doesn't one-shot. 
Uh, yeah, that's actually perfect. And I'm going to check the rare in the back here. I say check. It's going to be up because it's PTR, right? But go here, use the button. Yeah, this is where this quest button really helps for stuff like this. Definitely really, really, really useful. All right, shift E, shift T, and I'm going to quickly get a dumbass over here and get him out of the mine before any of this stuff respawns. And then after that, I will try to catch up in chat. I can quickly glance. Uh, how many levels can profs get you in Dragonflight? It depends. Uh, professions give you a flat amount of experience, so it doesn't necessarily translate into an exact amount of levels. If you do it early on right now, it's like about a level and a half. And then if you do it at level 69, I think it's like 0.9 of a level. So I forget the exact amount of experience. It's like 400k XP or something like that. But I, I'm fuzzy on the exact numbers. So, you know, don't quote me on that. When I can, at level 51, I can change my consumes. I forgot to apply talent points. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that I'm kind of behind in talent points. Ah, uh, uh, can I just blast through this? I at this point, like things are just dying, so I don't really need to worry too much about talent points. <laughs> I'm gonna refer to Naomi's cheat sheet again. All right, uh, there we go. Hot hand, ashen catalyst, lashing flames. I like that. Thank you. That we're good. Just take two points into that. Um, increases the radius of my totem effects. I'm not really using totems, but whatever. I mostly just want to get go with the flow. Okay, yeah, so I did need to put that point there. Yeah, go with the flow. That's the last talent I really want here. Ancestral Guidance is like nice for off healing, but other stuff I don't really need. Let's see. Oh, it is 400k. Okay, good. Yeah, multiple people said 400k. Awesome. So I'm glad. I'm glad I remembered that number correctly. Uh, isn't Catalyst kind of a way to reforge, reforge gear if you accomplish the goal of replacing stats you don't want? Yeah, the problem with Catalyst is sometimes the gear you have is bad, and the predetermined stats that you have are also bad. I think actually Catalyst could be a really good way to implement a reworked reforging system. Because you could do something where you spend a catalyst charge and then you just determine the stats on whatever piece of gear you have or something like that. I actually think that would be a really good way to do it. But right now, it's just it's a predetermined item that you get from the raid. So it's not always something that you can actually use. There are a few slots where I do actually catalyze an off piece because it has like crit haste or something like that. But if it doesn't, then there's no point for me to use it. Uh, it's a rare into non-jungle. I see. For the, um, let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to click on these things, and if I click on too many, it is what it is. Can I, uh, I think, I actually think if I use this quest button, that would actually bash the skull in of the human, which is not the way that I want to complete the quest. So, that would actually be a trap if I were to use it here. All right, uh, this should be enough. I'm going to say that that's probably enough. Yeah, that's enough. All right. Let me just do Sundering here, Lava Lash. Oh, I've got a Storm Strike refresh. Nice. Yeah, I'm not even going to finish Hillsbrad at this rate. I probably should have gone to Hillsbrad earlier, but I mean, it's uh, really not the end of the world. This run's actually kind of turning out to be pretty fast. Obviously, I could have done... My 10 to 60 section even faster, which is kind of interesting, right? Because I saved all of the Darkmoon quest items and whatnot in my full 10 to 70 run for the end of it after I had hit level 60. So if I really wanted to, I could have gotten like pretty close to sub two hours by using all the quest items early on. But it is interesting how this may actually end up being my best run. I think I'm I'm on track to finish this ahead of my Volpera run. This is going pretty well. Even outside of like the really terrible dungeon RNG at the start, this could have been really fast if I hadn't gotten super unlucky. Uh, I should put this over there. 
And then now that I'm level 53, I can use my Shadowlands consumables. I'll just move this up onto my bars there. Uh, move that there. Uh, okay, I there was a bit of lag. It wasn't working. Here we go. Then Shadow Core oil. I don't need drums because I'm a shaman. And I guess I'll move Fried Bonefish. I doubt I'm going to drop my food buff, though. I don't really think I need to worry about replacing that. Um, I'm going to save all my major cooldowns for fighting the final boss in this area. Oh, wow. That Storm Strike did a lot of damage. Yeah. Definitely Enhanced Shaman single target so far has felt better than a lot of specs I played. The AoE is, like, average, I think. I also may be playing it wrong. But single target, for sure, feels very, very, very powerful. Uh, it's like getting slow fall plus gun shoes. You use it every time after the cannon part of the Watt intro to reach the ends. Interesting. Yeah, I will definitely need to try that out then. I think also, I would probably be including Radinax gem more if this was live servers, but... You know, I, I didn't have a chance to refresh it. I think I used Radnex Gem a few times during the WAD intro, which kind of filled some of those gaps in between gun shoes. But obviously I don't have that here. Poison Cleansing Totem. Uh, I don't really need any of this. Ancestral Guidance, I guess. Mana Spring. I don't really think I need any mana. Uh, I'll take Brimming with Life, I suppose. Uh, Feral Spirit is kind of nice, just an extra cooldown that I can slam. Put that on Shift R, I suppose, and this could be Y. XP buff inspires is meaningless because you already do the efficient stuff. Yeah, exactly. How many characters have I leveled to max? I've lost count. Uh, I don't even know. It's a lot. It also depends on if you're saying like current max or over time. Current max is also hard to say because I've done a bunch of them on the PTR. So I have like 15 level 70s, I think, on live servers, but I've leveled at least like an additional 10 on the PTR that I don't have on live servers. So that's one of the unfortunate things about doing testing, right? You don't actually get to keep your characters. So, yeah. But if we're talking like across all expansions, how many times have I gotten a character to uh, the max level on the PTR? Like way too many times. Like, a lot. Uh, okay, we can do... Wait, what the hell? Did I just, like, proc three Storm Strikes in a row? Okay, <laughs> that was kind of a lot of damage. Uh, what procs the Storm Strikes? Because I know it's one of the talents, I think. But sometimes I get no procs, and there I just double proc it, which is nice. And yeah, like, so I'm, I'm catching up to the part where people are talking about when I said the whole thing about uh, you still need to unlock Dollar on Hearthstone manually. It's nice, right? So I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth and say that it's not at least helpful that we get to save two bag slots with Dal and Garrison Hearthstone. But it does seem really strange that it would be a massive quality of life change for leveling to not have to get those. And a lot of the stuff in patch 10.1.5 is quality of life changes for leveling. And yet they still make you do the intro quest. Like, it's not bad. It still, at the end of the day, only saves two minutes. But it is just a strange thing. Like, I'm not mad about it. I just don't understand why they still make you do the questing thing. To the point where I feel like eventually there's going to be a lot of people who probably get confused by that. Because, I, like I said, I've seen multiple Reddit posts already saying, I'm so happy I don't need to get the, the dollar on Hearthstone on new characters. And whenever I see stuff like that, I already know there's going to be multiple posts of people who are disappointed when they realize, like, you know, their expectation does not meet reality. So I imagine there's going to be a decent amount of people saying it is kind of dumb and Blizzard will probably agree because yeah, it kind of is. Uh, so hopefully they listen to feedback on that and they're like, yeah, fine, we'll make it so you don't need to do the quest anymore. That just seems like a logical decision. And normally I would say, yeah, Blizzard listening to feedback, fuck no. But they have been better about it, so I'm hopeful. Uh, at 
If anything, they should really make your normal Hearthstone a toy. I'm really surprised that isn't the case because we have dozens of Hearthstone toys. Yeah, I think that's kind of one of my biggest issues with it, right? It's that it's inconsistent. So if they're going to make Dollar on Hearthstone and Garrison Hearthstone toys, but they are still different than the regular Hearthstone and share a diff or don't share a cooldown, then why is the regular Hearthstone still the exception to the rule? So either make them all toys or keep them as how it has been up until now, where so far the process has been, if it's a reskin of an existing Hearthstone that shares a cooldown, it's a toy. If it is a brand new Hearthstone, it is a unique item. But now, some of them are also a toy, but still don't share a cooldown, and some of them do. So now it's just consistent, or, or inconsistent, and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Which, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just weird. It's, uh, it's not a huge problem. I'm not gonna, like, write an angry forum post about it. It's just one of those changes that I just kind of have to look at and go, huh? Like, why? But hopefully they fix it. I still find it interesting that people don't realize you can delete or bank your Hearthstone for an extra bag slot due to all the toy Hearthstones. I never really thought about that. Mm. I, like, I probably should do that, but I'm so used to now, whenever I want a Hearth, I just go into my bags. Like, I click open my bags and I just hit it. I suppose long run, that would probably be a good thing, but that would screw me over so hard in the short term with my muscle memory. Because there'd be so many times where I would go to get my Hearthstone and then I would probably sit there for a moment, confused as to where my Hearthstone is. And then like 10 seconds later, I'd be like, oh yeah, I have it on like a toy now. And then I'd have to go click that. So I guess saving the extra bag slot is probably nice. And maybe I should do that going forward just for speed running purposes, like on new expansion launches. But uh, yeah, I've... I've never really gotten around to making that change. Oh, can... oh, nice. It dynamically updates. So if I get close to the Dark Ranger, it swaps over to the Helcular's Rod. That's actually really nice. Garrosh was the main key art thing for BlizzCon 2013, which was right before WAD. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it means it's so much harder to farm loot you want, and they have to add in like 20 great vault slots to give the same chances. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you would never get the one piece with your ideal stats if they did that. I'd have to run this dungeon 30 times with three traders to get the trinket I want. Yeah. There were a lot of things like that in Season 4, where specifically with Grimrail and stuff like that, they didn't really prune the loot table enough, so it caused that exact issue. And even still, there's a lot of items. Like, I remember I have Scovald back in um, uh, Halls of Valor. Like, the Blood Decay in my guild had to have so many people try and funnel him I have Scovald because it was already a pain in the ass to get because he couldn't loot it himself. And then, you know, there's just a million other things that can drop in Halls of Valor. So, yeah, definitely wouldn't like that. Um, oh, I'm really behind. Uh, what happened to Arclight Rumble? Did they abandon it? No, Arclight Rumble's still coming. It's in the key art for BlizzCon. Uh, I mentioned this in an earlier stream, but I got into the beta for Arclight Rumble, and it's actually really good. Really fun. Uh, from what I can tell, they're just taking their time with it, right? I think the biggest mistake they made with Arclight Rumble is announcing it as early as they did, because it's clearly, you know, it's still not 100% ready. They took it down right now, so while I still have beta access, the servers are down, and they said they're going to be back up in like a few months or something like that. So maybe I'll play it on stream whenever the servers come back up, because it is pretty cool. But... It's there's still like a few things they're missing. Like the whole end game campaign for it is not implemented yet. There's still a lot of content. Like there's 50 something missions and each mission is completely unique. There's like not any reskin stuff. It, it is actually a lot. Uh, really surprised me. Did I not kill Chet the Slime Breeder? Oh, because I didn't kill my fifth slime before I killed him. Right. Uh, I guess now I have to wait for the respawn. Okay, there we go. He's up. So, not too bad. Um, yeah, but they definitely announced Arclight Rumble way too early. I think they wanted to do it alongside Dragonflight to get, like, the publicity boost. But it's just weird, because, I don't know, all of the publicity that they technically gained by advertising Arclight Rumble there or announcing it there is kind of lost because it took them over a year to actually get around to doing anything about it. And I kind of forgot about it until I got the notification that I got into the closed beta. And then I was like, oh yeah, this game is a thing. And I played it out of curiosity and I was very surprised that I actually enjoyed it. So I think that 
they need to do another like marketing push for it to actually show people what the game is because there's still like a lot of misinformation about what the game actually is. A lot of people think it's just like a Clash Royale clone and that it's just like some pay to win nonsense. It's actually really fun and kind of unique. I haven't really played anything like it. So um, yeah, I think people will definitely be surprised when they see all the content in that game. Uh, do I use weak auras? I, so yeah, a lot of people have asked me about the, um, the weak auras. It's, it's, I would love to have a weak aura. Like the one you said, uh, remind me to refresh the pot at level 49. If I had it, I would use it. Unfortunately, it's not like it, there's an easy way to set up a custom weak aura just from scratch that can do that. So I would either need to create it myself or have somebody create it for me. And I am terrible at making my own weak auras. It's something that I would like to eventually learn how to do, but at the exact moment in time, I, I don't have it. But I do think that would be cool. Long term, uh, would probably try to figure that out. But hey, I mean, if you're able to make that, I would definitely appreciate it, and I would probably use it, because it would help. Chill, Lady Zephyrus. Um, let's see. It's zero immersive if your loot just becomes placeholder for staff. Yeah, I agree with that as well. They're saving Sylvanas for the Shadowlands expansion. Yeah. Uh, you love extra quest button for so many things. Yeah. I remember when I you first recommended it, I was like, this is probably going to be really nice for specifically those quests in Hillsbred Foothills, and it definitely is. Yeah, these fucking Naga hit really, really, really hard. Some of the harder mobs in this zone. On a few classes that don't have self-healing, I've struggled to do this area. But being able to quickly healing surge in between is actually really nice. Go five more. Uh, you'd like them to change the catalyst to be more like reforging. Yeah, that would definitely be great. Hopes for the 20th anniversary of WoW next year? Uh, nothing special, I guess. Um, I don't have anything that I'm like, oh, I really hope they do XYZ. I guess, if anything, I hope they bring back the... Um, wh whatever that event was where you get the World Breaker mount, because I actually never did that. I forget when that came out. I think I was playing Classic when they did that thing, and I just missed it. Like, I, I never bothered to get on retail, and I kind of just assumed that it would be up the next anniversary, and it just wasn't. So I never got to do any of that stuff. I think it was for the 15th anniversary. So I guess I would hope they'd bring that back so I can actually experience that content. Because I felt bad realizing later on that, no, it was a limited time. And, you know, classic FOMO garbage. So that's the only particular thing that I really hope that they actually do for the 20th anniversary. Otherwise, I have no real special preference. Uh, one good use case of it was getting mass versus wrists and vault a couple of weeks ago. And your DH gets uh, haste versus wrists and catalyst. Yeah, that's definitely really nice. Anything that's like heavy haste is always really, really, really juicy for Vengeance DH. Uh, can use Feral Spirit here. I don't think I need to refresh. I'm going to refresh my regular buffs. Just because. You do save the humans by bopping them in the head. You save them from what's happening to them, so it counts for the quest. Oh, okay. See, but bopping them in the head has a cast time, so it is technically slower. Which is why I dig them out, because it just requires a right click. I guess, like, what's that GDQ thing? Like, save the animals or kill the animals or whatever? Like, that Hillsbred quest is the World of Warcraft version of that, in a sense. And it is technically a time loss to uh, kill the humans. But it is, like, very, very marginal. What's my average 60 to 70 time? Uh, three hours, I think. It it's also hard to say without the XP buff, right? 50% skews things a little bit. Uh, without the XP buff, yeah, around three hours. With the XP buff so far, it has been closer to two hours. Like two, two and a half is kind of what I've been getting. But anywhere in that range, two to three hours, I think is like a safe bet. Okay, I need two mushrooms. And perfect, there's two mushrooms right here. 
I think I'm going to get like two entire levels just by turning in all of these quests. So I need to kill Worgen still and empower one more Dark Ranger two times. Uh, can't use Shadow Core oil with Shaman imbuements? Oh, can you not? Actually, you're right. Huh. It does overwrite it. I actually did not realize that. That's a good call. That's kind of weird. I feel like it's a class mechanic, so it probably should count as its own thing, but eh. Also, before these guys go away, I want to quickly tag all these worgen. Quickly tap this. Uh, Ellie Shaman doesn't use Flame Tongue Weapon at max because the runes are better. Interesting. I guess that makes sense, right? Because isn't Flame Tongue your weapon just deals like a proc effect? So does that work for casters? I would imagine it doesn't do that much if you're not like hitting with a melee weapon. Uh, could you imagine us, us leveling to 80 in the next expansion? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what they'll do. I think they're just going to keep this trend up of just adding an additional 10 levels. I kind of wasn't sure what they were going to do beforehand, like before Dragonflight boosted the cap up to 70. I kind of figured there was a chance they would just drag us back down to 50, but at this point, I think it's pretty safe to say that their plan is to just keep adding 10 levels again until, I don't know, 10 years from now when they need to squish it again. But I, I will kind of be surprised if World of Warcraft lives another 10 years. I would be pleasantly surprised because obviously I love this game, right? But it's, um, I think it's safe to say that outside of Dragonflight making it slightly bounce back, it's been kind of on a steady decline for a while now. And Dragonflight's a nice change of pace, but I feel like if you give Blizzard another 10 years, unless something really changes... I think it's hard to see them being able to actually keep up 10 more years of good content, as much as I hate to say it. But hey, we'll see. I, I want to be proven wrong. I'd love to be playing this game when I'm 30. That would be kind of nice. Storm Flurry is the Stormstrike prox. Gotcha. That feels really, really nice. Right around the middle of the spec tree can chain off itself. Uh, this one. Oh, so it has a 25% chance. I see. Yeah, that one. That felt really, really good to use. Do this. Uh, okay, I'm going to heal myself. I'm also going to quickly spend my remaining talent points. Uh, what do I want to grab? just go i think primordial wave so i could do elemental weapons and then i'll grab primordial wave after oh shit i pulled something wait what is orcus doing he's just pulling extra shit okay uh all right thank you orcus sitting here trying to spend my talent points and the npcs are just aggroing everything fun heal uh what do i i think i'm just gonna Put random buttons. I'll take a passive so it doesn't add another button to my bars. I need two more worgen and three more dwarves, which I can get later on. I can fly up. There's a bunch of dwarves at the ends. Actually, here's a, a pretty good spot for them. Yeah, and then Chain Lightning. Sundering and Storm Strike, and we're good to go. There we go. And finally, I'm going to have like a long little RP thing where I can make a dent in catching up on chat. I'm probably once again going to have to just go through all of the chat that I missed at the end of this uh, speed run and then catch up before I start more classic stuff. Would really love to play Enhancement, but you feel it is way too many core rotational spells. Oh, you would hate Brewmaster then. But yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of rotations that have a ton of uh, of core stuff. Uh, 10 to 49 in 3 hours on Horde without 10 lands? That's very good. Yeah. You have a random Hearthstone macro? That sounds fun. Watch what you say. The Monkey Paw will grant it and make it so Dalaran and Garrison Hearth share CDs. Oh, God. 
<laughs> yeah, I should have thought about that. That is something that Blizzard definitely could do to spite all of us. Please stop talking about Eye of Scovall. PTSD was using that for most of early season two as well. Yeah, it was it was really good for a lot of tank specs, especially Blood Decay. Like it procked off half your abilities. I think I technically should have farmed it for Brewmaster, but I was just like fuck that. It also wasn't nearly as good for Brewmaster as it was for Blood Decay. Like it was still good, but we had better alternative trinkets, so I just I didn't fucking bother. Arclight Rumble is going to be insanely pay to win. Hard to say. So right now, Arclight Rumble is not pay to win, like, at all. I wouldn't say at all, actually. Arclight Rumble has microtransactions, right? It's a mobile game, of course. But I was surprised at how minimal they actually were. A lot of them were like, you can pay to unlock the stuff a little bit faster, but all of it is still very easy to get just by playing the game, which obviously, you know, it's the classic thing of, you know, pay to progress faster. I'm not going to defend that. It is what it is, right? That is how mobile games work. Don't love it, but that's the the model uh, for a free-to-play game. And the main thing that I thought was neat about the monetization is there is no, like, infinite money dump, right? Once you get all of your stuff upgraded, like, you literally cannot just keep sinking money into buying, like, more currency. There is, like, a weekly limit on how much you can spend. There is, like, anti-whaling measures, which surprises me from a Blizzard game. Now, it is entirely possible that they go back on that and just throw a bunch of pay to win shit in there. It's not out of the question. Once again, it is a blizzard game, but right now it is not. And I think the key thing for Arclight rumble and why I really don't think pay to win matters, right? Is it, it, it has a PVP mode, but the PVP mode honestly, isn't very fun. The thing that I liked about it is the PVE aspect of it. There's like a lot of little boss encounters that are themed around like classic mobs. Uh, so there is, like, for instance, the Tirasfall Glade Zone, or I think they just call it the Lordaeron Zone in the game. Uh, every single zone is five bosses, and it has, uh, like, different encounters themed around different uh, things in the area. So there's a, a Lost Son of Aragal encounter where, you know, there's a bunch of uh, Gilnean villagers that turn into Worgen, and the map will, every 30 seconds, switch between night and day. And when it's night, the guys turn into Worgen and get, like, an attack speed buff or something like that. And then the final boss of Lordaeron is Inquisitor Whitemane. And you fight down, it's like a small map. And of course, every map has its own like artistic theming. This one looks like the Scarlet Monastery. Uh, and Whitemane is the boss at the end of one lane. And uh, Morgrain is the boss at the end of the other lane. And each one has its own abilities that counter certain types of units. So you have to like push down both lanes at the same time and kill them. Because if one of them reaches like 10%, they'll gain Divine Shield. And then the other one will start like channeling into them. And if the cast finishes, they get full healed. So there's like cool little boss fights like that based around different World of Warcraft encounters. And it's completely solo. So you could pay to win right? I guess you could get your stuff leveled up a little bit faster, but that's the most fun part of the game. And if you pay to win, you're only getting through a single player game slightly faster. So like, who really cares? At the end of the day, it the important thing to me is that it's just fun to play, right? So if you play it completely for free, you'll still get all these solo fun boss encounters. And I, that's all that really matters, right? So if somebody wants to like go super hard and wail in the PvP mode, which uh, isn't even, like I said, really that doable because there are like limits and stuff like that, I'm sure you could probably get like a temporary advantage by buying the stuff a little bit faster, but who gives a shit, right? It's, it's honestly not a PvP game. The developers have actually said that PvP is an afterthought. They're mostly just focused on making like fun little boss encounters like that. And some of the later ones have like really cool mechanics that in many cases, are really fucking hard. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be, in my opinion, just a fun game that people will play completely solo just to progress through the campaign because I think that is enjoyable in and of itself. Um, You'd have to test it, but I sent you an import string. Should have one week or to remind you below level 50 if you don't have the buff, and then one to remind you to refresh it at 49. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'll test that after the stream. But that is good to know. If that works, that would definitely be huge. So thank you in advance for that. WoW needs a hard reset. I think, I mean, people have been asking for WoW 2 for a while. So that could be nice, but I don't know. 
there's obviously a lot of like history in this game and stuff. So I think just throwing that all away would kind of upset a lot of players and I get it, but it does seem like there is only so long you can keep kicking the can down the road. Eventually it would seem that it needs to hit a point where you just run out of content to do, but. I don't know. I mean, in theory, they could keep this game going forever. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just don't trust the developers to keep designing good content because they've been kind of hit or miss in recent years, frankly. So, I'm not sure why we'll ever die. Is there? Isn't there still EverQuest servers? I mean, it may not die, right? When I say like, if I'm still going to be playing WoW, obviously, if they discontinue content updates for this game, then I'm no longer going to be going to be playing it. So, um. If we get to the point where they're like, this is the last expansion, and then WoW goes on maintenance mode, I'll probably always still play WoW on and off for fun, but it'll kind of be like my experience with Classic these days, where I play Wrath Classic, and I raid in it, but I've never been super serious about Wrath Classic. I've always played it for fun, and then, you know, once I kind of do all the stuff I want to do, I also, I haven't really been in a guild for Wrath Classic, so I'm actually enjoying raiding now with, like, a consistent group of players, but before then... um. You know, I would just kind of join a guild that would kind of fall apart due to roster issues, and I would just be like, okay, I guess I'm done now, uh, and I would move on. And I guess if WoW ever goes into full maintenance mode, that would probably be my experience with it, I guess. But, I don't know. Like, I do think it is probably true that they probably won't ever shut down the servers, or at least not for another very long time. I'd be surprised if we still live in 10 years? Jesus Christ, that's a dark thought. <laughs> uh, I would hope that we're still alive in 10 years, you know? Hopefully, um, you know, we don't get into, like, a global nuclear war by that point. That, that, would, uh, that would be definitely not ideal, but, you know, I, I don't really want to talk about that. <laughs> that's kind of a dark topic. Anyways, moving on. Uh, no one under 30 plays this game. Plenty of people under 30 play this game. You're 18 have played for six years. Yeah, I've been playing this game since I was five years old. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. There's, I think because I already found that chest, I'm unlikely to find any more. So I'll kill this rare and then continue. Actually, could I just like rare hunt for the rest of this? There's probably enough rares that I could just kill for experience at this point, for the last level. I think that would maybe be a faster way. Damn. You started playing WoW when you were 31 years old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my dad was probably also around that age when he first started playing. Oh. Jeez. It's been, it's been a while, right? So, I think, was my dad already in his 40s when he started playing? No, he was probably late 30s. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, I mean, at this point, he doesn't really play anymore, unfortunately, unless I convince him to like play with me and my sister or something like that. But he's always too busy working or whatever, setting up like a presentation for Amazon, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to just finish up this run really quick so that I can catch up on chat and then uh, I'll, I'll just get the last bit of experience because I should be able to kill one rare here and get that last bit. I think this is enough. If it's not, there are other rares that I can go and find, like Lopex. So, is this enough? <laughs> Barely off. Uh, I'm going to quickly scan this for chests. Uh, sometimes there's a chest here. Okay, there's not a chest there. So, what's the nearest rare? I could also turn in this quest. Yeah, that, that'll probably be faster. And just a reminder, uh, after the run, after I catch up in chat, which hopefully shouldn't take too long now that I'm not trying to do it while also speedrunning, uh, I'm going to be doing uh, Classic Hardcore. So currently I am level 12 on Ataran Shaman on the Classic Hardcore PTR, and I will be continuing that in just a little bit. Okay, now I can finally, finally catch up. Huh. All right, let me... Uh, the amount of children you find in pugs would lead you to believe otherwise, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, Naomi's also 25. Yeah, so other people are also below 30. You're 41 and started playing in 2004, nice. You played on and off since 2005? 
Uh, I would like to see them take a different approach and instead make it so the new content grants you something else which incentivizes you to do it without being level-based and no new leveling. Um, so I think what you're describing is more like horizontal progression, kind of like what Guild Wars 2 has. And I... How do I put this? I agree with you that that is a better way to do things. The only problem is I don't know how well you could retroactively like implement something like that in WoW. They could try, and I think I would, you know welcome their attempt at making horizontal progression personally i like that about guild wars 2 but the thing about guild wars 2 is that it was built from the ground up with horizontal progression in mind so from day one of the the game they intended for that to be the level cap and for new zones to only just add additional campaigns at max level and stuff like that and it works really well so Basically, they still made all of that old content relevant. Stuff that came out in like 2014 is still relevant to this day. And in fact, a lot of content that came out in the first expansion when I played Guild Wars 2 was still run more heavily than some of the more recent stuff uh, because it was just popular and still really good. So I think a game like that absolutely can work. I just don't know how well you could take that and then apply it to WoW after the fact. But could be interesting. What do I think is the base best uh, race class combination in terms of fantasy? Oh, easy. Lightforged Grand Eye Paladin. Absolutely Lightforged Grand Eye Pally. Or Priest, but probably Paladin. Which is one of the reasons I like that race class combo so much. Clearly Tarin Rogue. <laughs> oh, goodness. Pretty sure Rogue Poisons are separate to the runes. That seems inconsistent, though. Like, why would Rogue Poisons not count with Shadow Core Oil, but the shaman things do. I don't know. I feel like you should be able to use this on top of oils. Maybe there's like tuning reasons why that's not the case, but it, I don't know why that one would have something special. Can you recommend me one of your videos about Dragonflight's fast solo XP? Uh, just check my channel. There's like a million guides on there. Definitely the just sort by popular, I guess. And my main guide is the one that has the most views. That's for 10 to 60. I also have a campaign leveling 60 to 70 guide, which, uh, technically still works right but it's no longer the most efficient route and i will be making an updated 60 to 70 guide in the coming weeks but if you want to see the route that i use right now my recent world record from like two days ago uh, you can just watch that and see the order of quests i do also my written guide is still up to date i'll probably make a few slight adjustments to it to account for like some of the changes in quests but on my website you can find the entire written guide and that is still 100 percent accurate you're just waiting waiting for the riot mmo yeah I actually, I'm kind of excited for that one. Obviously, it's still probably a few years off, but I mean, if they end up doing like beta testing, that's something that I would be very interested in trying out just because I've heard a lot of things about it that seem pretty cool. And it's made by Riot, which I initially, like I'm not a huge fan of League of Legends, right? Like I played it a little bit as a kid, but one thing that I do really like is Legends of Runeterra. So... I started playing that after I watched Arcane, which, like, I think, obviously, a lot of people watched Arcane and were like, okay, the League of Legends storyline and world has a lot of potential, right? But I had heard a lot about Legends of Runeterra for, like, from advertising and stuff like that, and like, oh, it's, like, the kind of, like, Hearthstone, but League-themed. And I always was just like, ah, you know what, I've, I've already played Hearthstone for so many years, I'm kind of just over that. But I downloaded Legends of Runeterra, like, a year or so ago, and I've been playing it on and off. It actually has, like, the the PvP game modes and stuff like that. I've played it a bit, don't hate it, don't love it. It's just kind of, like, the same reason I don't play Ranked Hearthstone anymore. But it has a solo PvE mode that is so much fun. It's like, I think I talked in one of my other streams about Dalaran Heist and Hearthstone, and I like that, but honestly, Legends of Runeterra does it better. And from what I can tell, they're going to continue adding content to it, whereas... Hearthstone has been pretty clear about the fact that if it doesn't make them money by selling card packs, they don't give a shit. Whereas Legends of Runeterra has this entirely free-to-play, like, really fleshed-out PvE mode with, like, all of these different heroes and equipment and things. And I haven't spent a dime on that game, and I've had a blast playing it. So that got me really interested in just the general lore and story of, uh, I, I, I guess, the League of Legends franchise, right? So that made me extra excited for the Riot MMO, whenever that's going to come out. But that definitely seems like it could be good. Um, born in 2000, been playing since 04. Yeah. 04 to 05. Jeez. Yeah, so you've also been playing since you were very little. 
Uh, it's more that we saved the world so many times. A new baddie comes in and we're just like, man, sure, I'll deal with it. Yeah, like the fucking jailer. You were 28 when the game came out. Yeah, I, I mean, most people in my guild are also like around, you know, I'm probably one of the youngest people in my guild. I might be the youngest person on my raid team. I'm not entirely sure, but I would say like a lot of the people I play with are definitely older for sure. But, you know, uh, there's still a lot of young people that play this game. Stop lying. I'm 16 and I play well. Hey, there you go. Nice run. Well played. Thank you. Yeah, this was actually a really good time. I beat my uh, old Volpera uh, 10 to 60. Even with the really bad BC dungeon RNG, I actually think w if I had gotten non-garbage dungeon RNG, this could have been sub three hours. Enhancement Shaman felt pretty fucking good. Uh, killing speed was pretty solid, and I honestly don't think I was playing that well at all towards the end, but it, I didn't really need to. I just kind of pressed buttons and things died. And when you can do that, it's the sign of a good spec. When you can literally just press whatever the fuck you want and things just melt. Hey, if it works, it works. You remember on WoW launch, uh, Warlocks didn't even have a talent tree. Wait, really? What is horizontal progression? Uh, somebody else said horizontal progression is definitely interesting. So I don't know if anybody else explained it in the chat since I've read it. Horizontal progression is basically like the way Guild Wars 2 does it. Is there is a level cap of... 80, I want to say, and it has been the same ever since the start of the game. So ever since day one of Guild Wars 2 launch, that has been the level cap. And the leveling process uh, is mostly just like, you know, doing quest zones and stuff like that. But once you hit max level, it kind of unlocks all of the different, uh, provided you have like the expansions, I think. Um, I know some stuff is gated behind. You need to have certain story chapters unlocked. But from like, let's presume that you have purchased all of the Guild Wars 2 expansions. Uh, when you hit max level, you can basically do whatever the fuck you want, like all the expansions over the years, and they're all scaled to be the exact same. So base game Guild Wars 2, it's all level 80 content. First expansion, all level 80 content. Everything is scaled to be exactly the same in terms of like numbers and stuff like that, which means that it's really easy to like balance different encounters because you don't always have to account for like player power creep and stuff. And the nice thing is it means that you can effectively just play whatever content from any expansion that you actually enjoy and earn gear from that so i can earn gear that came out back in 2014 and that is still relevant if i want to do raids with my friends and like the most recent content there is one type of like really high level gear called ascended gear which assuming nothing has changed since the last time i played ascended gear was the highest you could get and you can get it from all sorts of different ways you can craft ascended gear you can uh, farm like world events in any expansion and there's like multiple different types of ascended gear and a lot of times they're like minor differences like they will have kind of like you know world of warcraft has um gear that's like uh if i look through my bags uh something of the aurora and of the aurora items have haste and versatility so there will be different versions of ascended gear that have you know particular stat combinations so technically speaking it's like i remember what was it that I used? A uh, Berserker's gear? I think it was like Berserker's Ascended gear was the best for my spec, but all of it had like the same stat di distribution. It was just like different tiers of rarity. So every Ascended gear would have the same allocation of stats, no matter where you got it from. And there was min-maxing you could do where like, oh, Berserker's had like more crit or something like that. So that was like your BIS endgame set that you wanted to aim for. But if I were to just get Ascended gear from doing world content somewhere else, and it had slightly less optimal stats, it would still be perfectly fine to do all of the raids, all of the dungeons and stuff like that. So it basically opens up all of these different methods of progression and really lets you just play whatever you find more fun. And I think that's one of the strongest points in Guild Wars 2. And the best thing about Guild Wars 2, right, is I've kind of been hearing from some of my friends who play it that they haven't really been great about adding a lot of new content. Like the pace of updates is slow. But the reason why a lot of people still play that game is because it doesn't really matter if they don't add a ton of new content because all of their old content is still relevant. Whereas in World of Warcraft, right, who the fuck is running Vault of the Incarnates now that Aberus is out? They invalidate all of their old content every time they release a new patch. Whereas Guild Wars 2, you can still easily find groups for raids that came out 5, 10 years ago because of the way that that game was structured from the ground up. So it's kind of one of those things where WoW is... If they don't adapt to that kind of on a clock, Final Fantasy is something similar, a little bit, uh, where 
World of Warcraft has just been in a process for many, many years of just kind of throwing out all of its old content and not really doing anything with it. And they've been trying to salvage that a little bit with like improving time walking and whatnot. But then when you have games like Guild Wars 2 and Final Fantasy, where from the day one ground up thing, they've structured their content in such a way that it never gets invalidated, that you can always go back and play it. As time goes on, those games will have an advantage. You know, 10 years from now, Guild Wars 2 will have a massive library of content that you can just jump into the moment you start playing the game. And, you know, every expansion comes with like a max level boost, right? So you just hop in, you play it, everything like scales to you, and you could go through the entire library of Guild Wars 2 content scaled to the exact same item level as when it was current content. And that is a huge advantage. Same deal with Final Fantasy, kind of where they have ways to do a lot of their content and it's still relevant, right? Final Fantasy a little bit less so since it does still have levels, but Final Fantasy does have some like horizontal progression mechanics. There's also things like Palace of the Dead, right? Which is like evergreen content. Um, World of Warcraft needs to improve at that. Uh, it, it is probably one of its biggest weak points at the moment. Anyways, that that is like a... I was going to say TLDR, but I did spend a decent amount of time explaining that. But that was a good summary, I think, of everything important that you would need to know about horizontal progression. Uh, Guild Wars 2 is definitely like the gold standard for something like that. Uh, my friend Max said, horizontal progression defined as crawling horizontally across your floor from your PC to your bed after a long session of classic Blizzard gaslighting. Thank you for your input, Max. Greatly appreciate it. You want undead paladins? Am I going to level a light forge when I do a ret speedrun? Yes. If I do a ret paladin speedrun, if that eventually wins a poll, I would definitely do that as a light forge tranai. Tar and rogue, nobody can notice you if they're all dead. Riot equals poo poo. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't really like Riot. Uh, you heard Ghostcrawler left the team for the Riot MMO confirmed dead game. Yeah. I'm curious to hear why. I assume, I think he tweeted out that it was like just because he wanted to work at like a different company, but I would imagine it doesn't really mean anything for the future of the game. Though he was kind of a figurehead for it, so they're going to need some other big spokesperson for it now. It does kind of suck, but I doubt it's really going to impact much. Do I think BM Hunter could be running speed leveling? Um, BM Hunter's good, right? It's not top tier, like super amazing, but it, it is definitely... I would say it's probably the best hunter leveling spec. Survival is also pretty good. So, yeah. I, I just don't really think BM Hunter has, like, amazing damage or, like, it's pretty good survivability because of the pet tanking. But it doesn't have anything super special. It's, like, standard. BM Hunter is, like, up there with Warrior. is like, it's good. Um, pet tanking maybe puts it, like, a little bit ahead of Warrior because you can do stuff like Yetimus without really having to worry. Actually, before I forget... One thing before I move on, I do want to quickly at least try Yetimus, because we finished the um, the run before I got to him. But I kind of want to see. I figure Enhancement Shaman could probably kill Yetimus without too much issue, but it would be good to confirm it. Like, you have instant cast healing surges. Anything that has instant cast heals and really good burst cooldowns can usually make quick work of Yetimus. But I want to at least try it just to confirm. So before I finish reading the rest of chat. Because after all, we need to make sure that it does pass the Yetta litmus test. Six. That is... It's going to Healing Surge. So where is Yetimus? Uh, I don't see him, so I'm guessing he's patrolling from over there. So I'll quickly catch up on chat while he runs over here. Uh, the one thing I like about Riot is that while their monetization is arguably a bit much, it's only cosmetic. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, bouncing will be off what they have going on in their MOBA. Maybe. Uh, Legends of Runeterra, bleh, Legends of Runeterra is a little bit more monetized in terms of actual progression, but it's perfectly fine as a free-to-play game. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how monetized it would be in terms of progression, because I haven't spent any money on it, and I've been playing it for a while. So... What what about, like, the progression is monetized? Because I didn't even know you could really spend money to get further. I've just been playing the single-player thing completely free-to-play, and I I have, like, never hit a wall. To me, the, the definition of when something is, like, forced monetization is when you eventually hit a wall. And it's like, okay, if I really want to continue, I kind of need to pay money, but I haven't hit that wall ever while playing it. So I think that's kind of a good sign. Maybe there's, like, ways to speed up the leveling or something, but 
I haven't really found that that's necessary at all. Uh, okay. Oh, double storm strike procs. And goodbye, Animus. Yeah, he hits hard, but, you know, instant cast healing surges for half my HP is uh, kind of strong. Uh, don't you have to buy the heroes? I've been getting a bunch of free currency to buy the heroes. Oh, is there... Maybe there's, like, a way to buy it with real money. I haven't looked into that, but... I mean, I have all the ones that I like playing. They have a weekly free champ rotation, and you earn capsules every time you level up. Um, yeah, so that's just... You haven't bought any champs for paid currency, and you own most of the champs in the game on League. You only spent money on skins and such. Um, but yeah, I mean, at least in Legends of Runeterra, there's, like, so many free currency things that you get. So, for the single-player mode, I, I've just unlocked all of that normally. I haven't unlocked everything yet, but... Uh, I've, I haven't finished all of the challenges, even on the stuff that I have unlocked, so I haven't really felt like I need to spend money on anything. The new leveling guide, push buttons till things die, pretty much. Um, they're fine, but without a tank grouping stuff for you, they either take a while to group it on yourself and just die or have a pet tank it. Yeah, the, the only thing, yeah, it's, BM hunters have their pet to tank, but it's definitely like, pet AI is obviously janky, right? So it's better than marksman because they do have like kind of their own pet, pet tank that they can throw out there. But would you rather be playing a tank and just be able to cleave everything down on your own? Or would you rather, you know, have a pet AI that can sometimes bug out and pull extra shit? It's just not the most reliable thing in the world, but it is decent. I don't know how BM Hunter damage is right now. I've heard that there's like some issues with their AOE. One of my Hunter friends is always complaining about her damage in raids, but... It used to be good. Like, my first ever world record, keep in mind, was with a BM Hunter. Now, I have since beaten that a million times, and that was back in Shadowlands, right? But I think that at least says something about the fact that you can make them work. So, they're not the worst things ever. I also think, though, probably if I had to pick survival, it might be a little bit faster. Just because now, with all of the changes, like, the survival bomb build is pretty good. And does, like, pretty consistent damage. And survival also has a pet. So it's not going to be as good of a pet tank as BM, but if you need something to hold threat on, like, Yetimus, for instance, you can just have your survival pet growl. So it kind of really accomplishes the same thing. And obviously, melee DPS in general is going to be more flexible because melee is able to just attack while moving, whereas BM Hunter can kind of do that, but will still need to turret for a little bit. Marksmanship definitely is the worst Hunter leveling spec, though. Uh, Guild Wars 2 is legendary gear. Yeah, so Guild Wars 2 obviously has like a tier above Ascended legendary, like you can pick the stats on it, but I more so meant that Ascended gear is the highest where like you actually gain stats from it. So what is like the one below that? Exotic gear. Exotic gear does have less stats than Ascended gear, but legendary gear is like, it's a, a grind to basically get like a customizable item so that instead of having to farm multiple Ascended sets, you just have your one legendary piece and you can freely change the stats on it. Yes, but... I was more so saying that if you want to get into raiding, like when I first got into raiding in Guild Wars 2 and played it for a little bit, I just farmed um, one set of Ascended gear and then I was able to move that around between my different characters. So I initially started raiding in Guild Wars 2 as a Mesmer and I had a bunch of Mesmer stuff and then I switched to a Ranger later on. And while I did need to make some new stuff because they use like different armor types, I was able to keep my dual swords and my great sword that I initially crafted for my Mesmer and use that on my Ranger as well. So that's another thing. All the gear in Guild Wars 2 is BOA, or at least all the Ascended gear. So once you invest all your resources into that, you can pretty much play alts freely without having to worry about re-gearing them. That's another really nice thing. Uh, there's been a shift within the Guild Wars 2 dev lately where they're starting to focus on pushing content more consistently. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Because uh, I heard it was pretty like barren for a while, but uh, if they're actually pushing out content more, I might need to check it out again at some point. Uh, they tank flawlessly once it's grouped before that. They're kind of terrible, yeah. Who the fuck is running Vault of the Incarnates when, after Averis is out, cries and seal the Deer and is chosen? I mean, yeah, Aranog runs, obviously. Uh, I've done, like, one or two Aranog runs just to help people get the ring. But outside of that, like, nobody's doing Mythic Razageth, right? Especially because it doesn't drop a mount. So sometimes you'll see people do old raids if it's like, you know, there's a mount or something to farm, but, you know. The reason you still consider TBC the best version of WoW that existed is due to all the content mattering throughout its entire lifespan. Karazhan 10 mans were just as relevant in Sunwell to the end. 
Yeah, that's that's a fair point. Because actually, I came back in Sunwell, and even after I had gotten geared for it, I was still doing Karazhan for badges and stuff like that. So, that is a pretty good argument in favor of TBC. I like that when I played Classic. Uh, WoW just needs to do a world reset and just leave all the expansions on Classic. I think maybe they could do that once Classic finally gets caught up, which would probably be in like six years or something. Could be interesting. Uh, he said the game is in good hands, but I won't take his word for it. If anything, I'm hoping for a good collections tab. I would imagine a modern day MMO, if it releases without like a good way to collect stuff, that's going to be not great for a large amount of people. You haven't leveled this BM, but its damage profile doesn't seem great for leveling. Yeah, it. that's the main thing. BM with pet tank, it's... It can pretty much tank any single target elite, which is one of its strongest suit like things. So even like some of the tankier DPS can struggle a little bit with Yetimus. Less so now because the new talent system gives you so much flexibility. Like for instance, Enhancement Shaman in Shadowlands struggled because a lot of your really good survivability stuff you did not get until much later on. But with the new talent system, like, you get Astral Shift literally instantly. You get all of this, like, really useful survivability stuff, and you can pick and choose exactly what you want. So a lot of specs like Enhancement Shaman that with the old talent system really struggled at lower levels to deal with stuff like Yetimus. Now the added flexibility means as long as their class has access to stuff like that, they're pretty much able to do whatever the fuck they want. And then you have stuff like Rogue, where their class just simply doesn't have access to reliable self-healing, so they're just fucked. Um, but outside of Rogue, uh, it's, uh, generally speaking, BM Hunter, the pet tank is nice for that. But kind of like I said, it struggles on AoE, definitely doesn't have consistent burst AoE damage. Like, I think it has okay sustain AoE, but... All of its, like, main damage abilities are, or damage cooldowns, are, like, modifiers. Like, Bestial Wrath, or stuff like Barb Shot increasing your pet's attack speed. Which is great if you're in, like, Mythic Plus, or at least it used to be great. You're in Mythic Plus, and you're just shredding a mob with a Beast Cleave over the course of 10 seconds. But, if you've noticed, with leveling, a lot of times what I do is I just press Sundering, press Doom Winds, press, like, Storm Strike after using Crash Lightning, and it just kills mobs in 2 seconds. Leveling is very burst heavy. You round up a bunch of mobs, you pop a bunch of cooldowns, and you try to erase it in a few seconds. So if you're sitting there just cleaving mobs down, it tends to be inefficient. Which is why after my initial Shadowlands run with BM Hunter, I kind of never played it again. And that's the only reason I even included it on the poll here, because it has been so long since I've done a Hunter speedrun. I don't think it would be terrible, but it definitely would struggle to meet the speed of stuff like Paladin, Druid, Monk, etc. You leveled as Survival more because it's more fun? Yeah, I also prefer Survival. Survival is one of my favorite melee DPS specs. I really, really enjoy playing it. I I didn't love the bomb play style. So, ironically, the one time Survival was, like, really broken was probably when I played it the least because I hate bomb spam, even if it is good. My favorite play style with Survival is, like, Mongoose Bite into... Um, whatever the, the artifact ability is from Legion, which they finally brought back, which I'm happy about. Um, but it's like you spam Mongoose Bite, you build up those stacks, and then you do like the frontal pulsing cone thing. I loved Legion Survival Hunter. I thought it was really fun to play. And I hated Survival in BFA after the changes. And it was like okay in Shadowlands. But I uh, looked into the Legion, or um, words, uh, Dragonflight stuff, and I really like the Dragonflight changes. At some point I'll get around to playing my Survival Hunter more, but yeah, I definitely prefer it over the other Hunter specs. You've done all three. Survival was great because your entire rotation is performable while moving. Yeah. Harpoon feels good while leveling, but BM might technically have the upper hand. I don't know. Um, Harpoon is very good, actually. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like survival was already good even before the changes. I think the added flexibility, letting it get a lot of its really overpowered tools at earlier levels, could actually just make it better than BM, objectively speaking. BM beats MM on single target as well, but BM can also perform the entire rotation while moving. Yeah, I, I mean, everything beats MM. MM is honestly maybe even worse than Rogue for leveling. The only reason why I don't traditionally include MM as one of the worst leveling specs is because you can just play something else, right? If you're leveling a hunter, just don't level it as MM, right? Uh, whereas Rogue, Rogue, even your best option, you will struggle. Whereas like BM, even if it doesn't do the most damage, pet tank does kind of make things easier. So Hunter is never a bad class to level as right but mm just none of mm's kit works for leveling it, it is just fundamentally at odds with what you need to be do, doing for leveling it might be the single worst spec in the game for leveling 
outside of like healer specs or something like that. Um, drama I might like. Ooh, figured out why a streamer I had to excommunicate from my life is super cozy with Blaze on. Basically, anyone doing plus twenty five pugs won't play with them anymore. Interesting. Um, I, I don't know what you're talking about in terms of the the streamer. I haven't heard anything about that, but uh, I mean Blaze on is uh, Blaze on's Blaze on, right? Um, I guess if they are super cozy with Blazon, I that probably says a lot on its own, but eh. I know a lot of people who like suck up to Blazon and are like nice to him and stuff just for like the memes to kind of like, you know, play along with the whole like, oh, Anvil gaming stuff. But see, actually, I'm not going to I'm not going to shit talk Blazon. Um. All I will say is I used to at least somewhat be okay with Blazon because of, like, the memes. I I was never a huge fan of him, but I would at least, like, when people would shit talk Blazon, I would be like, hey, and, you know, the guy is ambitious, right, and a little bit unrealistic, but at least he's just doing, you know, fun, goofy stuff. But I have heard some bad things, which I won't repeat because I, I don't know personally if they are true, but I have heard enough people say certain things about Blazon that he has done that sound really shitty to the point where I don't feel comfortable supporting him just as a meme anymore. At this point, if what I've heard is true, which has come from some friends that I trust, I don't really think that he is uh, really a guy worth even ironically supporting so yeah blazon i i i don't love said before i still have some friends in anvil gaming the guild like i don't hate the guild or ghost gaming whatever right like Seco mode i'm friends with you know he's chill um but yeah blazon is definitely a, a little bit out there um legends of retainer terra monetization being more on progression for collecting cards the pvp ah i mean i can't speak to a ton of the pvp but like i played I did push a little bit in ranked before I got bored, and I played, like, what was the build I played? It was, like, Pirates with Scouts or something like that, where you would attack twice in one turn. It The heroes I used were, I think it was uh, Misfortune and Quinn, if I recall, was the deck that I played. This was, like, a year ago or so, so it's been a while. Um, but I built that deck entirely from free-to-play stuff that I got. I just looked up, like, optimal deck builds or something like that, and I got pretty far... I, I don't really have a frame of reference because I haven't watched any content whatsoever for Legends of Runeterra. I don't know how far the ranking system goes, but it felt like I was doing pretty well, um, all things considered, just with a completely free build that I got by looking up on a website. And there was also something I like a month or so ago, I logged on to Legends of Runeterra and it gave me like eight decks for free. There was apparently some event where everybody gets like eight entire decks of free cards permanently added to your collection, which seems ridiculously generous. I don't know, like, I don't remember Hearthstone ever doing something like that. So giving people that many free decks to play with that are, like, constructed viable seems really nice. Uh, so whatever other monetization stuff seems pretty good as far as giving you free stuff. Um, Yeti hits hard, but Shaman hits harder, yeah. Serve again, though, is pretty good and still insanely fun to play. Yep. All Blazon's friends are people who got kicked out of the Cool Kids and Plus Club. Uh, Harlden, if you want to test something else, go on that character. Go to the Hill Fawn Quest with the extra button. All right, let me try that. The Hill Fawn Quest. I can see it. It's the, the wand is over here. I would imagine that would make things a little bit easier because I hated having to quick the, click the, whatchamacallit, quest button in the log. Oh, Okay. Am I going to die here? Oh, fuck. I'm just going to get out of here before this thing explodes. This part is rough to do the hill fawns in because there's no other hostile mobs, so a lot of times they just aggro straight on you. But yeah, this is definitely a good one to use it on. Not having to like go over here and click it is really nice. Azor's BM Hunter Guide isn't the best. Oh yeah, I don't know if you just joined uh, Reese Pattison, but I spent a lot of time earlier in the stream shit-talking Azertharian and his BM Hunter Guides. Or, well, shit-talking Azertharian and frankly everything about him. Uh, not a fan of that guy. Um, but definitely his guides, yeah. Whew. Every single one of my Hunter friends hates Azertharian. 
Uh, what has been my favorite class to level? I mean, I'm honestly Guardian Druid, right? Like, I would say if I had to pick, there's a reason why I like doing the speedruns, and that's because Guardian Druid is really, really good, <laughs> really fun to level. I would say maybe, usually the way I say it is like, I like leveling as Monk, I like leveling as Druid, and they are very fast, right? The class that I like to play that isn't meta, quote unquote, for speedrunning is Prop Paladin. Prop Paladin is very, 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 very fun to level as. It's not slow, right? It's it's above average. I would say it's like solid A tier, but it doesn't have anything special, right? It doesn't have like flight form. It doesn't have, you know, monk teleport or anything like that. Um, I guess if you played like Dark Iron Dwarf Paladin, you would be able to play Prop Pally with access to the Dark Iron Racial. So that would probably be the best race class option for it. Um but whenever I'm playing Alliance, I also like to play Lightforge Draenei Prop Paladin, because it's just, you know, thematically fun. Uh, but that is probably my favorite spec to level as. I also, I like leveling as a Demon Hunter, I should say. The only issue is it starts at level 8. So at some point, maybe soon, I'll do a Demon Hunter run. I don't know, that could be fun. The only issue is it because it's not the same with everything else, it's like hard to test my leveling routes on a demon hunter run because the starting zone throws things off and it starts at level eight instead of level 10. So I like demon hunter. Just don't really get a chance to play it a lot for leveling. Uh, the MM thing of you can just level as something else reminds me of Max's castle Nathria healer tier list. Holy priest has a huge, huge advantage over Mistweaver because you can just swap the disc. I mean, yeah, it is true because Holy priest did on certain uh bosses have like a massive advantage and then also you know it has another spec <laughs> but i do remember that tier list video i remember that was pretty funny what was it it was sun king salvation right where holy was really good i vaguely remember um every single holy priest swapping for that that well that one uh i know for sure was holy I, it's just was it only that fight or was there another fight where holy was also really good in castle nathria might have just been sun king salvation because i remember i actually healed my guild's first kill of sun kings and i played miss weaver so i did not main miss weaver but i mained brewmaster still at the time and we did not have a miss weaver monk and i was unable to recruit a miss weaver monk so i literally just learned how to play miss weaver got miss weaver legendaries and got all that set up and we just solo tanked sun king salvation with uh, our demon hunter tank at the time just doing all that stuff and i just went healer and we one tanked it and it was actually really fun because i don't really get to heal prog bosses a lot and i think outside of sun kings the only prog boss i've healed is imanar the soul hunter which i think i mentioned before uh, and that was also as a misweaver so the only times i've ever healed mythic prog is as a misweaver and it's usually as an off spec when we for whatever reason need a bonus healer for a fight uh, and in that case, it was actually kind of fun because I had like a special job to do where I would just like pump single target healing into Kael'thas. And I, I kind of liked it, right? Because a lot of times healing is about like resource management, right? Where you have to like carefully manage your mana and stuff like that and watch people's health bars and keep them alive. But I basically got to play Mistweaver as a DPS, but in heal farm because I was just optimizing HPS as much as possible. My sole job was I get Innervate and I just press all the big healing buttons and pump as much healing into Kael'thas as I physically could, which was really enjoyable. And I think I got like a, I don't know, like a 60-something parse as Mistweaver for healing, which obviously healing parses don't mean shit, but at least I didn't gray parse on my only time playing my off-spec healing for a prog kill. So that was pretty fun. Um, Michael James said, I love your content, man. Been watching you for a while, but I rarely get to catch your streams. Appreciate it. I mean, in fairness... I don't, I haven't streamed a lot recently, so I only just returned to streaming last weekend, and the last stream I did before then was like six months ago, so that might also be, be why you've rarely caught my streams, because I rarely streamed, uh, but now I've been streaming a little bit more often, at least for now, I'm planning on streaming every single weekend, and I might add additional days, depending on how my schedule is looking. So right now, outside of the two days I stream, I'm doing a lot of other stuff like, you know, PTR testing and video editing and whatnot because the new patch is about to come out. But once all of that stuff settles down and I have a bit more free time, I may stream extra stuff. I'm also debating streaming Sarkareth Prog. I'm not 100% sure because like the only problem is whenever I stream Raid Prog or I, whenever I did that in the past, I 
I struggled to do it because I like interacting with chat, right? And I already struggle to keep up with chat when I'm doing a casual leveling speedrun. When I'm doing like Mythic Prague and I have to tank and stuff like that, I can barely ever read chat. It's tough. I get like a, a few seconds in between pulls to do that. So a few people in the past have asked me to stream my Mythic Prog, and I've thought about it, but it's just like, it would it would be a very different environment, right? Like I would not be responding a lot, and I just don't know if I'd like that. So I'll think about it. Um, but my guilds, we may kill Sarkareth on Monday, which is the only reason I'm considering it, just because it could be cool to like stream my Mythic Sarkareth kill, because we got him to 10%. Uh, we bit, we got like really low fairly consistently and we had a pull where we lost like a lot of dps at the start of p3 but we executed everything like super well and we still got him to 10 percent even with a bunch of people dead and it was one of those where if we had had everybody alive and people hadn't died to like a misplaced rift or something that could have been like really close to a kill so we have uh we have basically three days of prog because we're a two-day guild but we had scheduling issues on thursday so we moved our raid day on Thursday to Monday. So we're going to be raiding Monday, then nothing Tuesday, then Wednesday, Thursday. So we have three days nearly back to back with like 10% pulls where if we don't kill on one of those three days, I will be very surprised. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is I think we have a few other minor roster shakeups on t or Wednesday, Thursday of next week, which might make it a little bit hard because a few people will have to come in and will slightly reprog, but... I mean, we're close enough that I would be very surprised if we don't kill it. So that could be fun. Still debating it, though. This is someone who is way beyond needing to be in his guilds. Um, just someone who is interacting with me and someone else in ways. Yeah, Yuzu Cat, if you want to, like, give me more context outside of stream, like on Discord or something, if it's an interesting drama story, like, I am a sucker for good guild drama stories, I'd be happy to listen out of curiosity like throw it in my discord or something i know there's a lot of other people uh, in there who love guild drama stories but i have no idea what you're talking about unfortunately i would imagine it's probably too specific and requires too much context to explain like in quick snippets and stream chat uh but i'm always down to read it later uh it's fun that mm sucks for leveling because it's absolutely game breaking and low level bgs oh i'd imagine uh you've already told someone else more relevant i see um Ezra's BM guide. All right, I read that all right. Uh, we back in the Ezra theory and hate trade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, don't go harass um, for sure. Uh, is there no way to skip DH starting zone like you can Exiles Reach? I don't believe so. Uh, I don't think you can skip it at all. I think it's required. I could be wrong, though, but I'm pretty sure you have to do the whole thing. Uh, Sun King's Holy Blasted and the rest was disc was ahead by a mile. Gotcha. Um... You've healed a friend's guild's mythic prog on your pre-stall. Ended up solo healing one side of that TOS boss that had the two realms. Oh, yeah. Um, Desolate Host? Yeah, that was fun. Desolate Host was definitely interesting, having, like, the split groups and stuff like that. How the hell do you skip Exiles Reach? There's, like, a chat command. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but you have to put something in chat where it's, like, skip tutorial, and it teleports you out of Exiles Reach unless you skip it. Yeah. Desolate Host was, like, most people I know hated it. And also, it was kind of janky because, let me find, um, let me find the dungeon journal. Uh, like, I don't know if your guild did this, but we, we had, we three tanked it. And which mob was it? It was, I think it was, which one? It was one of these two mobs. Um, Either the the Templar or the Bone Warden. So we had uh, three tanks. I tanked the downstairs phase. I want to say with um what's what's her face uh, Soul Queen Dejana. So I tanked this phase, and then we had another tank on the upstairs phase, and then we had a Blood DK who just sat by the door and held all of one of these two mobs. I forget which one was problematic, but there was one that had a, a really annoying mechanic to deal with, and we just held them there, and the Blood DK just sat there face tanking all the mobs. And it completely negated, like, the entire fight. So, Desolate Host was neat, and it was fun that you could do stuff like that. So, like, if you were the person who got to, like, you know, do the hero plays, like like you said, solo healing one phase, or um, you get to, like, tank all the adds away, it was neat. And I like how on Mythic, you kind of, like, stay permanently split up, and you have to kind of coordinate between the two phases uh, with, like, markers and stuff, where everybody is. That was kind of neat. 
And it had the thing where uh, one phase would have to stand inside and one phase would have to run out. So you need like two people doing callouts, one for each side. It was like a neat concept, but I don't know. The fact that it was just so cheesable and it was one of the easiest bosses in TOS, coming off of especially Sisters of the Moon, like this boss wedged between Sisters of the Moon and Mistress Sazin, which for a fourth boss, God, Sisters fucking slapped. This was actually really tough, I remember. Um, so many people getting hit by the glaives, and then, you know, if people cross over the moon at the wrong time, your entire raid explodes. And then going from that to just, like, slaughtering Desolate Host, and then hitting Mistress Sazin, which, dear lord, this boss. <laughs> uh, and then it was just a fucking gauntlet all the way to the end. Mistress Sazin, Maiden of Vigilance, Fallen Avatar, like... Desolate Host was just a tiny little speed bump, but the design of it was neat. It's just unfortunate it didn't pan out. Um, my dad said, it's possible I accidentally blocked someone when picking up my phone. Wait, you like... Did you like ban somebody from the channel accidentally? That's not good. Uh, okay. I'll have to look into that after the fact. That's, um... Uh... I, I hope not. Uh, less chat, more hardcore leveling, daylight's burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've tested everything else that I need to do, so I will uh, get ready to be flashbanged again. I know, I'm sorry. Um, but, wow, classic era PTR, and I'll, I'll swap over real quick. Ban me for vague bone stick nonsense. Uh... Okay, should be updated any second now. There we go. My eyes. Yeah, I didn't actually consider that because, like, obviously the default background color in MS Paint is white. So I just kind of threw that up and threw it, like, behind one of my stream things. I will make a dark mode transition screen before the next uh, stream. I'll try to remember to do that. Uh, does the chat command give 10 free levels? No, it, it does not. Uh, you can't wait to level a Magkar Orc when the patch comes out. Having unlocked them seems like a fun race. It, visually, it's fun, but they have some really bad racials, if I'm being honest. I uh, believe it's slash run. Yeah, I think that's the command, Naomi. Do I have a rogue leveling? Yes. Uh, I actually have a rogue fresh account leveling video. You can find it. It's like a few months ago. I posted it in April, I want to say. If you find um, leveling a fresh account or something like that, it's roughly what the title is, that run was done as a rogue. That is the only run I've done as a rogue, actually. If you consider every single boss, TOS was probably one of, if not the best raids ever. I agree. Yeah. Groth was a really good first boss. Yeah, I I didn't like Demonic Inquisition. Demonic Inquisition was one of those that, like, had potential. I think I, I like what they were going for with the whole, like, you have to go down and purify yourself. But then when the end strategy ended up being, like, you just solo tank top and... As a demon hunter, I would literally sit down in the cage with Cynodaria the symbiote and just pad off the ad the whole time. But like it was, I was ethical padding, right? Because I needed to sit down there and create soul fragments so that people would jump down and purify themselves and quickly go back up. So it's another one of those fights that cool in concept, but kind of like not the best in practice, but it's still better than a lot of other bosses they've done. And Harshatan was like, I guess, pretty standard. Um, but yeah, Sisters in the Moon was an amazing fight. Really liked the design of that. Uh, Mr. Sazine, definitely really rough. But I love the... One of my favorite things about it is, like, the all the different, like, sea creatures and stuff like that. You had, like, the puffer fish. You had the big whale that would crash through the middle. And the, especially that guy that would... Um, I don't remember what monster it was. Was it, like, a leviathan that would, like, latch itself onto the side and drag you in? And you had to, like, feed the puddles... But if you got too close, it would just one-shot you. There were so many really cool mechanics on Mistress. Maiden was a bit janky. And then Fallen Avatar is, like, one of my favorite bosses ever. Uh, KJ, one of the best mythic bosses ever, like you said. Yeah. Overall, I would say TOS is my favorite raid. Uh, the only one that comes close is Siege of Orgrimmar. Love Siege of Orgrimmar. Uh, all the allied races unlock in 10.1.5. Yes, completely for free. You just automatically get them. Happy Saturday. I've got about an hour to level today. Should I try and bring one of my 50s to 60 or blitz and get your bear as high as possible? Uh, well, I would say it should take under an hour to get from 50 to 60. So that should be very, very, very easy. With the 50% buff, that should take no time at all. They had lock on Tuesday. Uh, Magkar is bad racials, but visually are sick. Yeah, completely agree. 
May I suggest you try one add-on O-Ring will save you a ton of mouse click clicks. This is stupid good for a quest that subjects you to use quest items. Uh, it has other features, mouse button four. What does it do? Because if it's similar to the um, extra action button, like I already have a keybind for the special button and the, um, uh, what, what was the name? One button quest add-on now lets me use a separate keybind for that. So that has been pretty useful. OP? Okay. I've heard of OP. I've like some of my guildies have definitely mentioned that. I have no idea what it does though. So I'll have to look into that. Uh okay, so classic Taran Shaman. When we left off, uh I'm level 12. Did I spend all my talent points? I did. The next thing that I wanted to do before I moved on is I want to get bigger bags. So I unlocked the recipe for Kodo Hide Bag. And I have some light leather here. Uh, this is six slots, and I already have two six slots, so I only need two of these. And there's a quest over here. Oh, that's a donation of wool. Uh, there's a few quests I can pick up on the Elder and Spirit Rise. So I will go and do that. You really like how in the new patch, all riding skills are free, no more gold sink? Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely a huge change. Uh, you have hearths and mounts on it, frees up bar space. You can also have markers on it. OP equals hold a button and you get a ring of buttons in the middle of the screen. Drag mouse in the direction of one and release. Huh. Use it for hearth zones. Ooh, dungeon hero portals. Yeah, that sounds like a really nice use case for it. Yeah, there's a lot of add-ons that people have recommended to, to me. I will try that one out. I can't promise it will stick. Uh, there are so many times where people have tried to get me to use like a new quality of life utility add-on and either I just keep forgetting to use it or like something about it bugs me. I haven't tried that one, so I can't speak to it, but I like the idea of being able to like just one click have a list of all my dungeon portals. That I actually think I would remember to do because I always forget to use my dungeon portals and then I have to like dig into my um, like journal and find the exact one that I'm looking for and that's always a pain. <laughs> Previously on hardcore shaman leveling, our hero recently hit level 12 without dying and reached Thunder Bluff. Will he manage to not die in this episode? Yeah, basically. Uh, definitely want to make sure I don't fall off the cliff here, so I'm going to be a little bit careful. But yeah, my main goal initially is get my next two Kodo Hide bags. Oh, so this is the quest that I can pick up until death do us part. And once I get my Kodo Hide bags, I'm going to try to 100% Mulgore and finish all of the quests here. And once I'm done with Mulgore, I will, I guess, just kind of continue into the Barrens, I think. I don't really know. I don't have, like, a, a plan in place. The main thing is I'll probably stop the stream if I get to level 15. Because I don't really know how long I want to keep going for. It's been five hours and... It kind of depends, I guess, on how long things take. So if I end up being here for, you know, three more hours and I'm still level 14 or something like that, I may end the stream there, but my goal is at least level 15. I think three levels, three, four hours, reasonably achievable. In Classic, you had the Absorb Totem this early. Um, I don't know which Absorb Totem you mean. This is a Taunt Totem, and this is uh, Melee Damage Reduction. So... They may do different things in later versions of the game. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to love it. I will take your word for it. I will try it out for sure. It's just the same icon? Gotcha. Uh, it's something that could be annoying to set up, set up initially, but it's so nice once you've set it up. Just hold L and drag your mouse to a direction. Release L and use a dungeon portal. Yeah. I'll try it out. I might not have time to look into it before tomorrow's stream, but... That's the type of thing that, like, during the week when I have time to sit down and look at stuff, I will try to remember to get into that. You can go to Barons now for Cauldron Stir and then come back and continue in Mulgore. Big Slapper Weapon will feel great at this level. Um, like, so if this was regular Classic, I would say maybe... But at the same time, it's hardcore, so I kind of want to just, like, do stuff at my level, and I don't really want to um, go too far ahead yet. So I'm just going to play it super duper safe, 
I'm going to stick to Mulgore and I'm going to do everything here just to make sure that, you know, I'm safe and cozy. Oh, I can also I can get rid of my timer now. No point for that because you know, now we're in classic. Baron's Oasis. All right. Uh, this is the Druid area, so I guess I can't train any of my abilities. I probably can train new stuff now, though. I'll do Light Leather. Um, sent a little screenshot of the two rings you use the most to show how clean it is in Discord. Again, no rush. Yeah, I'll check it out after the fact. Uh, but I appreciate it. Leatherworking makes bags. Um, yeah, I think it's just this one. So I don't know a ton about classic professions, but I'm pretty sure most of the bags are tailoring. And it's just like this particular recipe, Kodo hide bag, that leather workers can make. And I also went leather working because the um, armor kits are pretty nice. Being able to slap plus eight armor onto everything. As an alternative, you should check the add-on auto bar. It's old and rarely updated, but you literally can't live without it. It's a floating dynamic bar that shows mounts stuff. Um... The only thing is anything, like, if it's summonable on demand, like, the main reason that I like the idea of this, like, uh, ring add-on that uh, everybody's mentioning is if it's something that, like, with a keybind, I can cause it to pop up, and then the moment I release the keybind, it goes away. That's nice. Anything that just sits in my UI, I, I hate. It's anything like that that I can't stand. I need the center of my screen to be clear. Otherwise, it just gets too distracting. But if it's something that like I can summon like with a keybind and then click what I need to and then make it go away, that sounds like something that I may actually use. Uh, it generally becomes more clutter. Yeah, I just that's kind of my concern, pretty much. Because I've had there, there's been so many like little UI things that people have recommended that end up kind of like that, where I try it out and then I forget to use it and it just ends up being something blocking my screen. I like to have like essential stuff only. Like I have on my retail UI, um, like externals. I have my little external sheet in the bottom right, um, like movement CDs, et cetera, et cetera stuff like that. Um, but I'm fairly minimalistic when it comes to add-ons and weak auras and stuff like that. Only when I absolutely need it. I also just, I hate using it as a crutch, right? So one thing is... I, I always love how whenever there's a new patch and everything is broken, so many people, so, so many of my friends, my guildies are always like, oh my god, I can't live without my add-ons. Or like the classic, whenever I ask somebody to help me with PTR testing and they're like, oh, I don't know, would I have to reset up all my add-ons and stuff like that? It's like, ah, oh. so many people cannot play this game if they don't have all their shit set up. I can log onto the PTR with zero add-ons and I'm good to go. Because all of my add-ons are like very minor quality of life stuff, not required at all. So being able to just like pick up and play on patch day without waiting for all of these updates or things like that, or being able to test stuff when there's like broken UI things, I think that's important. And it's one of the reasons why I really don't like relying too much on stuff that could potentially become outdated or broken, etc. Am I playing Ellie or Enhance? Well, right now, um, I'm just playing Shaman, right? Like... I've put three points into Enhancement, so I am long-term going to be aiming to play Enhance, but as it stands, it's like, you know, there's really very little difference between Ellie or Enhance at low levels. I haven't gotten any of the talents or abilities that significantly change the playstyle, so hard to say. But yeah, long-term, definitely aiming to play Enhance. I'll also just eat to get food buff, two stamina, two spirit, can't hurt. Uh, it's exactly like that. Use a keybind and it comes up on your cursor, then drag to the item you want to use and click. Yeah. Uh, some folk have so many add-ons, I wonder how they even see the game. <laughs> Speaking of Blazod, man, have you guys seen his fucking UI lately? I tuned in for a second of his Sarkarith prog, and I don't know how that man plays the game. Like, not only is every inch of his screen covered in garbage, but there are so many, like, sound effects going off that just how do you process any of that information? Like, I know some people play without game sound on, and, you know, that's fine. I'm sure you have, like, clear ways to tell when something is happening. But I play with game sound, and a lot of times I rely on noises within the game or things within, like, my... Um, boss mods to know when an ability is coming out. 
So sometimes like Sarkareth, for instance, when Sarkareth says like a certain thing, um, I'll know like, okay, he's casting this ability or something like that. Um, or I just have like a notification noise in my boss mods so that I know when I hear this, oh, okay, I need to make sure that I, um, that I go down. Like I have, uh, a notification thing set up so that when I need to go down for the tank buster in phase three, it like clearly is telling me, you know, your stacks are about to explode. You need to get down stuff like that. Usually I, I don't need to rely on that. Like I just know the timing, but as a backup, that's important. So when you have people like Blazon, whose UI is just covered in garbage and a million different sound effects, it's how do you distinguish any of that on like what's important and what is just generic boss ability number three? I do not know how people play like that. That's fucking miserable. The audio cues from Recores can be so helpful. Yeah, but I think they're more helpful when you use them sparingly, right? So if you have like a million different audio cues like Blazon, that, how would you tell what's important and what isn't? But yeah, I like to use Recores where one really important mechanic, it's like, okay, this is the thing that I need to know when it's coming out and having like a singular really important audio cue ready for that that's what I like using. But yeah, some people like also there's um one of the healers in my guild, which I mean he's a good player, right? So uh there there must be a method to the madness. But he has <laughs> he has like random like people speaking Japanese, just random like phrases in Japanese tied to like certain weak aura sounds. And one of his weak aura sounds is a literal gun. Like it's somebody firing a pistol. So whenever I watch like a clip of his gameplay it just like in the middle of Echo of Neltharion, you just hear like a loud gunshot, and that is his indicator for like a certain mechanic. I just I I don't know how that man functions, but I mean he is one of our well I I don't want to say one of our better healers right because all of our healers are kind of cracked, um, but he is a good healer and he is in our guild right, so I give him a lot of shit for stuff like that, but uh, I mean hey he's a good player right so whatever works for him but. I don't get how people can do stuff like that. I like more subtle audio cues, like a little like uh, bell or uh, like a, no a honk or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Simple things, not gunshots blaring in your ears. That I, I cannot understand. Elsmere uses a shotgun sound for frontals and Mythic Plus. Interesting. And yeah, I, I don't even know what what phrases it is, but like his like his countdowns are in a different language. I think it's Japanese, I but it's definitely not English. Uh, so I just, I don't know why. And like, it's not like he is uh, Japanese himself. So I, I asked him one time, why is like half of your stuff in a different language? And I think he said like he imported it from somebody who like uh, plays like in a different language and just never bothered to change it and it works for him. I don't fucking know, man. Um his his name is Pruce in our guild. Pruce has some of the weirdest setup I've shit I've ever seen. But like I said, he's a good healer. But uh, Pr Pruce is definitely a different breed of healer. Um, is this the PTR? Yes, I'm I'm gonna scroll up and chat because I missed a few messages. Um, in retail, your UI are in the middle of the screen. Yeah, but it's in the middle of the screen. It's not blocking the center. It's in the middle bottom in retail. Which is fine. As long as my vision of my character is unobstructed, that's all I care about. Because all I, what I want to do is whenever I'm, I'm playing the game, I want this center area of the screen to be all I need to look at, right? So if I want to quickly see like, you know, oh, is a boss ability going to hit me? I look at the center of the screen. If I want to see how much cooldown is left on my major ability, I just look at the center of the screen. You know, if I need to check like how many resources I have, it's also in the center of the screen. As long as it's like down towards the bottom though, and not directly blocking my character, that's all that matters. So I keep all the information centralized, but still make sure that it's not blocking anything directly in the middle. It's like center bottom. Um, you surprised Blizz doesn't let people edit UI from the start. Yeah, the fact that edit mode is disabled in the starting zone is weird. You can run a command to fix it, but it is very odd to not let people actually just use edit mode from the get-go. I don't know why they did that. Um, Blizz's UI in retail is significantly better than classic, mostly because of how customizable it is. Yeah, for sure. High-end Mythic Plus is insane with audio cues. Yeah. 
witness my ascension. Yeah, that Sargreth line for sure. Ooh, I got. Wait, can I use that? Oh, it's mail. Okay, so I cannot use that unfortunately. Uh, before I forget, I am going to eat up. So I got down to like sixty percent there, which is spooky. Classic hardcore. Uh, when you get used to it, you actually get pretty good at filtering stuff out. Yeah, I suppose it it would depend for me. I generally, it's hit or miss. Sometimes I struggle to filter out certain noises and I have to disable them. Like <laughs> a classic example of something that I literally had to disable in a uh, a weak aura that my guild leader sent or raid leader is on Painsmith during the spike phases. Whenever the um, whenever the little like circles would spawn during the intermission on Painsmith. My raid leader sent us a weak aura that would have, like, a goat bleeding noise. So the entirety of Painsmith intermission, you would hear, like, bah, bah, nonstop. And it was just the most annoying thing ever. So I literally had to go into the weak aura and disable that sound effect because I could not focus with just the constant bah throughout the entirety of Painsmith intermission. So stuff like that, I can't stand. As long as it's like multiple subtle audio cues, okay. But loud goats bleeding into your ears is just no. Please no. Uh, I think people's UI just frees up brain capacity, especially as a DPS. I just want an audio cue or something for an important mechanic, so I don't need to think about that thing. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, that's why people use it. And I, like I said, I use it to an extent. I just think there is regular audio cue usage, and then there is Blazon audio cue usage. That was the main thing that I was saying before. This is pretty cool little speedrun action. Uh, I'm not sure if you're fully caught up, um, Trevor Johansson, but uh, if you're referring to the classic stuff, I'm definitely not speedrunning classic. I am taking this as slowly as I possibly can. Oh, I forgot to clear my bags. Um, I'm just going to get rid of rough stone, I guess. VTuber UI. <laughs> yeah. Gunshots for frontal is nice as a tank. A honk so clown UI. Uh, yeah, there's sometimes like little like, um, horn noises that work pretty well, I find. You like to use five different meows, the electric sound, bells, horns, gunshots, etc. Huh. I've definitely heard some people with meows in their, um... Uh, whatchamacallit, like weak aura packs and stuff like that. Uh, the I, I think, like, as long as it was distinct, it wouldn't bother me, but I hear so many meows, like, IRL, that, I don't know, I may actually get confused if my cat is just screaming at me for food, or if a mechanic is about to hit me. Danger of playing random sounds in other languages is it may sound cute until you get told that it's actually a slur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely the reason why I would never mess around with that. I've had enough times where people try to get me to say weird shit in other languages on stream, so I'm not going to uh, really play around with shit like that. Can't wait to roll a paladin on the official hardcore servers and just auto-attack for 300 hours? Yeah. I don't know what I'll play on official hardcore servers, because, like, Shaman won the poll on my stream, which is why I played it. But honestly, the more I think about it, I'm kind of leaning towards Druid for official hardcore. Because I, I... I don't know. I want to tank dungeons... But at the same time, I really don't want to play a warrior again. And I feel like Guardian Druid can probably tank dungeons perfectly fine while leveling. So I may go with that. Or Feral Druid in Classic, right? The time your guildie screen shared and a pull timer went off and you heard Ju, Q, Hachi, Shiki, Ra... I think that might have been it. Yeah, I think that is... I think that's what his countdown was, the, the healer in my guild. Because a lot of that sounds familiar. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't remember exactly what, uh, like, the Japanese numbers are. But it sounded like it was Japanese to me. Like, I vaguely remembered it. And I definitely recognized some of that. Because I remember San Ni Ichi uh, in his countdown for, like, multiple different mechanics. And I was just like, is that Japanese? Like, why? And, yeah, you know, well, I already explained that part. But, um, oh, there's a bear over there. All right. Do I level Classic WoW very fast too? No, I level Classic WoW very slow. I am not a Classic WoW speedrunner. I like playing Classic, but it is not something that I'm familiar enough with to level efficiently. I'd like to think that 
when I am leveling like off stream on my own time, I don't get like speed run times, right? But I'd like to think I level fairly efficiently. Like I've been leveling up a Death Knight on Wrath Classic in my own free time. And I don't know. I've been going through it at a pretty reasonable pace, I think. But definitely nothing super duper fast. Though I would like to speed run Wrath eventually. It would just take a lot of preparation. You download a UI replacement if they weren't so cancer to look at. The vanilla UI is nostalgic and clean, albeit clunky. Stuff like LVUI just makes your eyes bleed. Yeah. I actually, I really like the vanilla UI. I think for the purposes of vanilla WoW, it works perfectly fine for me. So I just stick with it. I'm ready to see those massive chain lightning hits. Ah. Well, I don't know when I get Chain Lightning, but hopefully fairly soon. That said, even when I do get Chain Lightning, I don't think you're going to see me doing a lot of Chain Pulls, because uh, I'm going to just be killing one mob at a time, as God intended, because I don't want to die. Alright, let's whack you. Uh, how long does it usually take you to level 1 to 60? I mean, I don't play Era, like, ever before this, so a while. I don't really know. Um, definitely, I, I do not have fast leveling times for Classic. Don't expect anything crazy here. Me and your co-tank once snuck a weak aura into an FS F SFO weak aura pack for the Jailer, where every time somebody says meow in chat, it plays a cat meow sound effect. That's awesome. Yeah, we... um. We had a similar kind of weak aura in one of our weak aura packs for, uh, or similar, I mean, in the intent, right? Like for trolling people where this, um, uh, this shaman on our raid team in Sepulcher, every single time she died and, uh, the raid leader would say like, so-and-so use your onk. People would joke that like, oh yeah, the raid leader's like new, most frequently used catchphrase is so-and-so use your onk because she dies so often. So as a way to kind of like tease her, uh, actually the same person, Pruce, the guy with all like the crazy weak auras, he created a weak aura and threw it into the pack, which a bunch of people started using, where any single time that shaman died, everyone would say in raid chat, so-and-so use your onk. And it would just spam raid chat whenever that happens. Uh, and then we've like had a few different ones. Like I think I talked about uh, on one of the previous streams about how we have a a weak aura where whenever the Nazuro is formed or an echo erupts from whatever the place says Nazuro is formed, blah, 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 blah. Uh, whenever that goes out, everybody like says, fuck Pruce because Pruce is our evoker and he still doesn't have the legendary. So our guild chat has been spammed with that. We do like a lot of little goofy weak auras like that. Or at least people in my guild do. I would probably make some of those if I knew how, but I am not as experienced with making things uh oh thing like okay i will definitely take that i should also probably take linen cloth just go ahead and i'm just gonna eat up again because i have a million spiced wolf meats uh oh wow i missed a lot of messages okay let me catch up how long would you level in classic with without hardcore possible to say yeah i um I am not a classic wow speedrunner, so definitely do not ask me for tips on that. Uh, not much I can say to help you out there. Uh, tried LVI for 30 seconds, immediately uninstalled it. Speedrunning classic to max would be ironic as it would take like half a year. I think people got it down in like only a few days. So there definitely are speedrunning strats for classic wow, which is kind of interesting. And like I said, it's something that I'd love to learn how to do eventually, but... Generally speaking to me, Classic is like the fun off game that I play specifically so I don't need to speed run and I can take my time and just kind of enjoy the process. So I don't know. I would only really start speed running Classic WoW when I've kind of already leveled a bunch of different characters and already figured out everything. There's nothing left for me to learn in the game and I can just start speed running for fun. Thinking doing the easy hunter when official servers drop, that's always a good option. The meow is not helpful for people with cats. I hear so many meows IRL that I might not know if my cat is screaming at me for food. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're about to get hit with a swipe if you don't get them some damn food. Yeah, every single... Like, so one of my cats, anytime I make food and, like, I bring it down and, like, eating next to my computer, he will just, like, sit next to me and just scream at me. Or he will try to climb up onto my table and try to, like, eat the food. And I... A lot of times, like, if I make food in between breaks and raid... 
he'll like come down here and I'm in the middle of a pull and he's trying to like climb up onto my table to get my food. So I'm literally like playing with one hand and trying to like quickly like block him and like reach out to my left and like push him away and push him down from like, you know, the table. And it's just a fucking nightmare. And then sometimes he will just like climb up onto my dresser and do like a death defying leap across the room and try and land on top of my keyboard. And he did that one time in the middle of the pole and it nearly killed me. So yeah, my, my cats are massive trolls. They have inted me way too many times. Uh, you love Paladin, it's your favorite class? Yeah, Paladin is very fun. I uh, just wish you could use plate uh, and two-handed weapon and, you know, be a Paladin and be optimal. So basically, you wish that Feral was just Paladin. I see. Uh, that was his countdown, that's 10 to 1 in Japanese. Yeah, that makes sense. Why is Optimal Paladin Classic a dress-wearing one using totally not mage? Yeah. No, that, that's only holy. You know, real prop paladins at least somewhat use plate, though I think they still use, like, some cloth spellpower gear, so... Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Classic gearing is, is something else. Okay, I'm gonna be careful here. I won't read chat for a second. I absolutely do not want, under any circumstances, to die to the Thunder Bluff elevator. That sounds awful. Wrath is still alive? Yeah, Wrath is still alive. I mean, there's a bunch of people saying Wrath is dead, right? Just because they don't personally enjoy the content. I have absolutely no issues with um, Wrath Classic. Just, um... Here, can I... Can I open it at the same time? I actually can. You know what? Here, I'm gonna temporarily mute this, and I will... I'm gonna open up Wrath Classic, and I'm gonna show you something cool, because at least it's something that I am personally excited about. Let me just clean up my bags first. And I'll unmute when, um... I'm just going to vendor this for silver. I'll unmute when we're back over here. I think I can probably... Yeah, I can probably turn some of that into bags. I still need to get Kodo leather. So after I finish the Harpy quest, I'll kill some Kodos for the Kodo leather. But okay, so let me open up Wrath Classic real quick. I can run them at the same time, because one's PTR, one's live servers. Um... Your Felrush crits trigger a rocket explosion sound? Don't ask. That sounds fun. Uh, will I note this down? 15 minute route in mop if perfection. Loot treasure, 19 treasure. You've seen rested XP, elixir of rapid. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I leveled a bunch of characters back in mop and yeah, treasures were ridiculously overpowered. Wasn't it just Wednesday, but adults often use it in place of a curse word in front of kids because it's an innocent word and sounds similar to a curse word? Oh, I missed that. Disney recently learned the cute to us slurs to them as they named a main character in their new show a Spanish swear word. Huh. I did not hear about that. That is interesting. Um. Huh. Uh, maybe two and a half. I'm just gonna kind of skim through chat some uh to catch up a little bit. A guy claimed he max classic in one day. I called doubt. Uh, every time the evoker legendary gets crafted, we had it as a was it you Momo? Uh. I see. Yeah, similar to what we did. Definitely, I feel like everybody, if they're not trolling their evokers for not having the legendary, they're doing it wrong. No matter how many dungeons you get carried in, you cannot hit 60 in 24 hours. It's literally impossible. Yeah, I haven't looked too much into classic speedruns, so I don't know. Every time your warlock dies, it sets up a whisper chain amongst all of us that says, Omega kept W, Nax died, oh my god. When your hunter dies, Kuvo died, male classes Lamal. Oh, poor hunters. I mean, they struggle enough with survivability as it is. That's insult to injury. With cats, they'll swipe you if you don't feed them, and they'll swipe you if you do feed them. Yeah, that summarizes my cat, Lexi. At least my cat, Finn, like, he will do crazy shit like that for food, but if you feed him, he's chill. Lexi will just swipe you because she feels like it. She, if she's in a bad mood, she will just walk up and try to, like, swat at you. So, yeah, cats are just like that sometimes. Uh, Wrath is alive. Everyone is just in ICC right now. People forget that as good as Wrath is when you think about it, Wrath is just retail, but worse. You thought Wrath died with Asmongold's hairline? Okay, so let me swap my game capture really quick over to Wrath Classic. I will... Why is that not working? There we go. Okay. Temporary flashbang. So this is my paladin, right? Rob Pally. So uh, I'll log in and then I'll show it, right? Uh, Whatever is the hockey to mute in-game? Yeah, I just, I muted that just because it's easier, right? I don't have the hotkey memorized. 
Your fastest 10 to 60 was in five hours. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, as hard as it, as it is to admit, nostalgia does cloud rational judgment. I'm still having fun in a classic, though. I don't know. Uh, control plus S for English keyboard. Ah, I see. Still love Wrath. We'll say that with all the love because Wrath was your entry to the game, but Wrath was the start of the catch-up mechanics and achievement grinds. I think that's good, though. Okay, so, yeah. Finally, uh, I'm at least done with this tier, right? Because, right, I... Where is it? It would be Call of the Crusade. So, yeah, I got Tribute to Insanity 25 player last night. So I am done, or at least done, right? Obviously, still need to do multiple farm runs. But I did finally get this for Trial of the Crusader. But the thing that I am kind of excited about is I have this, Karen's Endurance. So I actually got the first 272 cape, which was kind of cool. Uh, I... I mean, I don't really think I deserved it, if I'd be honest, because, like, I I just joined this guild, right? I'm fairly new here. But the other tank already had, I think, the cloak off hard mode Mimiron. And obviously, you know, it's, right, if there's only one tank cloak, well, there's only two tanks that need it. And he basically said, I, I had at the time the Ahun cloak, Icebound cloak. So they gave it to me. So I ended up getting the first 272 tank cloak, which, like... I mean, hey, like I said, don't think I deserve it considering I just joined this guild, but I think it's pretty cool because this thing is, like, actually kind of cracked. Like, I will probably be using this for most of the rest of Wrath Classic. Uh, really nice, but I was excited about that. So that that was it. That's just what I wanted to share, right? So all that to say, I am still very much having um, fun in Wrath Classic. Just did uh, Trial of the Crusader, and yeah, I think really it's just what you make of it, right? Um, if you're just, like, obviously doing Argent tournament dailies and nothing else, then I can't imagine Wrath Classic is very fun, but I've been enjoying it, so. Uh, Prop Heli and Wrath is so busted. Yeah, Prop Heli and Wrath is mega busted. Uh, stamina completely normal in Wrath, the sign of a terrible tank in retail. In fairness, I, I should have showed the rest of my gear. That is, like, one of the only stamina gems I actually have. And that's because the rest of my gear is, like, so degen damage-oriented. Like, I have blue sockets with double strength gems in them. So, I still have cut out as much stamina for my set as I possibly can. And I'm, like, trying to optimize Wrath Classic prop pally damage, which... You know, I'm sure many people would frown upon, but the main thing is when, uh, uh, when I have like a blue socket like that and it gives, you know, plus six stamina in the socket bonus, it's like, okay, if I'm already ignoring a lot of my other socket bonuses to push out extra damage, I should probably at the very least throw a stamina strength gem in here just so that people don't yell at me too much for being too greedy with my parses and stuff like that. It's kind of like hedging my bets, right? I'm still going to be very greedy. Like, I have Berserking on my weapon, which I probably shouldn't do. Berserking is, um, for people who don't play Wrath, uh, it's a, an enchant that gives you, like, an insane amount of attack power, but reduces your armor by 500 or something like that. And obviously, reducing your armor as a tank is not really the best idea, but it is a really, really, really good damage enchant for your weapon. So... I've just been kind of using that and hoping like nobody really calls me out on it because it does do ridiculous damage, right? Like my prop pally damage parses are kind of ridiculous, but also it's so trolling to use that on prog. So I'm just kind of hoping I can scrape by with it. And I mean, I have because trial of the champion is so easy. Uh, aside from like Anubarak also requires like some stuff. So I swap to uh, on a new Barak, I swap to an effective HP weapon. I have the one-off Yogg Zero, so, you know, at least I have that as a backup. But I have definitely been playing very, very heavily on the greedy side with my builds in Wrath Classic. It's 5% armor reduction, 400 attack power. Gotcha. Yeah, that sounds about right. I forget exactly how much... I forgot exactly how much it was. I just knew that it was technically, like, not great to use. It's not the end of the world, right? Like... It's only 5%, which I don't think translates into a ton for me. And I haven't really felt a massive survivability hit for it, but I should still probably be using, uh, what's it called? Like the plus 25 hit, plus 25 crit, because that's just a flat bonus. And I guess for ICC prog, I'll probably have to run something safer, but it really feels nice getting 99 parses, so yeah. Uh, we all like what we like. Having the option to play Wrath or Classic is awesome. I hope we get TPC again, for sure. I, yeah, I really hope we get Kata. 
Definitely, I agree with that. And I hate that a lot of people seem to be against Kata existing just in general, even though there are people like me who would absolutely play the shit out of it. You love doing massive pulls with Prop Heli? Yeah, it can get away with so much dumb shit. Prop Heli in Classic genuinely feels like you're playing a retail tank. It's kind of dumb, but also really fucking fun. Gems, I wonder why they even have gems in game as no gear as slots in retail these days. Yeah, I mean, well, you get like prism prismatic gem slots. So gems have kind of changed from being a normalized part of gearing to something that you kind of do after the fact to kind of pimp out your gear and make it look all fancy. And you add like gem sockets that you get from the Great Vault and stuff like that. So it still kind of exists. Um, Am I going to die if I pull this guy? Let's find out. I was worried that it might aggro all of the other Kodos along with it, so I'm going to kind of just pull away. Oh, well, this guy hits kind of hard. Okay, I definitely got to be careful with the Kodos. Because I don't want to fuck up. Hmm. You didn't get Kodo hide? It's only a small drop chance then? So I need six thin Kodo hide if I want to craft the rest of my bags. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that if I probably, if I attack the Kodo Calf, I would imagine the Kodo Matriarch also attacks me. So I'm just going to attack this one. And if it aggroes the other Matriarch, then I run like hell. Okay. We're good. Come on, thin Kodo leather. Fucking light leather. Am I like crazy or am I supposed to get it off skinning Kodos? Is it just like a low drop chance? Anyone who knows classic stuff better than I do, if you can hopefully let me know. Because if there's another way to get it, I don't want to waste my time. 40 to 45% drop chance on Matriarch, about 30% on the Bulls, and a much lower chance on Arachia. Gotcha. Well, I will definitely avoid Arachia then, which I would imagine is a good idea anyway, because I think it is much higher level. Um, I will try to prioritize the Matriarchs then. Those are the three Kodo types in Mogor. Good to know. How did the Shaman speedrun go? Very good. Uh, it was three hours, ten minutes, I think, which, considering I had really bad RNG early on, I would say that is a very good time. All of the Baron's Kodos are like 30 or 40%, I see. I'll probably play it safe and just stick to Mulgore for now. Wait, does that mean that the Kodo Calfs have no drop chance for Kodo Hide Leather? I guess if that's the case, I'll just not even bother killing them. Let me scroll up a little bit because I missed a few messages. Um, you play Rhett and Wrath just to make yourself feel better. In Phase 4, they aren't bad though. Pretty decent. Yeah, I've heard Rhett's pretty solid. Definitely. I mean, even right now, I think Rhett just needs a little bit extra work to really make it as good as the other specs, but it's not terrible. Hey, I, I just skinned this guy. Can I skin the mob multiple times? No. Okay, it's just a display bug, I guess? Weird. Uh, you should always be maximizing damage if you're already surviving somewhat easily. Yeah, for sure. I wish every tank had that mentality, but alas. Prop Halley is pretty much invincible, so you're allowed to do stupid shit like that, yeah. I mean, I haven't really died on any serious situations yet. Any time that I've died on Prop Halley and Raid, it's like, I don't know, like, not because of my build. It's usually because I uh, use GS or, um, or uh, what's it called? Divine Protection? When I wasn't supposed to, like they had a sign pain stuff there and I'm supposed to use it later on or something like that. Those are the only times when I've ever actually died. Uh, usually to like hard mode Memoron or something like that. Uh, it's one of the only tanks that can do massive damage and be almost unkillable too. In PvP, they're even more annoying because you're the one getting fucked. Yeah. Uh, you guarantee three gems in neck, one per ring, one in head, one in wrist, one in belt in retail. Yeah, especially with the changes to Nex, with the um, guaranteed, like, tiered medallion settings, gems are, like, definitely more relevant now than they have been in a little while. Uh, 
Three and neck, you simply use items from the AH, and then, yeah, you get the other stuff, either RNG or Great Vault. Uh, Arachia is level 11, but also a particular quest mob. Oh, really? Yeah, because my, the Arachia quest for me is, it says recommended level 14, so I assume that he would be much spookier than that. If he's only a level 11, then I could probably take him right now. Hmm. Maybe I'll try it. Uh, oh, the calves are 30% same as bulbs. Okay, cool. Actually, in that case, I... There it is. Okay. I will try to get these. Oh, and they're only level 7, so that's super duper easy. The thing with Pally is that even if their damage is middle of the pack, they have the best utility in the game. I mean, in in Classic, they have the best utility in the game. In Retail, their utility is very good, but it's like, historically, their, retail, their utility in Retail has been hit or miss. Where, like, spell warding right now has a lot of very powerful use cases, but historically it has only been somewhat useful in particular situations. Whereas, you compare that to something like Gorfine's Grasp, where every single raid tier since, like, the dawn of time, Gorfine's Grasp has been extremely useful on, like, at least one boss fight, if not mandatory. Like, I, I don't even think you could do Anduin Mythic without at least one Blood DK. Ideally, two. I actually, I played Blood Decay on Anduin Mythic Prog. We ran double Blood Decay just because having a bomb Limb plus Mass Grip for the downstairs phase just made it completely trivial. So, I I think if in terms of, like, the best utility in the game, Grips kind of have to fall into that category purely because it's so often a very useful thing to have and no other class can do it, especially Gorfiends. Obviously, now A-Bomb Limb kind of opens the door for DPS Death Knights to fill a similar role, but even then, it's not always perfect. Uh, but yeah, I would say Death Knights, as a utility tank, are usually going to be your best option. But spell wording is very, 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 very nice in particular situations. Reminds me of the launch version Legion Prot Warrior with Ignore Pain. That shit was busted. Yeah. But, like, the thing about Legion launch, right is every tank was broken. So there were some tanks, like I think Brewmaster at very launch was a little bit weaker, and then it got like quickly patched and was solid in Nighthold. Vengeance Demon Hunter was actually really weak at the start of Legion. And I mean, honestly, it was kind of weak the entire way through, but at least it got buffed massively in damage by Nighthold. So I swapped to Vengeance Demon Hunter for late Nighthold uh, for the rest of the expansion, but I struggled, right? Like, it was really tough convincing guilds to let me play Vengeance DH, because even after its damage got buffed in Legion, it was like, it was tough. You had basically no major cooldowns. Uh, one of your major cooldowns was literally Cheat Death, which um, wasn't always the most reliable thing in the world. And I think, like, while Prot Warrior was solid in Legion, it's like, when you compare Prot Warrior to Guardian Druid, which Guardian Druid in Legion was so fucking broken that a lot of guilds were just running two of them. I don't know. That's kind of one of the problems in Legion. You know, if everybody's super, nobody is, right? So. Uh, Pally plus, plus Priest in it, PvP equals Pain, yeah. The utility of every tank class is all pretty niche. So some tiers in Mythic Plus Seasons, one is better... Oh, didn't click. Uh, one is better than others, yeah. Gorfine's Grass was kind of useless this tier. Not useless, yeah. That is true. It, I mean, it still has use cases, right? But I will agree with you that compared to something like, I mean, Diurna, it had some use cases, right? But um, I'm trying to think of what else. Definitely, it was more useful in a lot of other tiers compared to this one. Even like Razageth, there were some cases where gripping the ads during like first intermission was really nice. Um, we also, yeah, we used mass grip for grouping up the adds in the second intermission into a Mass Entangle, so you do Gorfiend's Mass Entangle. That was a really good combo that made that much easier. So definitely, thinking about it in Aberus, um, it's good for Echo of Neltharion, but we actually didn't even use it towards the end of Prague. Our Blood DK switched to Prot, so... Yeah... Yeah, there really aren't as many use cases in Aberus, but there are, like, nice cases where it's like, yeah, this kind of helps. Uh, like, Zaskarn, I guess, grouping up the, the golems. It, it's not mandatory, and it kind of can be accomplished the same with just the DPS DK using A-Bomb Limb, but it's still fine. So, eh. 
Um, let me... Okay, I want to make sure I don't pull multiple Kodos at once. Legion launch Guardian Druid was super strong defensively. Uh, Prot Warrior was the same, but Prot Warrior was impossible to hold aggro against because of the bug with Inspiring Presence. What was the bug with Inspiring Presence? I am not aware of that. Oh, I just looted the Thin Coda Letter. That's nice. I didn't realize you could also get it off a drop. Yeah, I, uh, can you explain the Inspiring Presence bug? That one I did not hear about. Kodo right, Calf. Uh, oh, you literally explained it one thing. Okay, yeah. See, this is why I need to just catch up on chat. I'm stupid. <laughs> um, for those that don't know, Inspiring Presence gave Leech to the raid, but the healing from that counted towards the Prot Warrior's threat. Oh, that is jank as fuck. Yeah, I did not know about that. I, I don't think I played with a Prot Warrior at all for the entirety of Legion. I actually really didn't see many Prot Warriors, surprisingly. Uh, I... I co-tanked with a Guardian Druid. I also played a Guardian Druid uh, in Nighthold. So, like, my my tank comp was I played Guardian in Emerald Nightmare and I co-tanked with a Prot Paladin. Then Nighthold, I, we ran double Guardian Druid and then I also ran with another different Prot Paladin and then I swapped to Vengeance Demon Hunter. So we had DH Prot Pally. Uh, I played with another Guardian Druid in Tomb of Sargeras. And then in... Pretty sure. Uh, oh yeah, in um in, in Taurus, I actually I had a uh, Demon Hunter co tank, so we actually had double Vengeance Demon Hunter, which was not ideal. Uh, that guild had a myriad of roster issues. That said, my Demon Hunter co tank was actually really chill. Uh, still chat with him every now and then. So even though our uh, tank comp wasn't ideal, I still enjoyed tanking with them. But yeah, I actually never co tanked with a prop paladin for the entirety or a, a prop warrior for the entirety of legion i played most tanks like i played i mained guardian druid at one point i mained vengeance a while i played brewmaster for certain fights in both uh tos and Antorus. so at least i have experience with that but i like i only played my prop warrior as an alt so yeah it's probably the legion tank that i know the least about as a result um Most classes are fine. Retail Outlaw Rogue is a joke right now. Joke in a good or bad way. I haven't been following Outlaw Rogue stuff. Uh, Avarice, you have like the first 50% ad HP on Zakarn. Yeah. I guess because it doesn't really work when the ads are in most need of dying, it's not really super important. So that's a fair point. Honestly, I don't know why the ads need to have that CC immunity of 50%. At this point, they've kind of neutered the fight so much, but I feel like just adding that in the first place was kind of a weird decision. It, it's just kind of like, okay, so it means that you have to kill the ad entirely, but then it like it becomes CC immune after a while anyways, I think. So yeah, I don't know. There's some weird decisions with the design of Ziskarn. In Legion, there was a fight where the boss destroyed the ground and the fight was DPS race. I played Vengeance DH and used the glide to hit the boss out of lava so he wouldn't hit the ground. Yeah. Um, yeah, you... Uh, that's a Fallen Avatar. Um, you could do stuff like that. The problem is on, uh, on Mythic, the area was so large that you couldn't reasonably do that. On Heroic, you could like kind of kite Avatar in and out of the lava. But Mythic, the range was so far that if you kited that far out into the lava, you would die. So the way that you did it on Mythic was you set up the platform such that you would end the fight with a single one of the rocks above the lava and fallen avatar, and then it was just a DPS race to kill him before he destroyed that last little rock that you were standing on. Fun fight, though. Yeah, I love Avatar. Really, 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 really good fight. I thought he was talking about Krosis for a second. I mean, that would technically fit the bill. Uh, but I guess Croesus didn't dunk you into lava. He dunked you into water. So uh, that was kind of what made me think it was Fallen Avatar. But also the whole like running out into the lava. Like I definitely did that um, on Heroic Prog. Like when we first got to Avatar. But yeah, it just because of the range, it wasn't really a viable strat later on. 
But I kind of like that because it made you actually think about where you positioned him. Like, I remember I had to take Fallen Avatar in a very specific crack in the ground because if you, whoa, if you stood him at that exact little spot, then the range would just barely miss that singular platform off in the corner. And that's how we uh, save that for the very end. Oh, there's another dead person. A dead Tarn named Bo Marley. Rest in peace. Echo of Notharian, it's a very, very small gain to the point that taking other talents is just better. Yeah, I think, generally speaking, as long as you're misdirecting your tank, the adds should always be grouped up anyway, because, you know, they just fixate in melee. So I feel like having things like Ring of Peace and whatever to kind of corral the adds under the boss is generally a better idea for P3. And then once they're all grouped up, you can just do like a stun rotation or whatever. We did have, I, I do think we probably would have benefited from having like some sort of uh, grip to get the ads together because there were a few times where we had really good P3 pulls and we missed it by a hair because one of the ads got like its threat ripped and ran out like auto attacked and ranged and killed them in one hit or something like that. So if we had a blood DK, then that wouldn't have been a problem. But at the same time, if we had a blood DK, we wouldn't have had multiple bops and spell wardings for P3 of Echo, which let you just cheese so much shit and push out way more damage. So yeah, it, it's kind of like, I don't know, even as a blood DK, like you said, there's better options, but it is kind of nice to have if you can afford to take it. You play Prot Warrior plus Guardian Druid and Emerald Nightmare. 0.5 came out, so Prot Warriors weren't impossible to hold aggro against, so you went Guardian pretty much exclusively, and then played Guardian and Nighthold also. TOS San Antoris, you were playing everything. Uh, mainly Guardian, Brewmaster for a bit, and Antoris. Uh, Argus, yeah. the Because there was that whole... I, I didn't end up getting to P3 of Argus, but wasn't there a strat where you, like, just use the Brewmaster to effectively solo tank the boss and just ignore all of the mechanics? I vaguely remember something like that. Um, and also, yeah, Brewmaster was really fun towards the end of Legion. I would say midway through Legion, uh, the main thing is Tomb of Sargeras 2-piece is maybe one of my favorite, for Brewmaster specifically, it's maybe one of my favorite set bonuses of all time. Being able to generate a million healing spheres whenever you drink brews, god, that playstyle was so fun. Because it made Brewmasters actually really self-sufficient for healing, which is something that historically they've not been amazing at. They're actually like decently survivable now without a healer, but being able to just full heal myself just by doing like Iron Skin Brew into Purifying Brew and stuff like that felt really, really, really great. Uh, also, some prop pally in fights like in TOS and in Taurus, yeah. Prop pally had a lot of really nice utility for a lot of fights for sure. Uh, Outlaw Rogue is about as good in endgame content as it is in leveling. Oof. Yeah, that does uh, that does not sound great, for sure. Alright, I'm at 50%, so I'm gonna make sure I focus to kill this mob without dying to a level 9 flat lane prowler. That would be tragic. Uh, Fallen Avatar was pretty great. Croesus was a fun fight because you solo tanked it. Wait, how do you solo tank Croesus? Don't you need one person to solo each of the hands? I guess unless you had, like, a druid shift into bear form and help soak the other hand so that you didn't need to? I guess I could see that. Because technically, as long as somebody could live the damage, it didn't apply a stacking dot. So, I'm, I would assume that is what you had to do to solo tank it. But I never solo tank Croesus, so I can't say for sure. Same with Staroger Atreus. You solo tanked re-kills of Gul'dan. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, I only got around to Gul'dan after the fact, so I did a bunch of Gul'dan, like, mount runs in TOS, but the guild that I was in for Nighthold was nowhere near good enough to even get there. Like, I didn't really start getting CE until Tomb of Sargeras, and then I tried to go back and do some of the older fights, like, or within Legion, right, so, like, Gul'dan, etc. Um, but I would have loved to do Gul'dan prog, like, when it was the current patch, but it was still kind of fun to do even for mount runs. It's just a really cool fight. Uh, oh, that's equivalent to what I have. Hmm. I'll get rid of this shiny red apple. And I think, just to conserve bag space, I can turn some of these ruined leather scraps into light leather. Um, Gul'dan did nothing wrong. I don't know about that. I think Gul'dan did a lot of things wrong. 
How do you have time for Mythic Heroic Progression in both Dragonflight and Wrath Classic while also leveling Hardcore PTR? You can barely hit level cap. Um, I mean, it helps that, like, to a, to a certain extent, this is kind of my job, at least, like, retail. So, admittedly, like, outside of Raid, I don't really... Outside of Raid and, like, videos, I don't really spend a lot of time doing, like, actual retail stuff. Most... I spend more time on the PTR these days in retail than I do actually playing the game outside of Raid, right? And I do raid in a two-day guild, so as far as, like, time efficiency, the guild that I'm in is, like, up there in terms of using your time wisely to, like, make um, progress in Mythic Raids, so that helps. Uh, I will say, you know, I only just recently started, um, whatchamacallit, I only just recently started doing, like, raids in Classic, and I will admit it is difficult. Uh, my schedule has been, like, very, very like strapped for time lately ever since i started raiding in both retail and classic so i'm gonna keep it up as long as i can but admittedly there may come a day where i have to just be like i don't really know if i can spend time raiding in classic anymore we'll see uh right now i've gotten i've managed to make it work especially because trial of the crusader is like what four hours or not just trial the crusader trial of the crusader itself is one hour but like all of raiding in classic right now is four hours on an, like a single night so last night we did anixia vault of the vault of archivon trial of the crusader and ulduar and we were done in like three and a half hours or something like that and that's every bit of raiding for the week so it's really not that bad all things considered but I think, like, when I hit ICC and you actually have prog and stuff like that, that could be a little bit time-constraining. I'll I'll figure it out. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. For now, I'm enjoying it. I have a decent amount of free time. But, yeah, my, my schedule doesn't allow for a ton of sleep. Let's put it that way. Uh, I am... Some days I am perpetually tired. Like, I slept for almost all of Friday... Because I basically, I got like minimal sleep pretty much all of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because I was setting up that retail druid run. And I spent so much time just doing practicing and, and figuring out like new tech and adapting the route for that and stuff like that. And then I actually had to do the run, which I started at five in the morning and finished it. And then, you know, I have to edit the video, right? So I edited the actual, or I didn't have to edit the druid video, but I edited the preparation video um edited some other stuff i have to make like the thumbnail do like the seo garbage like you know put tags and all that fun stuff that i absolutely hate but you know you kind of need to do if you're making youtube videos um all that stuff and i'm finally done with it by like 10 p.m and you know i finally finish all of that and i can just like rest and stuff and i i passed out or no because then on thursday right immediately after that i also i, I suppose i didn't need to but I tested um, the new Mega Dungeon, Dawn of the Infinite, on the PTR with some of my guildies. And that took, like, an additional two, three hours or so. And, I mean, it was fun, right? But after all of that, you know, I slept for something like 16 hours. And then I slept again in between um, our classic raids last night and this uh, stream because I don't want to be dead tired in the middle of a stream. So, uh, basically, the... Answer to your question is, I lose a lot of sleep for multiple days on end, and then whenever I have one day of free time, I spend like 90% of it asleep. That is uh, how I manage this current schedule, for the most part. Uh, one more point into shield spec. What else can I get while I'm here? I guess Arachia is close by. Could knock that out. But I kind of want to head back to Mulgor and get more Kodos. Oh, speaking of Kodos, okay. Hopefully I get enough Kodo hide leather, or whatever it is. You could do it on any tank, but yeah, you take as many sites as you can and just plan out, uh, yeah, CDs in P3. Makes sense. Uh, Krosis, you solo tanked, uh, Guardian, oh, fucking yeah, Mark of Ursal. I remember Mark of Ursal. Yeah, because I did play when Mark of Ursal was a thing. I think they removed Mark of Ursal right before my guild killed Krosis, so I had to actually get my kill without it, which sucked. I really missed Mark of Ursal, but yeah, that thing was very broken. I'm gonna be careful here. I don't want to accidentally like tab target another mob, so I'll just get rid of this prairie wolf. Uh, playing for so many years, you can get really efficient at that stuff. Oh, I, I missed that. Same way I do, prog over grass touching. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, it. I, I will say it definitely is a lot of time, right? But, you know, like Naomi said, it really is just kind of time management, time efficiency, just, um, you know, making sure that I'm using my time wisely. Like a big thing is, you know, in older expansions of WoW, when I wasn't in, a, in an established guild, right? One of the main things that used to sap up so much of my time is like pugging dungeons. So whenever I would, uh, back in Legion, right? I think I spent like 20 hours or 20, 30 hours every single week just joining Mythic Plus Pugs. I also just really liked Legion dungeons. But at that time... I was in a kind of not great guild, so I didn't have a reliable group of people to run keys with. But nowadays, if I want to get my great vault done, I just, I message on my guild discord and I'm like, hey, anyone else need to do keys for their great vault? And four other people are like, oh yeah, I can use a key. And then we just blast 20s really quickly and then we're good to go. So stuff like that, like when you are in a community with other really good players who also want to be efficient with their time, uh, you can basically get all of your necessary chores and stuff done really, really, really quickly because everyone else is on the same page of just like, yeah, let's get it done. You don't have to, need to spend like hours looking for a good pug and trying to like join groups that keep failing. So that really, really, really helps, I would say. If I had to attribute one thing to being able to save time, it's that. It's the fact that I I can get four plus 20 keys done in only four runs because I have good players to uh, run it with. That is... A really, really, really nice thing. Okay, I have enough Kodo or thin Kodo leather, so I'm going to slowly head back to Thunder Bluff. And when I get there, I can craft more bags. You went hard in OG Wrath and Kata, but once you hit college, you can never keep up time wise. Really? See, the fun, I mean, maybe my call, I'm sure my college experience will be different from other people. And I'm sure if my dad is listening, which I'd imagine he still is, he's probably going to give me shit and say, like, I wish you didn't spend as much time in college playing well. Um, but I actually found that in college, I had an easier time keeping up with the rating schedule. Uh, for me, in high school, the main reason why I was never able to really get into rating until I got into college is just because I had like so many things that I needed to do in high school. Admittedly, you know, I'll, I'll give my parents shit, but I, I get that they had, you know, good intentions. Right. But I, I a lot of times had like no free time uh, for years. I couldn't even set foot in a raid because I would I would get home from school. I had like nine hours of homework to complete. I would do all my homework. I would go to sleep. I would wake up. I would go to school, rinse, repeat. And like the the classic example I like to give is whenever I had a math test, my mom would make me study for like four hours for every single math test. Mind you, in fifth or sixth grade, right? So like in middle school, I had to spend like four hours studying for a math test. And my mom would literally create practice tests for me, like by hand on the material that she would then have me complete. And then she would grade it and tell me what I needed to study more on. So yeah, uh, I really didn't get a lot of free time for most of my childhood to play World of Warcraft, which is kind of why when I got into college and suddenly I had free time to do whatever the fuck I wanted with, I played a lot of World of Warcraft. And the first time I ever got cutting edge and the first time I ever seriously tried to get into raiding was Legion because uh, my first year in college was when Legion came out. So uh, I actually I played a little bit too much college and I struggled in class for a little while. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I did eventually graduate. So like, at least I, I got through it, but uh, it was a bumpy road for sure. As uh, my dad would all too happily tell you. But yeah, uh, that is kind of how I managed it in college. I just um, didn't study as much as I did in high school and middle school and elementary school and every single school before college. It was... Uh, it was, I really didn't have enough time at all for a rating schedule before I went to college. So it was kind of, I guess, in that way, the opposite for me. Um, but I, I know a lot of people have had different experiences. I also, I don't know, like, I definitely, I'm not like a model student for, for college. I slacked off a lot. I'll be the first one to admit that. But generally speaking, I didn't really need to study a ton for tests. And the main thing is I found, right, like, I spent so much time studying for tests in high school and stuff like that. But I would like later on, like my final two years of high school, I stopped 
actually, you know, studying and all that stuff and doing all of like the crazy shit that my parents would try to make me do. And I would just kind of show up to tests having glanced over my notes and I would get like a 90 or something. So I would be able to get an A with barely any effort. And then I kind of had that moment of like, why am I spending all of my free time studying just to get like 10 extra points in a test? If I can get A's and B's with literally zero effort, just like watch, listening to the lectures and showing up to class and stuff like that and paying attention, then why the fuck would I waste all of this extra time just so I could say, oh, I got a perfect score. And I don't know, like, I, I did that for most of my childhood, not necessarily willingly, and it's just, it's hard to justify doing that when you've seen how easy it can be to get almost the exact same score with, like, a fraction of the effort. A little bit of a tangent there, but that is, uh, I guess, a, a pretty significant thing for me, I suppose. Uh, let me refresh this, and I will drink water. And I, I missed a lot of chat. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Uh, found your channel through your 10 to 70 retail druid speedrun. Really enjoyed it. Glad to hear it. Uh, glad you're enjoying the videos. I hope you like the other videos as well, if that's the first one you watched. Love that for you, Harald, and people finding your channel from the New World Record. Yeah, it's definitely nice. That video is doing really well, which I'm always happy with. I kind of figured it would be good. Like, I mean, any sort of New World Record speedrun tends to do pretty well. Uh, there are some weird cases where... Like, my Dark Iron Dwarf run from a few months ago, initially when I first uploaded it, it actually got, like, very few views. It was, like, fine, but for a new world record speedrun at the time, for me, like, it was doing about as, like, the same as all my other videos. And I was kind of disappointed in that, not gonna lie, especially because that one took seven hours. And that speedrun, because of the memory leak issues, I had to spend, like, 12 hours, if not more, editing it in Adobe Premiere after the fact. So I put in way more effort into like actually making that video than the other ones. But the some weird thing happened where like two months after I uploaded that speed run, it randomly just spiked. It's one of those like the YouTube algorithm works in mysterious ways type things where for whatever reason, it did kind of whatever when I first uploaded it. And then it just kind of shot up kind of around the time when patch 10.1 launched. So Maybe, for whatever reason, the patch drew more attention to my leveling speedrun somehow, but uh, it was definitely nice to see that in the end, it matched my expectations for it. It just took like four months to actually get there. But this one is has been doing well from the get-go, which is it's always comforting. I mean, there's the... Um, like, any, any person who makes YouTube videos will tell you, right, when... Whenever you upload a new video, it's like the, the scariest thing on the planet, right? Because I can, uh, especially this is true for a lot of my other like edited videos where I'm spending a shit ton of time working on it. I can put as much time as possible into, you know, trying to make a video as perfect as I think it can be and all the polish. And I can be like, I think this is a really good video, but you still never know. Sometimes you think... You know, what if just it it's not on a topic that people are interested in, or rather, you know, less people are interested in this topic than I thought. Like a good example of that is uh, Wrath Classic Heroic Plus Plus Dungeons. I made what I think is a fantastic guide for Wrath Heroic Plus Plus Dungeons. And like the, the feedback I've received on it from the people who've watched it is all universally good. Like the comments are all very positive. I've gotten a lot of like people messaging me saying like, hey, I really like that guide. It really helped me out getting into dungeons and stuff. I tried really hard to like explain all the mechanics in like a thorough but understandable way. But at the end of the day, didn't really do that well in terms of performance. It's like at 7,000 views, which like is good. But for something that I literally, I spent like an entire week on that video. Just nonstop, like, testing, recording, editing. I put so much effort into that. And it was a little bit disheartening that it didn't do super well. And, like, I mean, in hindsight, I get it. You know, a lot of people are probably just too scared to enter Heroic++ Plus Plus Dungeons. So I think a lot of people just don't really even want to do them. And I think it's considered to be like, oh, you need to be, like, 5k gear score before you can even attempt it. When, like, no, it's it's really not that bad. And I think a lot of the hard parts I explain in my guide, but for whatever reason, it definitely hasn't taken off as much as I had hoped. So you never know, right? Like I was hoping that video would do well. It didn't. Uh, but I've also similarly had videos that I thought, oh yeah, this thing is going to be absolutely terrible, but whatever. Like a good example is 
my who is still using the Onyx Annulet video from a few weeks ago. I just made that as like, it was an easy video to make, right? I figured I made a lot of guides for the Onyx Annulet when it came out that did pretty well. So I was like, all right, you know, I've talked a lot about how uh, Blizzard said they were going to nerf it eventually. And it ha at, at that point, they hadn't announced any nerfs for it. So I figured, okay, I'll make like a short follow-up video, four minutes, just looking through the data on which specs still run it, how good it is for them, et cetera, et cetera. It probably will get a few views. It'll be helpful for people who watched my original videos on that. And, eh, you know, nothing too special. And then that thing gets like 50,000 views, right? So it's impossible to predict how well everything's going to do. But I am... All that to say, I am always pleasantly surprised or happy when, yeah, the speedruns do well. Because that is... It's nice. It's nice to not have to sit there and go like, oh god, it, you know, now my video bombed and I need to like scramble to do something else or you know, my channel's ruined. It, it, it is definitely scary sometimes uh, making YouTube videos is all I'm trying to say. But rewarding and fun uh, when it pans out. Uh, anyways, I'm going to get back to Thunder Bluff so I can actually craft these bags now. And I've spent a lot of time talking about random shit, so I haven't caught up in chat. Uh, same, found it through the world record. Watch the whole thing. Glad to hear it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the whole thing. I know sometimes I wasn't able to provide as much commentary as I usually like for things like that because, you know, world record runs, I need to be more focused and serious and all that jazz, but yeah. If you don't have a gamer bucket, are you really a WoW player? <laughs> oh, God. Back when you played super, super fucking hardcore in Legion, it was like clear heroic normal mode for Titan Forges on many characters all in one day, but it'll take hours to get one run in alts now. Yeah. For sure. I never ended up going, like, that hard, especially because it's kind of difficult when you don't have, like, an environment to do that in, but I at least would try to do heroics and normals on my Demon Hunter for Titan Forges and stuff, just because that was the only character I really cared about. All my other alts, it's like, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll keep it as geared as I reasonably need it to be. Question about leveling. Do you ever feel guilty about ripping the skin off those poor creatures? Ripping the skin is an interesting way to describe skinning, uh, for sure. Uh, no, I suppose I don't, because they are already dead by the time I do that. So, yeah. Uh, hope that answers your question. All right, I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to jump so I don't, like, clip through the floor. All right, we're good to go. This guy's name is Stankform, and he's in a guild called Alive. Cool. That tracks. You're in a more casual guild now, but there's so much more to do when you play at the high end. It's all done in like one tenth of the time. Yeah, for sure. Get rid of all this stuff. Hello, Daniel Z. Good to see you. Uh, how can you play so many characters at the same time and still have all the time to do X? Well, because you get more done on all the characters together than the people asking how to do... Yeah. A lot of that also comes from game knowledge, right? You know, if you're... First getting into WoW for the first time ever, and you have to learn all these different things about raiding, gearing, Mythic Plus, and stuff like that. It's a lot to take in, and it's difficult to even make sure you're keeping up on one character, let alone multiple. But, you know, for people who have been around since, like, the very first time Mythic Plus came out and are familiar with, like, all the ins and outs of that system, then it's really easy to figure out, okay, like, how do I stay optimal? These are all the things that I need to do. Okay, I'm going to do that, and then ignore all of the stuff that isn't very important. I think that's another big thing. Knowing what to ignore is a good way to spend your time. Like, maybe a lot of casual players might still do Zerla Caverns regularly, which, you know, if you like doing Zerla Cavern events, go for it, you know? But, I mean, as, as somebody who's only interested in Mythic Raiding, the moment that raids unlocked, I basically stopped doing anything in Zerla Cavern whenever, it, outside of um, getting your Spark of Shadow Flame every single week. So knowing that this stuff isn't important, and everything you can get from there is easily achievable elsewhere. I think that's another really good way to save time. Uh, your Hearthstone experience... Oh, high school experience. I can never tell what HS stands for. Uh, your high school experience was the opposite. You played WoW more hours per day than you were in class. You were in class eight hours a day. You got all your work done in class and had all evening and night to play. Yeah, my, my high school was... Um, a little bit crazy with the amount of homework they assigned. I was also in mostly honors classes up until like my senior year where I kind of like took a step back from that because I it was a little bit too much. 
but that made it really, really, really tricky. Just every single teacher assigned homework like you were the only class or they were the only class you had. It was fucking stupid. I would sometimes be spending seven hours like my freshman year of high school doing homework. Uh, and then I would have to wake up at five in the morning, do homework before I went to school. And then I would still be finishing my homework at um, lunch the next day for classes I had in the afternoon. Some of the workload was just honestly ridiculous, which is why later on I just I said enough is enough. Fuck this shit. Uh, it, it was honestly, I, I don't even think it was really good. Right. Like I in hindsight, right, like when that's all, you know, when you've been your entire life being told that, no, all of this homework will help you. And if you do a million math problems, it will make you smarter or whatever. When that is like all you've been told ever since you were a kid, you don't really question it. But in hindsight, fuck that. Like, I don't think that having a million hours of homework to do made me better or at school at all. If anything, it just made me more miserable and it made me resent school more because later on I learned that I didn't need to do that to understand the material. And it also, I, I mean, I kind of resented math in general because the amount of math homework in particular that I would get in high school was just unreal. And um, like, I, I kind of like calculus later on, you know, I, I hated calculus the first like two times I took it because calculus is one of those classes where I literally, I failed it two times and I had to take it a third time before I finally passed it. And when I took it a third time, I had, I had a tutor that actually explained to me what calculus was, right? Which seems revolutionary, right? But, you know, I had two classes where all I knew how to do was, these are the problems, you know, here are the formulas, this is how you solve it. And I hated how in so many cases, like, I and I've been told later on that, like, I just had shit math teachers, and especially after... Having a few good math teachers, I can see that. But I had so many math teachers who just focused on this is how you do the numbers, right? Oh, well, it just works like this. You know, just memorize this formula, know to regurgitate this, this, and that, and then you'll get the correct answer. But then when I actually understood, like, you know, how calculus worked and how you applied it in real life, I remember being like, oh, okay, like, that's actually kind of interesting. Now I have, like, something tangible to think of when I think of calculus instead of just thinking of all these just generic esoteric formulas that mean absolutely nothing to me. And then I actually started to understand it better and do well in it. And obviously, you know, teaching is hard, right? Like, I get that, you know, not every teacher is going to be able to explain things extremely well, but definitely I... I hated how a lot of math teachers just didn't go the extra mile to try and actually make any of that make sense. And it just felt like half the time I was going through the motions and just inputting numbers for the sake of inputting numbers. Well, let me craft linen bandages and I'll, as this is crafting, I can catch up on chat a little bit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just saw what my dad said. Um, you didn't find out if you were passing high school until the last week due to wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. That sounds uh, sketchy for sure. Uh, hello, Noah Polk. Good to see you. In college, you had a stupid long commute by bus and was doubling up on graduate courses plus undergrad research. Oh, geez. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a lot of work. You work a full working week and still manage to game equal or more hours. You don't play well, but it uh, makes me wonder what I could do if you put in hours elsewhere. But why bother when you love to game? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if it's what you enjoy, if it's your main hobby, you know, why not? That is so me, Lamal. Why would I study all the time when I can get A's for literally zero effort? Exactly. Passed everything with great grades except for German, where your teacher kind of screwed you over when you swapped exam boards, and they said my old stuff would count, so I didn't need to redo some stuff. But, you know, it didn't. Yeah, that that just sounds like shitty teacher communication stuff, which, you know, I've had a bunch of those. Uh, I could sit here and rant about some of my teachers for a long time, but I, I'm not going to. Uh... Hello, Dominic Callahan. Good to see you. I am doing good. I hope you are as well. One of my runs was featured on Wowhead. Which one? Not one of the recent runs, right? I know um, my my Volpera run 10 to 60 at launch of Dragonflight. That was on Wowhead, yeah. That was on Icy Veins too. I actually, it's funny because, uh, that, well, that's the second time that's happened, right? My original speed run, like the first YouTube video I ever made, that one got a Wowhead article, which is like, kind of what caused me to start doing YouTube in the first place, because suddenly, you know, people were watching my videos, even though I did it like as a side thing, not expecting anybody to watch it. Um, so that caused me to start experimenting with more. But 
again, yeah, I got a, a wow head and an icy veins and like some other wow news websites articles for the Volpera 10 to 60 run. That one I, I know for sure. Um, and what's always funny is when that happened, I got a bunch of messages from some of my friends who I used to raid with back in Legion. And they would be jokingly like, ah, is this you? Oh, no. It, it, they would kind of think to themselves, I assume, like, it's probably just somebody who had a similar name to what I had. And then I'm like, yeah, no, that, that's me. And they always freak out like, wait, really? You're the guy in the Wowhead article? So that always kind of makes me like smile a little bit whenever one of my old friends recognizes it and like reaches out just to see if it's the same guy. It gives you like that little warm and fuzzy feeling. Uh, okay, I can put... I'm going to put my healing potions there, I guess. And uh, I need more water. That's something I need to stock up on. Uh, you're, not playing, uh, you're not playing the game right now, but tuning in for my banter. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Uh, that happened to me in your catering diploma. You spent 1.5 school years doing the work, and then with six months left, they said we were doing the wrong course and had to start over. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> my dad said I should do a video on my unorthodox views on college and studying. I'm sure it would go viral. Yeah, thank you, Dad. I know, I know. You're still complaining that I didn't study as much as you wanted me to. But hey, you can't complain because I did graduate in the end, right? So like, you know. Hey, it... it it worked kind of sort of enough uh though i'm sure that you'll say that oh my gpa could have been better blah 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 um anyways or a near hair removal tutorial uh oh is that is that the thing on youtube i saw i saw a video from charlie about the some sort of hair removal video, which I'm not going to go into detail, but I, I don't know what that is, but I, I'm guessing that's what you're referring to, because yes, I did hear about that, which is um, interesting to say the least. <laughs> I, I also had no idea that that was an actual thing that you could put on YouTube until, you know, hearing about that. Thankfully, apparently, I've yet to see the actual video. I have just heard people talking about it, but that sounds something that is that is something for sure uh zerla caverns the place where you'll fly to the raid entrance and otherwise just spend 15 minutes there every two weeks yeah some people will grind the fuck out of zerla caverns every week but it's nowhere near necessary found a friend's friend doing the heroic dungeon weekly quest till two weeks ago yeah i mean if you aren't raiding and you don't need the gear i can see it being useful but at this point definitely it's like really not important uh you really don't need to do it let me throw, I'll throw all this stuff in my bags. Uh, is there anything else that I can craft, right? I guess maybe I should level up. I'm sure there's more, like, gear that I can make. Let's see. Embossed leather vest, I have. Gloves, I have. Did I make boots? Yeah. Okay, so I've made everything. I even made the cloak. I guess I could just get some skill points or something. And maybe I'll unlock better recipes. Okay. Should probably do that before I move on. Because now I have my bag, so I'm all set there. Uh, more Okay, I'm going to grab more water before I forget. Because otherwise, I'll just walk out of Thunder Bluff with literally no way to restore my mana. And that will be terrible. Okay. Uh, the one we did on week zero of the patch and never again. Yeah, I, I didn't really do it after the fact. I helped a few people get their heroic zero quests done. But outside of helping friends, really no point in doing it past the point where champion's gear was actually useless. Uh, how to not study for college? Super clickbaity, but also not clickbaity. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I could make a clickbaity video on that. I just don't think it would be ethical or good. Because, you know, I'll sit here and talk about how, you know, I didn't bother studying a lot in college and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, I, I don't necessarily recommend that you listen to my advice because obviously... It, you probably should try to get the best grade you possibly can. So I know a lot of people are going to like agree with me on, you know, not being or not wanting to put in like an insane amount of effort just for a slightly better grade. But still, it like I don't want to be a role model there. I fully understand that that is probably not something I should be doing. I, I walked all the way up to the leather working trainer and then I turned around, forgot what I was doing and walked back. And this is what happens when I try to navigate while also reading chat. 
Uh, you enjoyed calculus and always got the wrong answers. Failed cal cal two twice and haven't been back to school since. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, where is leatherworking trainer? Uh, expert leatherworker. Oh, here we go. And I should probably train skinning again while I'm here. Let me quickly catch up in chat just so I'm not eternally behind. Matrices in university was a big thing for you. Had no idea how they worked. Textbooks and tutors didn't explain it whatsoever, so it never clicked. Then one person explained it and boom, easy. Yeah, exactly. There was a saying in my college, you pass differential equations only on odd times. First, third, fifth. <laughs> yeah. Many math teachers were useless bullies, honestly. Out of all the subjects, math attracted the worst kind of teachers. Yeah. I like... Contrary to my math teachers, I had amazing history and English teachers throughout all of high school. Um, I had some of, like, all of my history teachers were amazing because all of my history teachers were insanely passionate about the subject. So they would just go on, like, these long, like, tangents about, like, random history tidbits that they found interesting. So it made me really interested in history because I could tell they cared about it so much. And they made it fun to learn about history. Same with English. Like, I I wasn't super big on reading, like, all of, like, you know, the Shakespeare stuff. But my, uh, my high school English teacher would, like, he loved Shakespeare and, like, all of those, like, books that you're forced to read, right? So he made reading it fun because, you know, he would kind of, like, make a big thing of it. And uh, he would, like, have people read it in, like, dramatic voices and stuff like that. So it, it was more like, I didn't love the material, but I had fun in the class, and that made me want to learn it more. Oh, thank you. You could say you did the water. Yes. Well, I meant water, like, in-game, but thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, Let's see. What's the easiest thing to craft? I guess this requires the least amount of light leather, so I'll just get, like, a craft ton of coarse thread. My dad said, as a former math major, I formally protest this unprovoked attack. I mean, in fairness, though, like, my dad is also one of the only reasons I was able to pass half my math classes, because my dad was kind of like an informal tutor, because like he said, he is a math major, so a lot of times when my teachers did a shit, do shit job explaining things, I would have to go to him and be like, okay, can you teach me how to do this? Like, I remember my dad basically had to completely teach me algebra back in, like, high school, so, yeah. Many math teachers, oh, I, read, I read that already. Um, many does not equal all, yeah, for sure. Uh, there's good teachers of all subjects. Math just got infested with old bullies in many places who never actually taught math, but punished folks for not knowing math. Yep. And your homework isn't good enough, do it again. Just do it, yeah, exactly. Uh, C's get degrees, yep. Uh, best of the worst teacher moment, student, how do I do this sum? Teacher, don't get smart with me, yikes. That is That is not good. It's the video Charlie referenced to. Uh, Classic's a great game. On a side note, why don't you buy your reagent bank and deposit all the reagents there? Yeah, if only. What do I main in Wrath? I main a prop pally in Wrath. Love to meme about how people somehow think the quality of life changes in current WoW are a bad thing. Absolutely. I, it's like, that's the thing. It, it's an interesting experience going back to Classic where resource management and inventory space is actually a thing. But if I had to pick which experience is more enjoyable, it's retail by a mile. Classic is fun for the novelty, but there's a reason why I only play it sparingly, and it's not the kind of thing that I play all the time. Okay, light leather bracers. So that is presumably an upgrade? Light leather bracers, and I need more. Yeah. Uh, oh no, wait. I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Um. Okay, I need four more light leather, and it is... It's a small armor upgrade. Not huge, not that important. Uh, Blizzard has a bad habit of grinding jokes to non-funny territory, like when they used to do a billion poop-based quests. Yes. Harlden 2023, be cool, don't do school, kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely don't want that to be my legacy, encouraging people to do poorly in school, you know? Uh, you never learned matrices until you had to tutor it after college. <laughs> Uh, that's fun. Okay, I can get rid of all this stuff. I feel like I actually have enough silver to reasonably spend it on stuff now, which is nice. Uh, there's no flight path in Bloodhoof Village, right? Yeah, I have to walk there to turn in all this stuff. Same, history and English teachers were either super passionate or just super chill for some reason. Yeah. 
Uh, your physics teacher was amazing. He taught us university level stuff in high school and things just because it was interesting. We'd passively learn what we needed to at the same time, instead of just going memorize this because it's in the test and actually applied it to real things that made us want to learn and use it. Yeah. Um, I had a similar experience with, I think it was my physics teacher. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what subject it was, but I specifically remember his name because he left such an impression. He was a really good teacher. Uh, one of my science teachers in sophomore year. Uh, Mr. Greaseback, I remember him. He like was super passionate about like not just science, but also like other subjects like history, even though he was a science teacher. But I remember um, a lot of times like during my lunch period, like me and some of the other kids like in my friend group would literally just go to his classroom and just like chat with him about random science related things like uh, I remember one one of my friends was asking him about, like, you know, time travel and stuff and, like, how realistic that would actually be. And he actually talked about, like, some of the studies he had read into about, you know, how theoretically maybe it could be done just, like, to kind of humor us. Um, and he said, you know, a lot of, like, the, the Doctor Who stuff and whatnot that you see isn't really realistic. But, like, he actually would talk about, you know, fun science stuff. And his classes were fun, too. Like, he had a lot of really fun labs and whatnot. But... I always love when teachers are actually, you know, passionate about what they teach like that, because usually you just learn a lot from them because they care about actually teaching it. <laughs> you wanted water in game, but got it IRL. Yeah. I'm sure my dad also did that just so he could make that joke. Like he, he, you said you need water so that he could bring me water and make that joke on stream to look cool. Oh, fuck. Oh, well, grats to this guy. He got ghost towel, but. I don't, I haven't, wait, I found one rare. The only rare I managed to actually find was this dude, Snaggle Spear. But I haven't found any of the actual good rares. I keep missing it. I've seen multiple people kill rare mobs, but I have yet to actually get one. Are you fucking kidding me? Masrinache is also dead here? Well, all right. At least I can skin him. <laughs> so I can feel like I, I kind of killed Masrinache, or at least I collected some loot from him. Yay. One light leather. Woo! Very cool. I wonder if the same hunter got both of those rares. God damn. Doctor Who has science in it? I don't know. I honestly, I haven't seen a ton of Doctor Who, but I've just heard about it from friends. Um, I'm sorry if I missed this, but why level 10 and not zero? I get it in retail, but I don't know for classic. Um, I, the speed run was for, uh, to, to be clear, so the title of the video or the stream, Shaman 10 to 60 speed run, that is retail. And then it, it's and more classic hardcore. So I did a retail Shaman 10 to 60 speed run earlier in the stream, and now I am playing classic hardcore. And I started from level one, right? So uh, I am not speed running um, classic hardcore. It just, I, I guess it just so happens that I played a Shaman in both. So, I've been playing a Shaman in Classic Hardcore, and I happen to do a Shaman speedrun on retail. So I guess that's probably what's causing some people to be confused. I, it, it is kind of difficult, right? Uh, the wording is maybe not super duper clear. But yeah, two completely separate things. But I wouldn't say that's a dumb question. That is an understandable thing to be confused about. You don't need calculus to parse well, a guide I'm playing WoW instead of college. <laughs> oh, that's a good clickbaiting title. You mean you don't want your legacy to be revolutionary anarchy for shame? Yeah, I don't know. Not exactly super uh, interested in that. Mr. Greaseback sounds like a D&D wizard I would make based around the grease spell. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, was, um, it wasn't spelled like grease, like G-R-E-A-S-E. I mean, maybe I shouldn't dox my high school science teacher. I don't know. Maybe people can find him or something. Um, I just wanted to say his name because I still remember him because he was a really good teacher. But uh, it was like spelled differently. Some like, I think, German pronunciation or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly. Thunderhorn Cloak. By the time I've completed these quests, I've already like way out leveled them. Maybe I should have stopped by here to turn these in earlier. Uh, what quest do I even have now? Mm. I mean, at this point, I have literally one quest left in Mulgore. I think I I will I will go ahead and say that I have one hundred percented Mulgore minus like what this singular quest in Bloodhoof Village. It's close enough. I'm already way out leveled for it. So 
I'll just move on to the barons. Uh, I kind of need to stop by the shaman trainer, but what is Call of Fire? Okay, Call of Fire is also in the barons, so I'm going to learn everything that I can, and then we're going to move on to the next zone. Fire Nova Totem. Ooh. Oh, but I need to unlock... I assume I need to complete Call of Fire before I can use this. Interesting. Uh... Hmm. What else? Can't get anything else, so... For now, that is the only thing I can get. I'm gonna take... What is it? Um... Fire Nova Totem. I'm gonna throw it on my bars, even though I can't use it just yet, but... That is probably the next thing I should do, then. I should complete my Shaman quest. I should be safe for it. How long did 10 to 60 take? Yeah. Uh, 311. Uh, did I do the quest in TV, such as preparation? I did... I did a bunch of quests in Thunder Bluff. So, I think I did all of them. The only one that it still shows here on Questy that I haven't done is this, which isn't a real quest, right? A donation of wool. But yeah, I did a bunch of different... Thunder Bluff quests, so I'm pretty sure I got all of them. And like, right, I have Questy, so it, in theory, if I'm missing one, it should show it to me. So I don't think I'm missing any, besides, like I said, this one random quest. Uh, Clown colleges were a real thing for years, so we may get gamer colleges in the future. God, that's like a dystopia. Fucking gamer colleges teaching young kids how to be Fortnite pros, that sounds not good. Doctor, oh, I read Doctor Who is science in it, who is basically Harry Potter in space. Yeah, I mean, on on the topic of like that, though, I feel like some shows definitely have like kind of a mix between science and um and like magic. Like, I always think that a good magic system should have some basis in like science, right? So a lot of times, like when I think about what I what makes for a good magic system, like I really like. For the most part, the writing in Final Fantasy, because, um, what is, Bus Driver X said, brother, this was done in official vanilla back in 05 on the real client, speedrunning on, I'm not speedrunning classic, I'm not speed, I'm speedrunning retail, <laughs> this is just me playing classic hardcore, uh, maybe I need to change the title because it's confusing a lot of people, um, but, I, I mean, I think it's weird to say heavily buffed talents altered whatever. I mean, also, that, that it's like saying that you can't speedrun Classic because it's, like, a, a now a, a different game. Okay, so then how does the fact that Classic existed back in 2004 change the fact that people can still speedrun it on Classic now? You're playing with TBC Talents' last patch of Classic. Who cares? Who Who gives a shit? <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> Isn't that what matters? Like, why why be a purist about like, oh, uh, it's not true classic because you have slightly modified talents. Who fucking cares? Right? I'm just playing it for fun. Like I said, I'm I'm not speedrunning classic, right? But I am uh like there are people who speedrun classic, so are their speedruns invalid because they have different talents than the original? Well, okay, then you can just say that it's um, it's not a one-to-one -one replication. If you want to say that, like, speedrunning classic WoW is not the same as speedrunning original vanilla back in the day, and you can't compare those runs one-to-one, -one, sure. But you could speedrun literally whatever the fuck you want, right? Just, um, I don't, I don't really see how it matters. Uh, I just, that, that comment caught my attention, so I, I interrupted whatever I was saying. All I was going to say before is, um, on the topic of, like, magic systems and stuff, uh, I think that a good magic system should actually, like, take the time to think about, like, you know, if this was, uh, can I use the flight path so I don't need to run through the barrens and potentially die? Uh, I, a good magic system should think about, like, if this was how the laws of the universe actually worked, like, how would the magic scientifically work and try to like explain it like final fantasy does a really good job of giving admittedly long-winded ex like somewhat scientific explanations for how their magic system works and a lot of people hate that i like that because i feel like when the magic system feels more grounded and actually feels like you know it has consistent rules and stuff like that it means the stakes of the story are more like 
you know, easy to get into, uh, and you don't need to extend your disbelief as much because you feel like characters actually have a limit to their power. Obviously, Final Fantasy is like a little bit of wiggle room, right? So it's maybe not the best example, but there are a lot of shows that do kind of use magic as like a get out of jail free card. So maybe, yeah, it is kind of antithetical to the idea of science, right? But uh, I think that, you know, they can go hand in hand in a lot of really well written uh, science fiction or fantasy stories. Anyways, now we could get back to whatever the fuck else people were saying in chat about classic not being valid um let's see uh what should we call it only dumb question is a question one never asks oh there definitely are dumb questions that was not a dumb question um but there is absolutely such a thing as dumb questions i am a firm believer in that i get asked them a lot but so far haven't really gotten many uh many dumb questions. An example, I, I will say one dumb question that I got asked earlier, which I feel okay saying it's a dumb question now that, you know, it's been a while, is when people ask me, what's the best way to level? And it's like, motherfucker, my leveling guide is literally linked in the description. <laughs> like, just read it or watch it or something. It's like, I'm not going to TLDR you my entire leveling guide. There is a reason that I spent months working on that. Uh, it is there for a reason. That is a dumb question. Um, but like specific questions, even questions like, you know, why are you starting at X level? That's an understandable thing that maybe isn't necessarily covered. Um, the questions that I hate are the ones where it's like people asking me to do basic search engine things for them. Um, it, like when people are like, oh, uh, like a lot of people will ask me like how to unlock heirlooms and stuff like that. And I, I will usually give them like a basic TLDR of it. Um, and I'll sometimes link them resources, but then they will, instead of Googling like the wow head page for, you know, heirlooms and stuff and the basic things of go to the vendor, get it, upgrade it or things like that. They'll ask me questions repeatedly. And it's like, look, I, I know about as much as the Google search will tell you stuff like that is in my opinion, a dumb question, right? But if you Google something, uh, and you can't find an answer, feel free to ask me, or if it's something that obviously only I can answer, that's a different story, but yeah. Uh, anyways. Question for why level leatherworking engineering will boost your chance to cheat death by far. I, I will eventually get engineering too. Don't worry. I'm just, I got leatherworking early for Kodo hide bag. And because getting early gear before quest rewards are great is kind of nice. And also armor kits. So yeah, I, I will definitely eventually switch to engineering. Trust me. I love classic engineering. I know it is very powerful. Uh... It's a real genre. It's called science fantasy. Uh, honestly, more sci-fi is more accurately science fantasy. Yeah. What's my schedule for the day? First is calculus for two hours, cranking 90s 101 for one hour, streaming for dummies the next hour. Yeah. About the math and other stuff, Neil deGrasse Tyson has a great quote. The act of learning how to do math establishes a new kind of brain wiring in your mind, a kind of problem-solving brain. Yeah, that's a good quote. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's like doing season one Mythic Plus and season two with fully Mythic Plus gear. <laughs> Jesus. Um, hold on. Oh, I, I missed. I A lot of people responded to that. <laughs> uh, well, oh, the rest of the quote. Uh, wiring. So it's not about what you learn. It's about what methods, tools, and tactics you have to develop in order to solve the problem that you may never see again for the rest of the light, your life. But you will see other problems where these methods and tools will become immensely valuable to you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No, Harlden, you're not allowed to have fun. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a joke. As I said, you're playing with TBC talents. It doesn't count. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, you're sat in a chair right now. That's cheating compares to, compared to those that stand all day. Oh, yeah, true. Love the content you've been putting out. Hope to, uh, hope or keep it coming. Hope you have a great stream. Uh, thank you, T-Dog. Appreciate it. Do you have any fishing because you've got a lot of bait on hand? Uh, when I said Final Fantasy, I was specifically referring to Final Fantasy XIV, because it's the only Final Fantasy I've played. I know some people may consider that heresy. I know a lot of people like the older Final Fantasy games. I don't necessarily think they're bad. I just haven't tried them. But uh, yeah, specifically my comments about the magic system was uh, FF14, because that's the one I've played. Half of this chat was, wasn't was born during Real Classic. <laughs> Dude, I played Real Classic. I played real classic when I was five years old, so, uh, wrong. And I can't speak for the rest of chat, but from what I've heard, a lot of them have. 
but also who gives a shit, right? Like, why does it matter? It's still fun. All right, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm going to, uh, my, my dad did not actually block him. So here, uh, I think, Dad, I think you blocked him for yourself and not for the rest of the channel, but either way, I, I did it, yeah. I, I quickly skimmed through the rest of his chat messages, and I'm, I'm just not even going to read the rest. It got to a certain point where he's, like, saying, my speedrunning guides aren't blah 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 blah. Uh, peop there are players who don't record their speedrunning just that they don't want money or whatever. Like, buddy, just to be clear, right, if I was doing this for money... I would charge money for my leveling guides. There is a reason that all of them are completely free. So that is the last thing that you should be using to argue. But anyways, he's already gone. So, uh, yeah. That is... Luckily, I don't get too many weirdos like that in chat very often, but... You, I think... Wait, oh, you're on your alt account. Here, dad. Yeah, uh... Managing moderator. I don't know. I think sta I have no idea what the YouTube moderator settings are. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't realize you were on your other account. But yeah, I think you just like blocked his own messages for yourself and didn't actually do it for the channel. But I think I gave you the mod thing now. I don't know. But yeah, that is that is wild. I probably should have continued reading him like i i don't know i give people a lot of leeway because i try to see the best in messages i get like a lot of messages that are maybe like poorly thought out initially and then you know after talking to the person for a little bit they sound reasonable uh but yeah after quickly skimming the rest of that i could clearly tell that is somebody who just like for whatever reason hates my leveling guides and just wants to come in here and be an ass for no reason which okay uh, there was a series you read when you were younger called Young Wizards. They explained science and math behind the magic, such as teleporting from the Earth to the Moon. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Anything that, like, actually takes the time to care and, like, have consistency in their magic, I love series like that. I haven't heard of that one in particular, but that sounds neat. They explained how you needed to escape the Earth's gravity and the oxygen you needed to take with you. Ah. <laughs> Harleton, can you search the airspeed velocity of an unladed swallow? <laughs> uh... This guy is absolutely fuming. Oh, goodness. Well, I just... Yeah, I'm not going to read this stuff out loud, but I'm skimming through all of the messages because I can still see it even after, after it's been deleted. Yeah, there's, there is some shit here. Uh, oh, boy. Anyways. Um, let's see. Yeah, because a solo speedrun for fun and a self-challenge is definitely the same thing as somebody who gets a carry. Yeah, exactly. Um, Bus isn't fuming, he's trolling. Yep. The smite hammer cometh. That guy was probably one of the people I memed about before who were like, you'll see how hard the game is back in the day, and then shit, like, raids were speedrun within two days of release. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, wow. I'm not gonna duel somebody. Um... I forgot how many quests there were in the Barrens. Okay, my map is, like, very covered in stuff. And I think there's more quests if I go over here. So I'm just going to head north along the road and grab these ones. And then I'll just, like, knock out Quilbors or something. Uh, Troll's going to troll part of the internet? Yeah. I, like I said, I'm lucky that I don't get them too often. That is a rare occurrence. Like... I actually, I, like, in the early days of my channel, there were a few people that I had to ban. Like I said, I, I got, like, multiple Discord raids early on, and that kind of made me hesitant to even include my Discord link in the stream description. But it's actually been a pretty good streak lately, not having too many trolls in chat and stuff like that, and people generally behaving themselves. But, hey, you know, there's always that one guy. What's my slash play time for level 13? Uh, probably not super long because I just hit it earlier. Uh, my total play time is 9 hours. And my play time for this level is 50 minutes. But 
I spent like 20 minutes just sitting in Thunder Bluff, like reading chat. So take that with a grain of salt, right? Leveling in Classic is slow, but I also am not speed leveling in Classic, right? So it's um, it's maybe a little bit slower than it normally would be. I should also do... Where is um the quest to get the Fire Totem? I kind of want to get that out of the way. Uh, Call of Fire. Oh, it's literally just up north. Okay, I'm going to go do that first before I continue. Map looking like when you accidentally show Expedition Scout pack spawns. Yes. I have enabled that setting in, I think it's Handy Notes accidentally, and uh, immediately turned it off. I don't even know what the point of that is, right? Because, you know, you don't need to know where every single one spawns. Half the time when you find those things, you just randomly encounter it. It seems like kind of a pointless setting to even have in the add-on in the first place, but, you know, hey. Wait, this is a, a manhand weapon. Okay, it is surprisingly not bad for a gray item, but it is worse than what I have on. Uh, is there a chest in that hut? No, does not appear to be a chest in that hut. Hopefully you can live to 60 on this character, unlike your world record druid. Yeah! Uh, good thing that I wasn't doing a hardcore speed run for retail, because that, uh... Oh my god. I'm getting, like, infinitely staggered here. Jesus Christ. Okay, that was... This wolf attacks really fucking fast. But yeah, that Architraz guy, the fucking little worm thing that just one-shot me, that was wild. I haven't done Architraz very often, because 99% of the time I stop doing dungeons before I ever get there. But yeah, I knew some of the dungeon scaling was bad, but that was like on a whole different level of just, you know, fuckery with scaling. Uh, he's either a troll or a guy who thinks Asmongold isn't a parody channel. Yeah. The Expedition Scout Pack spawns is useful for weekly profession knowledge, but uh, dirt piles are much easier to find and use. Yeah, for sure. Gonna lurk in Tanker Key or something, though. See you later. See you, Naomi. Thanks for tuning into the stream. Uh, and I will check out the stuff that you sent later on once I'm all done with this. Except this character will never hit 60. Uh, they may... They may, like, increase the cap. Obviously... I don't really think that I'm going to level all the way to 60 on beta anyways, right? Or PTR, right? So there's like a good chance that I get up to like 30 or something and then just wait until the official servers actually release. But I would imagine they will probably at least up the cap before they officially release it just to test stuff. And there's probably going to be people who even on the PTR servers level a character up to 60. I would not be surprised, but yeah. Uh, I doubt that I'm actually going to, on a PTR server, invest the time required to get this character all the way up there. That is probably not something I'm going to do. Right, Cranel Fists. So this is... Where do I bring this? I have to bring it to this guy in Duratar. Okay. And... I'm guessing, yeah, Chen's Empty Keg, if I remember correctly, just has multiple spawn locations all across the Barrens, so... I assume that that indicator is just for all of the possible spawn locations. Uh, okay, so... I turn this in. It says this is already complete. Oh, I guess I need to go into the dungeon and then interact with an object or something like that? Yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, I'll head over here, I'll do this quest just because I want to get my Totem of Fire, and then I'm tempted to go over to Orgrimmar just so I can learn more weapon skills and stuff like that, but I don't really think I want to invest the money into training that right now regardless, so probably better to just wait and do some Baron's quests. I think, aren't there supposed to be quests over here too? I don't see them on Questy, so maybe not? But I'll kill stuff as I go, regardless. <sighs> it is nice. Classic leveling is, like, way more chill. Is chat bugged out or... No, no. I mean, it slows down naturally, right? 
It's much more usually active like during the retail stuff. I mean, a lot of the, the classic leveling is more like laid back and chill, and I'm not like going through a bunch of things and whatnot. It definitely is nice. I'm finally caught up, though. I th think so. Uh, I can scroll up and look, but I think I got, like, all of the main messages. I might have, like, skimmed over one or two. There was also that whole section where, um, you know, Mr. Classic Andy popped in, and I admittedly skimmed over a lot of that stuff. But otherwise, I'm actually finally caught up in chat, which is nice. You can't see chat? Your last few messages kept giving errors, and you had to refresh to be able to chat again. Huh. Maybe there is something with chat that's bugged out? I don't know. Yeah, YouTube definitely runs into, like, problems every now and then, so if you told me that chat messages weren't working, I would not be surprised, but uh, I'd be willing to bet it's also just kind of slow at the moment because, you know... Hardcore classic, well, it's fun for me to play, it's not, like, the most engaging content in the world, right? I am mostly just kind of whacking things with my auto attack and occasionally using lightning bolt or earth shock. So unless I do something really like, uh, I don't know, really difficult or words, right? Um, it's probably not going to be the most entertaining thing in the world. But either way, I think also I may, because we're at, yeah, seven hours. It's been a while. The retail stuff took me a little bit longer than I thought it would. What spec am I leveling? Um, long term, I'm aiming to go enhancement. So I've been putting my points into that, but I mean, you don't really get like all the good stuff until higher levels. Classic is a lot slower in that regard. I should also, before I forget, heal up. Um, but yeah, the, the retail speed run definitely took a little bit longer. It didn't help that I spent, was it like in... An hour, 20 minutes before the run even started, just going over stuff. I also needed to do a lot of setup and looking at talent builds and whatnot. So that took a lot of time. But uh, the run itself actually was pretty good. The only thing is, I, I did like a 9-hour stream and then an 8-hour stream last weekend. And I don't exactly want to do another nine hour stream so i'll probably probably hit level 14 and call it there and then i don't know we'll see what i do uh tomorrow because i also have no idea how long uh for reference or again i'll repeat it because in case anybody didn't hear but i will be doing an augmentation evoker 60 to 70 tomorrow i have no idea how long that's going to take though because it's probably going to be longer than two hours bare minimum because that's like roughly what my record is and I also won't have, uh, what's it called? I won't have the Darkman Fair buff, because that ends tonight. So it'll be 10% slower. So it could be two, three hours or so, but who knows? Augmentation may end up being really, really inefficient to play on your own. I don't think it will be, honestly. I think it's going to be pretty strong. Based on everything that I've seen, but it's hard to say for sure. Uh, you don't remember who said it, but there was a video saying Resto was the safest way to level a Shaman Hardcore using Flame Tongue Weapon as the primary damage. I mean, it may be the safest way, but... I'm generally speaking trying to play safe, but there are one or two things that I'm definitely just going to do for fun. And leveling as a Resto Shaman does not sound like my definition of fun, to be completely honest. Because when I think Shaman in Classic WoW, I think Wind Fury Totem... I think all of those old, like, montages of people with Sulfuris just, like, you know, chain-hitting people with Wind Fury and Battlegrounds and stuff like that. That is, like, peak classic Shaman fantasy, I think. So, if I'm gonna play a Shaman, it's gonna be Enhancement, and I'm gonna go with, like, Wind Fury stuff. Uh, also, I have never done this quest before. I don't even know... This is, this is like, spooky, actually. Because... <laughs> uh... I really don't want to, like, slip off this cliff and fall. This is fucking wild. I never even knew this was up here. Shamans have, like, some really cool little quest areas, huh? This is... I, I'm just terrified of... Imagine being, like, a corpse down there 
And just every shaman who goes to complete this quest just knows that you slept and fell. That would be not great. Okay. Careful. And... All right, there we go. Yeah, I, I don't think I have ever seen this little area. I never knew that this was a thing. This is sick, though. Bring one fire tar and one reagent pouch. Uh, okay, where do I get this? The first is fire tar, a simple item usually carried by razor main spellcasters. Uh, one of the cultists of the burning blade. You can find them in a cave above the ravines northeast of Razor Hill. Oh, do I have to go to? Oh fuck, I have to go to Skull Rock or no? It's it's that area. Uh. Shit. Well, cave and classic hardcore does not sound like a great combination, so I will try to be as efficient through that as I possibly can. I also am going to try to, like, slide down the cliff here. I think I should have a good angle where it's relatively safe. Yeah, this isn't too bad. A quality lifestyle for getting better, getting better criteria. Noggenfogger, um... Okay, I'm going to heal up before I do anything else because I don't want to fuck up. Right, there we go. Uh, Noggenfogger or Delighted as it's easygoing headshots has been... I, I, I'm sorry, but I have no idea what that sentence says. I I don't know if that was like autocorrected or something. I, I, I caught Noggenfogger and I recognize the words. But I... I don't understand the order in which the words are presented in that sentence. Uh, if you have not gone up this path before, be careful. It gets the heart going. Yeah, uh, that definitely was a little bit sketchy. Some of those slopes were not really clear, so I didn't want to accidentally walk off. The first shaman quest with the pillar in the middle of nowhere is so cool. Is Oh, is that the one you're talking about it? You're over level for it at this point. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would imagine I am. I kind of tried to stay in Mulgore for as long as possible because I figure the safest way is to, from what I've heard, kill green mobs, right? Even though that's not necessarily fun. For my first hardcore playthrough, I just want to take things as slow as I possibly can. That is what I'm going to be doing here. We'll see. Uh, so I need to go... Are there any other quests I can pick up in Razor Hill? Uh, there's a level 12 quest? And Encroachment. Encroachment is to, like, killing the human guys, I think. So I probably won't bother doing that. But if there's a level 12 quest, if that directs me to the Barons, that could be worth doing. And what else? Lost but not forgotten. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, probably shouldn't be looking through my map while running. Even though, like, these guys are low level, so I doubt it's really that big of a deal. But just in case. Can I skin? Okay. Can skin Scorpids. Alright. The level 12 quest is just a breadcrumb leading to the crossroads, just delivering a lever. Or letter? Uh, eh. I'll probably still get it then, because I'm going to be going back to the crossroads at some point, so you know. Just uh, two birds, one stone. Some guy in general said, want to sell silver bar 100 gold? Uh, that has to be a joke, right? What are... What are people even talking about in Duratar general chat? The world isn't all rainbows and unicorns. Sooner they learn, the better. The unemployed, uneducated mom's basement dwellers didn't flaunt that as a triumph. What did I walk into? <laughs> there is some wild discussion going on in Duratar general chat. I guess, compared to Baron's chat, it's probably nothing, but I just kind of, I walked into the middle of some conversation going on there. Uh, okay, so that, okay, sends me to Cargill Battle Scar. Would that unlock additional quests? I think it might, honestly. It's buses people in Duradar today, yeah. There's a, 
a lot of interesting discussions going on both in general and stream chat for sure. Okay, so I believe it is the cave up here that I need to go to. This one for Call of Fire. And then the other one, Call of Fire, I think it's from the Quillbore, right? Yeah, I need Fire Tar. All right. So I think after this, I'm debating like leveling a druid for the first time on the official classic hardcore servers but i think i might play it off stream a little bit too maybe get a druid up to level 15 or something in my free time just to kind of get a feel for it and see how guardian i keep saying guardian but you know pharaoh plays in classic because i've only played feral druid in uh, tbc classic haven't really messed around with it uh before or after i know it's obviously really good in wrath but not entirely sure for other stuff. Okay, so I'm guessing that I have to go deep into the cave for this, which is kind of sketchy. Can't open that in combat. Uh, so it's call fire. Second item will be a reagent pouch from one of the cultists. You can find them in a cave. Okay, so it is this cave. It's probably just far in there. And I'm going to play it very, very, very safe here. No risks. Uh, no cultists are close to the entrance. Wait, is that like, no comma, there are cultists close to the entrance, or there are no cultists close to the entrance? I uh, just want to make sure I know for sure whether I should bother going super far in or not. Gonna, I'm definitely going to focus for now. Worn leather gloves. No, there are cultists close. Okay, gotcha. Is 22 armor okay? My crafted gear is definitely better than that. I figure at this point, because they're under leveled, I'm not really going to be getting any major upgrades from these mobs, but still always good to check. Uh, oh, there's one dead guy here, Gongor. Rest in peace. Hello, Kura. Hey, Haraldin, really enjoyed your last speedrun video. Made you laugh a lot. Thank you for the effort you put into it. No problem. I I'm glad that you laughed at the speedrun. <laughs> I don't really, like, intentionally think of things, but I know, like, some people have said stuff like, you know, the Hunter Trinket Slot thing they enjoyed, which, yeah. Um, it just, like, sometimes, I don't know, just random comments people seem to enjoy, which is nice, I guess. Better than, like, you know, having to sit there and actually think of funny things to say. Like, I feel like that's the thing. Whenever I'm trying to be funny, well, I, I don't really, as a result, I don't try to be funny a lot. But a lot of times, like, I'm told that some of the funnier things I say are when I'm not trying whatsoever. Which is pretty much most of that speedrunning because I was mostly focused on just, um, just leveling. And anything else was just kind of like an in-the-moment reaction. But I'm glad that you found it funny. Uh... Oh, there's a food crate over there. Okay, well, I gotta get the food crate. It's probably gonna be completely worthless. Probably, like, shiny red apple or tough jerky or something like that, but hey. It's like a mini chest. 46 armor, 62 armor. Okay, worse than what I have. You min-max so much, it's insane how much can go wrong since at the end uh, we're talking about leveling. Yeah. Oh, I it was shiny red apple. Okay, I, I somewhat predicted it. Yeah, I mean... I would say, like, RNG-wise, it was... Ooh, there's a cultist down there. RNG-wise, it was pretty much perfect. I couldn't have asked for much better. I definitely did fuck up slightly, right? Because the whole thing with the 10% XP pot, I, I messed that up, and that was a pretty... I wouldn't say significant time loss, but it, it lost a, enough time that I'm kind of mad about it. Because it's like, oh, that run could have been so much better. I would have been even angrier about it had I barely missed four and a half hours, because like, I would say the most important milestones are obviously, like, you know, sub a certain hour, but also uh, sub, like, half an hour or something like that. You know, every 30 minutes is a pretty impactful milestone, so I'm glad that I barely managed to scrape under that, but it could have been even better had I not forgotten that, but otherwise, yeah, it was, um, it was pretty good in general. It's it's kind of like 
tricky though, because on one hand, like I'm happy with how it turned out, but I did have a lot of test runs where my RNG was infinitely worse. And I don't know. It's that run could have easily been so much slower had I not gotten lucky. And I always feel bad when luck plays such a heavy role because, you know, it feels better when it's entirely solo questing and it's just like efficient routing. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is, right? Dungeons are fast, so they obviously will make it into the speed run. And hey. You're on the final stretch of your rogue leveling to 60. You weren't kidding. This is kind of exhausting and how bad it is. Yeah. Um, it's like, so obviously I, I've been told that if you have experience with rogue, it's better, but personally, like as somebody who really doesn't play rogue for anything, uh, I, like I said, I found it completely miserable. It's also just the main reason is the survivability, right? Nice. There's a, a chest that over there I can get because, you know, when I was doing the enhancement shaman run earlier, I have played Enhancement once or twice in the past, right? But I still don't play it a lot, and I haven't played it in a few years. But while I was figuring out the damage rotation and trying to figure out, you know, which buttons I should actually be pressing, I was still able to live pulls pretty consistently because, hey, suddenly I get a free, basically full heal off Healing Surge. So that made things a lot easier, being able to just survive any sort of pull and figure out my rotation while I'm leveling it up. Rogue was very much not that when I tried it. Uh, you either needed to get your damage rotation perfectly and kill everything before it killed you, or you just needed to kind of vanish and try again. Because you had, I tried Outlaw, and it's like you have Crimson Vile, but it does like no healing. <laughs> Which, the fact that Crimson Vile doesn't at least, like, full heal you, and does, like, at higher levels, 20% of your health with, like, a minor hot over time, it, it does way, way too little. And you have, like, Leeching Poison, which is a pitiful amount of leech, especially compared to how Leeching Poison uh, used to be back in the day. Like, if you didn't play Rogue back in Mop or Wad, old Leeching Poison was absolutely crazy. It did so much healing. It was like a proc effect. And you could, um, shit, I need to quickly finish off that imp before it does too much damage to me. Uh, so it was like a proc effect where as you did damage, you would get like healing procs off your attacks. And it was really good. And rogues were actually amazing at soloing old content because of how good their healing was. And my, how times have changed from the days of, uh, whatchamacallit? leeching poison being actually useful nowadays it is just a shell of its former self Ooh, oh wow that that's just actually really good more block more armor strength stamina fuck yeah don't mind if i do i gotta be careful though because i don't want to get caught behind uh respawning mobs so i'm gonna try to be fast getting through this cave But yeah, that was the main issue that I had with Rogue. You really have no sustain in combat. Like, you have evasion. You have other ways to, like, reduce your damage. There we go. Reagent pouch. Uh, what's this guy? Another, there's more cultists. Okay, but there's nothing else in this cave, so I think I can get the fuck out of here before I die. You miss Recuperate? Yeah, Recuperate, too. That was another good one. I feel like rogues might still have that in some form, but that's the thing, like, all of rogues, the tools they used to have, it's just been so watered down to the point where it's just not even worth using anymore. It's just kind of depressing compared to what rogues used to be able to do back in Mop and Wad. Uh, I don't really know why Blizzard has gimped their solo capability so much. And the thing is, rogue is already, like, an unpopular class, which kind of surprised me. If you look at, like, statistics for play rate of different classes, rogue is actually among the lowest. Uh, it, it is not a very popular pick. Like, it, I never really thought that was the case because I think people who main rogues and really like it are like diehard rogue mains and they will only play rogue. So you get like a lot of vocal rogue players that are like, oh yeah, I main rogue, it's so much fun. But if you actually look at statistics, it is like one of the lower played classes. And I think when you take into account the fact that as a solo like leveling experience, it is 
one of the worst by far, and definitely infinitely worse than other classes if you don't know what you're doing because your self-healing options are so limited. It kind of explains why. Like, as a new player, if I played a rogue and I was just struggling words, struggling to survive any pull, then I swapped to, like, a paladin or warrior and had infinite sustain, I mean, I would absolutely stick with the one where I could actually just pull mobs and do whatever the fuck I wanted without having to stop and eat in between every pull. It's uh, a little bit rough. You play rogue in every game, but you don't enjoy WoW's rogue, and that makes you kind of sad. Yeah, I feel that. That's another thing, like, the class fantasy of a rogue, I think, is something that, you know, is present in tons of different fantasy games, like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that, and a lot of people who like that playstyle of, you know, being the stealthy guy and whatnot, uh, it's, it really is only present in one class in WoW, and yeah, you either kind of love the playstyle or you hate it, for sure. Uh, you got to Hillsbrad, and I don't know if I'll even waste my time trying to get a group for the Dernhold and Yetimus quests. Yeah. I mean, if you can find somebody doing it and team up with them, I would say at least give it a shot, but I don't know. I've been told that Sub Rogue is good for soloing elites because it has really high single target burst damage, but I don't necessarily know if I would recommend Sub Rogue to, like, a new player, because I still don't even really know how to play Sub Rogue. I haven't messed around with it a ton, but every time I've looked at it, I'm like, I would need to practice this before I really got the hang of it. It just, like, I'm sure it's not the hardest thing in the world to pick up, but compared to something like Shaman, right, where it's just, like, press Storm Strike, press Lava Lash, you know, I, I kind of figured that out pretty quickly, but even just reading Sub Rogue abilities, I'm like... Yeah. I, I don't know how easy it would be for me to just jump right into that. So, I don't know. You're playing sub right now. It's pretty good with single target burst, but once you finish your combo, you're pretty fucked. Yeah. And, like, Outlaw is also, uh like, on the flip side, pretty good for AoE burst. But with Outlaw, it's like once your cooldowns expire, you kind of just need to run because you really have no great sustained damage, at least at low levels. Especially, like, Roll the Bones. Like, my experience playing Rogue in uh, that speedrun that I did... Uh, speedrun, using the definition very loosely, mind you. Um, but in the the fresh account, let's just call it a leveling run, that I did, it was pretty painful trying to, like, you know, just kill mobs in my cooldowns. And if I didn't get good Roll the Bones procs, it, shit was over, right? There was, um, I forget which proc it was, but there was one that, like, massively boosted my energy regen, and every time I rolled that, I would be able to really easily kill stuff. And then every single time I didn't roll the energy regen effect, I would just be sitting there auto-attacking in between, like, having enough energy to use a single ability. And once again, there might have been a better way to play it, but as somebody who hasn't really messed around with Rogue, it felt really bad. Just feeling like I had to fish for good procs to even be able to deal damage. It just felt like their resources came back way too slowly. Whereas something like Shaman, right? You know, minimal knowledge pretty much went in with the exact same amount of knowledge. Maybe slightly more, but still. Um, as I did with Rogue. And pretty much it, it kind of clicked, right? It's like, you know, you have... Stuff that does big damage like Doom Winds, press it, do single target damage. Sundering, press it, do frontal line damage or something like that uh crash lightning you do aoe and then your next stuff hits harder and it wasn't really so much resource management to be able to do damage it was some resource management to be able to increase the damage i dealt but it felt like i was always able to at least press something and i wasn't just sitting there auto attacking like it's classic wow that was kind of what felt bad why can't you scroll longer in this video <laughs> because it's a stream because it's live uh it's not well at least right now it's not a video um as we speak this is real time current present me recording this uh this is not like after the fact i uploaded a, a pre-recorded stream or anything like that nope that is why you cannot scroll past right now um uh, you just said in the video that you were matched with somebody from the Oceanic server. Since you're in Europe, you don't know. So you guys are matched with Oceanic guys too, and they have bad ping? Yeah. So, 
Oceanic servers, it's kind of weird that that is the case, but I guess if, if they had an entire region just for Oceanic players, it would probably be a bit difficult. But yeah, they, they have Oceanic servers that are also part of the North America region. Uh, it's like Frostmourne, other stuff, or what is it? Frostmourne, Storm Reaver, and I think some other servers. Frostmourne is the big one. I don't really know many of the Oceanic servers, but I do know that uh, Frostmourne is the most popular by far. It has a few fairly sizable guilds. I know, honestly, is a, a big guild on Frostmourne. And, like, they have good players. Like, there is, there's obviously a stigma on North American servers against certain, um, like, Latin American servers like Ragnaros, right? Which, you know, I won't really comment on that, but it is a stigma. But there's nothing wrong with Oceanic servers. Like, I've had generally positive experiences with players from there, but it's, uh, the ping is really, really bad. So, either you're, you queue into a, uh, oceanic instance and you have to deal with like 400 ping or they queue into yours and yeah and i had it, it can get really bad like if i had a vortex pinnacle plus 20 that i did with some guildies like this is a few weeks ago and we did it at like two in the morning and we didn't have a healer so we just pugged an oceanic healer and I think he entered the instance first, but we didn't notice, so we got an Oceanic server for our dungeon, and, like, all four of us had horrendous ping, and we were trying to dodge the mechanics while, like, you know, lagging behind two seconds. It was brutal. And then, of course, doing the Vortex Pinnacle Dragon Boss on 400 ping is just one of the most miserable experiences possible, so my guildies were, like, missing the tornadoes and getting clipped by the expanding ring and stuff like that. Um, but, of course, you know... Because I, I have to brag about it. I did manage to solo the entire rest of Tyrannical... Uh, what, what's the boss's name? Alteris. Even with 400 ping. Because Vengeance Demon Hunter is fucking broken. <laughs> but uh, it was... It took me like 10 minutes. I was just sitting there doing Vengeance DH shit. While all my other guildies were just dead on the floor. Just talking about random bullshit. I even... I uploaded it as a video for a little while. But you know... Uh, it didn't perform super well, so I took it down. But it was never meant to be, like, a main video anyway. It's just sometimes I'll upload, like, smaller videos and keep them up for, like, a few days because I think they might be entertaining to a few people. But if it's not, like, super informative or helpful and it doesn't do well, I'll usually just unlist them after a while so it doesn't, like, interfere with anything else. But that was a fun little thing that I got to do. It just reminded me because that was involving Oceanic servers. So, yes, I think... One of the dungeons in the leveling route, I forget which one, I did get an Oceanic server. And thankfully it wasn't that bad. Because I only really put two and two together and was like, oh, wait, that was an Oceanic server. Uh, that's why my abilities were lagging slightly. But there are times where it is just really bad. And you, it's just extremely, extremely laggy. Uh... Holding shift allows you to compare items in your bag to what you're wearing. Oh, yeah, that's... I forget that that's how you do it in Classic, because I have something in Retail that lets me do that automatically, so... Um... But Camo Hunter Durder, yeah. All Rogue needs to solo an Elite is uh, Garrosh and Shoot. I mean, I don't know if that's um Retail. Maybe you could solo an elite. You definitely could not solo Yetimus with Garrosh and shoot, right? Yetimus will just leap to you, ignore your Garrosh, and just, you know, clap your cheeks. So, yeah. Uh, definitely can't solo every single elite that way. That's one of the reasons why Yetimus is so difficult. Yetimus cannot be kited. Uh, you cannot, like, slow him and just kite him around. Um, you can't, like, outrange him or anything like that. You just need to fight him fair and square and face tank his abilities. So that is the reason why Yenimus will just slaughter people sometimes. Because they don't realize that and they try to kite him. And then they get absolutely spanked. I'm out of here. Fuck this. Geomancer. <laughs> that mob spun right on top of me. That was fucking scary. In fact, I'm just going to use a minor healing potion here. Just because why the fuck not? I have 12. And if this isn't a situation that calls for a minor healing potion, I don't know what does. I think I can sneak in a lightning bolt here. And an earth shock. And... Okay. That was... Ooh. Wait, this is, like, good. Right? 
I mean, Swiftness Potion is obviously a really good consumable, but I'm pretty sure that's like a really nice world drop to get. Shit. Nice. Uh, I need... What do I need to kill for... Okay, I need to kill the Geomancers for Fire Tar. Let's see. That guy's also a Shaman. Roll the Bones is your favorite thematic ability in all of WoW. I'm glad you mentioned the energy thing. Energy throughout this entire process has made you feel like enhanced shaman early game when you didn't get procs. Shaman got better, rogue didn't. Yeah. Um, personally, roll the bones. I mean, thematically, I guess you could maybe say it's a fun ability. Roll the bones is probably my least favorite ability in World of Warcraft, period. I, I have never understood why they changed combat to outlaw. Quite frankly, I think outlaw in general is really not a good spec i know some people love it right but having played combat rogue a decent amount back in mop and wad and it being my favorite rogue spec jesus fucking christ i got a, the worst time to resist at least it didn't chain pull into other mobs but that would have been really fucking annoying um but yeah i i liked combat rogue back in the day and i really don't like uh outlaw like <laughs> at all really i think roll the bones is just a dog shit ability i think whenever you have rng that impactful it just no longer makes it fun because then you're not like it's not the small amount of rng where you're like oh i got like really good procs that pull that felt nice it's you either get the procs that let you do damage or you just feel bad <laughs> that is not a fun play style in my opinion like i said to each their own you know but really not a fan and i i mean the the pirate stuff being you know thematic is nice i suppose but you know, generally don't love it good night owner good to see you and you'll catch up tomorrow uh, i probably won't be going for that much longer if it's any consolation i'm gonna get my fire totem and i'm gonna get to level 14 and then we'll probably stop for the day uh, try to get rid of this razor mane wolf. Make sure there's no patrol sneaking up on me. I should be good. Okay, I'm going to try to make sure I save enough mana so that when this guy starts running, I can earth shock him. There we go. I already looted that mob. All right. Oh, I got Fire Sapta off the first kill. I think that was my first Geomancer. Nice. That's, um, I don't know if it's a guaranteed drop, but that feels lucky. Now I'm going to get the Crossroads Supplies. Just going to be very careful here. Check for patrols again. How do I put this video on 2 times speed? I actually think you can watch streams on 2 times speed. I've definitely done it before. Like, whenever I'm catching a stream late, I will usually watch it on 2 times speed so I can get caught up to, like, the most recent stuff. It always feels weird when like uh, your stream finally catches up and you finally reach the uh like the most recent bit after watching it on two times speed though. It's like a jarring transition and you're like, "Oh, wait, this is actually live." I'm worried about that mob. I don't want to I'm going to tag this guy with fire shock or flame shock and I'm going to kite him back because I want to make sure is he still fucking casting? Okay, there we go. Earthshock, and wow, and quickly eat up. Oh, okay, he pulled that. I'm going to go in, grab the quest item. Look, I cleared the way all the way over here, so if he wants to try and steal it, and he's going to pull extra shit, I, I assume there's a respawn time in that quest item. Mm. Should I go over here and try to save him? He looks like he's fine. What's this guy? Is this playing? Yeah, he's a warrior. 
Oh no, I think he's actually in trouble. Oh no, he's good. All right, I'll I'll throw him a heal. There you go, buddy. I have yet to actually watch somebody die, which kind of surprised. I figured that I would see that happen at some point. I've seen a lot of dead bodies, but I have yet to like literally be there next to somebody as they overpull and get themselves killed. I think that was probably the closest I've ever seen to somebody actually dying. Which you would think that in... How long have I been playing this? Like, I played... In almost 10 hours, I have yet to actually watch somebody die with the amount of corpses that are just littered all over the place. It's poor timing, I guess. But you hear all these stories about people doing dumb shit and overpulling and stuff like that, and yet every single player that I've actually come across so far is kind of doing what I'm doing and just playing it really safe. And other than... Like I said, that one dude who just fucking charged in headfirst, pulled two mobs, and then nearly died trying to steal my quest item, which, like, karma's a bitch, but, yeah. Um, Daniel Crane, or Daniel Kane Gaming said, Harl, love your content. Uh, we're leveling 10 to 70 tomorrow. I am the tank. What is better, Paladin or Warrior? Um, Paladin, but... Uh, like Effortless said, the class you enjoy. So, I definitely, like, in terms of what is better for leveling, absolutely, without question, uh, it is Paladin. Paladin is, for low levels, second only to Guardian Druid, and maybe even then, for, like, group content at low levels, probably even Paladin, then. Guardian is good, but it's, like, kind of weaker in the early game, whereas, like, Paladin just kind of pumps from level one. And Guardian has, like, better mobility and stuff, but, yeah, Paladin is kind of just unkillable, even without a healer, so. If you want a really, really safe option, definitely go with that. But obviously, once again, play what you enjoy, right? If your heart is set on Warrior, don't play Paladin just because I recommended it. Thank you very much, no problem. Uh, yeah, sorry it took me uh, so long to get around to your message. I'm, I'm slowly catching up, it's just when I was doing that set of mobs i wanted to make sure i wasn't reading chat because all it takes is one glance away and looking at chat and then i can accidentally pull a patrol and then everything cascades and it's a disaster and yeah i just wanted to make sure my eyes were you know on the road so to speak while i'm doing this yet i knocked you all the way to south shore what the fuck <laughs> that's uh yeah Definitely, if you're fighting Yetimus, make sure you're either standing inside the cave, or at the very least, have your back up to the cliff. Because if your back is to the cliff and you have ways to negate the knockback, you can, like, recover fairly easily. But if you pull Yetimus and you know, your back is the south shore, you have only yourself to blame on that one. That is, like, setting yourself up for disaster. No worries, man. We don't want you to die. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, I, I've been told that level 14 is like where most people die, so I'll be I'll be stopping here today, or level 14, what that is, last two bars of experience, but we'll see how it goes in the future. Any news in that leveling add-on? Uh, don't expect a lot of news in the leveling add-on. It is a long-term project. So I, I mention it only because whenever people bring up the fact that like, oh, I could help you work in a leveling add-on, I do want to be clear that it is something I'm looking into long-term, and I would rather do it myself, to be honest. Um, so that's the only reason I bring it up. But keep in mind that this is not something that I am like actively 100% of the time working on. I am still in the process of learning how to create an add-on, right? So I would hope that, you know... It's the type of thing where in the past, when I actually like put my mind to doing something, I usually am able to learn how to do it and figure it out. So if I keep up the research and keep looking into how to make an add-on, I'm confident in my ability to eventually learn how to do it and make that. But I'm not going to set myself to like a hard release date. Uh, it's ready when I learn how to do it and when I learn how to create one up to a standard of quality that I'm happy publishing. So uh, expect it to be a while. I would actually say don't even expect it in 
Uh, I went for the calendar. Don't expect it in 2023. If I get it out by the end of 2023, that will be like the best possible outcome that I can hope for. Um, but realistically, I am I am just working on it and it, it is ready when it is ready. And definitely don't expect any frequent updates on it because, uh, you know, I, I will tell you when it is very close to completion and that is about it. Let me, all right, pull this crocodile. And yeah, like, I know that a lot of people are probably looking forward to that. So like, I don't blame you for asking for the record. Like, I get it. <laughs> uh, it's something that a lot of people have wanted for a while. And it's something I wish I just had the knowledge to be able to do. But alas, I don't. So I, I will definitely try to get it out as soon as possible. But it is, I would rather like my, in terms of like my priorities, right, is I would rather make you know, good written guides and good video guides for leveling and stuff. And then after that, I would rather work on other guides, you know, for non-leveling stuff in retail, which, you know, those, those I enjoy making and they've recently been doing pretty well. So that is like my next priority. And then in my free time outside of, you know, making the guides, you know, making those uh, retail videos and like doing other stuff like streaming or, you know, extra, extra speed runs or whatever, then my free time is spent partially working on the add-on. And then some days I just don't feel like playing WoW or doing anything video related. And I want to play like, I don't know, Total War Warhammer. Or recently I started playing Doom Eternal. Uh, I just finished Doom 2016 like a week or two ago. So very, very slowly in my free time, I'm probably going to be playing Doom Eternal, which a lot of people have told me for a while is very good. And I'm finally getting around to it. It's like one of those games that's been on my bucket list forever. So, but I really enjoy the first Doom. So I'm sure I'll enjoy, enjoy the second. Uh, okay, I need to focus. I'm going to stop and read chat really quickly, and then I'm going to continue along this path. Uh, you were a blood decay. Oh, I just saw the second part of Necron's message. You were a blood decay, so you survived. Jesus Christ. Getting knocked all the way to South Shore and living? Yeah, that's something only a blood decay can do, pretty much. Or a prop paladin, really. Uh, you enjoy both. You were looking for any underlining extra advantages. Uh, mostly just, yeah, the main advantage to Prop Paladin at low levels is uh, Tears Enforcer, whatever it is, that makes it so every time Shield or Avenger Shield does damage, it splashes. And then if you get that plus Soaring Shield, it just does like kind of ridiculous broken levels of damage, even at low levels. You just pull a bunch of mobs and your damage kind of grows exponentially because every single additional target that hit with Avenger Shield is causing an additional splash that hits all of them. So... With that, plus like Divine Toll, you can kind of just erase entire packs, even with really crappy gear. You're going to dip out. Good luck. Have fun. See you around. Thank you, Cadvan Acerbus. Good to see you. Uh, watched a streamer the other day get a text from his wife, and he walked into the lava in Ragefire Chasm. <laughs> Funny, but sad. That's depressing. Yeah. Uh Best thing is playing WoW well isn't procrastination, it's research. Sometimes, um... I don't know. I There's only so much I can actually say is actual research and well. I can definitely attribute like a lot of my testing runs to like research and stuff like that. But in many cases, you know, you might think that, oh, like researching for a video is just playing the game. And sometimes it is, but a lot of time it is more focused testing uh, or grinding out certain things. Like, for instance, when I made my 411 trinkets video, I spent a lot of time just mindlessly grinding to get some of those trinkets to test it out. And that's not necessarily fun, but it is required if you're, you know, actually going to thoroughly test this. Um, okay, so I need to drink the fire septa. Do I have to go all the way up top? Or I have to go over here to the brazier of dormant flame. Okay, so I need to drink this first. I'm out of range. Okay, where do I drink this? I have to go to the stone, I guess. Let me put one final point into shield spec. Yeah, I drink it at the stone. Ooh, little glow effect. Then I walk up here. And now I fight the minor manifestation of fire. Does my flame shock even work in this? Wait, 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 wait. Actually, before, before I fight this, I should probably make sure I have all my buffs. I can even drop a totem. Like so. 
can I get anything else? I'll at least drink just to make sure I'm full mana. Alright. I'm going to try to flame shock it, even though it's probably not going to work. Yep, it's immune. I don't know what I expected. <laughs> but worth a shot. All right, not too bad. Look, I'm sorry. I, I, I butchered that pronunciation. I don't know. Uh, oh, Searing Totem. Bring the Torch of the Eternal Flame to Cranel Fists in the Barrens. All right. So I will I will hand in this quest. I will get my Fire Totem. And I actually think that's probably a really good stopping point when I get my Fire Totem. Because that's like the next Shaman class quest, right? So I will also get... So what's the difference between Flame Nova Totem and Searing Totem? I'm guessing Fire Nova Totem does AoE and Searing Totem does single target. If I had to guess, that makes logical sense. I'm going to be extra careful here, though. <laughs> going down this path is fucking terrifying. I'm going to try to skate down the side. Because it looks like it's not too bad. Just a little slide here. Yeah, that's, that's reasonable. There we go. Good luck when you start the wind totem. Just don't fall. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to doing that. I've heard that some of, some of, well, some of the Shaman Totem quests are apparently very hard. I've never done them before. This is my first time playing a Shaman on Classic. So, we'll see. That one wasn't too bad, but, yeah, I don't know. Isn't there, like, Call of Water? I remember hearing Call of Water is apparently very brutal. Maybe I'm thinking of a different one, though. Uh, just got through watching your Alliance speedrun video. I have a question or two. Does my level 70 from PTR transfer back to retail? What is the horde equivalent to Lock Modon? Uh, check my leveling guide. I have a leveling guide. You can find it in the description. The, uh, the TLDR is that it's kind of two zones. The horde equivalent to Lock Modon is both Silver Pine and Hillsbrad. Um, but I mean, all of that is explained in my leveling guide, right? Um... Oh, and as for your question about the PTR, no, it does not transfer back. So uh, every single time I level a character on the PTR, I never get to really play that character again. I could play it from the point where I copied it over, but the entire reason why I copy it over to the PTR is specifically to test out the new content, which is why I think it's funny whenever people say that like I'm only copying it to PTR to like save time in the speed run whatever it's like i mean yeah sure but mostly just to test the new stuff because keep in mind i lose effectively like in terms of progress on my characters i lose hours of leveling time whenever i test stuff on the uh, test servers because that is a character that i don't actually get to keep so the entire reason i do it is because it gets to showcase some upcoming stuff so that you know when patch 10.1.5 actually comes out you guys already know how to play around the fact that, you know, riding training gets learned automatically and how that will change the routing and stuff like that. That's the reason I do it. And I would be doing, um, whatchamacallit, I would be doing the entire thing in the PTR if it wasn't for the fact that I needed to be on live servers for dungeons. And unfortunately, the dungeon changes in uh, Dragonflight can't really be tested on the PTR, so yeah. Uh, Fire Nova is a one-time AoE bomb. Okay, so Searing Totem is just, like, consistent damage. Fire Nova is just, like, a big burst of damage. Gotcha. I feel like both of them have their use cases, then. Water is long. Water Totem is the worst quest in the game. Worse than Whirlwind Axe? Warrior Quest, really? Yeah, I've it's been a while since I did Whirlwind Axe, but I remember it not being too bad. But also... By the time I got to Whirlwind Axe, I was, like, level 35, so I'm pretty sure I was overleveled for it, so it wasn't too difficult. But yeah, that was a while ago, so I also don't really remember. Going for the hardcore, yeah. I mean, it's fun, right? It's slow, it's very different compared to, you know, retail leveling, but uh, I've been playing this 
on and off, like on streams after I do like the retail speed runs. And it's been fun. Got into level 14, which is, I would, from what I've heard, like pretty solid. And like I said before, I'm probably going to play this a little bit more in my free time. Not the shaman though. Shaman I'll save for streams at least. And I'll probably play a druid in my free time. Nice. Oh, that seems like a lot of experience. That was, yeah, that was a ch fucking shit ton of experience for that one quest. I guess it is pretty nice, right? Because I got a new ability and the flame totem thingy. Repeatedly attacks an enemy within 20 yards and it lasts for 30 seconds. I see. Interesting. You're really interested to see how my augmentation evoker run goes tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, I haven't played around with it, but I'm probably going to do a little bit of practice on the PTR later, just to see. So, uh, I'll, like, mess around at least with the talents, kind of figure out generally what build I want to play. But it's like, I just, I wonder how much it can buff itself. Because it definitely does decent damage when you factor in, like, all the effects it applies to other people. But since a lot of its stuff is, like, modifiers for other people's damage and you're supposed to put it on people who are already going to be doing a lot of damage it probably makes it kind of bad for solo content just because your existing damage won't be great but i think that's kind of one of the interesting things about it that's why i kind of figured oh hey an augmentation evoker uh 60 to 70 run could be fun because you get to really see like how reliant they are on having another person there to buff compared to something like devastation which just just does like ridiculous upfront damage so it should be interesting I will try to approach it like an actual speedrun. Um, obviously, I need to be on the PTR, right? So it's nothing super serious, but I will get like gear for it. I will prep um, the profession things and we'll try to see like how it stacks up in terms of time compared to, you know, my recent Druid run or the Paladin run that I did last weekend. And I think as long as it can get a time close to that, that should at least show that it does solid damage on its own. But who knows? Uh, I really have no idea how it's going to go. It could end up being a massive slog and take four hours or something, which, God, I hope not, because uh, one of the nice things about 60 to 70 runs is they're generally a bit faster. Uh, oh, and before I end, I should probably go back to Crossroads just so I can go into the inn. That way I can collect rested XP. And I do have... What do I turn in Call of Fire? Oh, I turn it in, in the Crossroads. So, yeah, I can turn in these last few quests in the Crossroads, go into the inn collect some rested experience, and then we will call it a day for the stream. Makes sense. Thanks for the answers. Didn't think it transferred over. Um, yeah, like the Horde route and Alliance route for 10 to 60 are definitely a bit unique, but I have two completely different routes for them. The only thing that overlaps is Warlords of Draenor, but also there's some you know different things for each one. But yeah, if you find the website, it has you know full detailed guides for both factions. And for 60 to 70. Any predictions if you think it'll be good? I guess I kind of already did my predictions, right? I, I didn't even see that message, but I did kind of ramble on generally how I think it'll feel. I mean, it, it is kind of a, a tough thing because of the support nature of it. Like, to be clear, Augmentation Evoker right now with the current tuning is broken. And you will probably bring one or two in most raids. Uh, from the current tuning and current like guesstimates from theory crafting people, that is what it is looking like. It is uh, very, 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 very good. So, yeah, that is something. But also because they are a support role inherently, that is kind of how they were always advertised. Hard to say for sure how it will translate when you have nobody else there to support. I am curious to see how that works out for sure. Uh, you always wanted to ask me this. Am I a speedrunner and also probably ran a lot of characters through leveling? Uh, there's a lot of completely abandoned zones full of engaging stories. Do you think WoW had focused the end content? Uh, Baron's chat? <laughs> ba the only thing I see is Baron's chat. Any level 11 who needs a weapon, twin bladed axe of the tiger. And then Zugshot says, I'll take that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, fairly tame Baron's chat, all things considered. Um, but do I think WoW hard focusing the end content kind of ruined the overall experience? Uh, I don't know. I think it's hard to say. 
it kind of depends on what you consider to be the main WoW experience. I kind of understand why WoW shifted like that over time, because there are a lot of people who just don't like leveling. And to be honest, I don't love just leveling characters for the sake of leveling characters. I've said this before. I initially started optimizing leveling because I wanted to get it done as fast as possible. And also because I created these like little challenges for myself. Oh, these are like level 20 quests. Sheesh. Um, I created like, I, I, well, I didn't create while speedrunning, but like while leveling, I would create challenges for myself to basically keep it more entertaining. And one of those challenges is I was like, I'm going to try speedrunning now. And that's what I did. And that's how I got into it in the first place. Uh, so I don't like love, love leveling. Some people probably enjoy leveling a hell of a lot more than I do. And there's a lot of people who absolutely despise leveling and can't stand it. And um, I think that if the game too heavily focused on that over time, it would be harder to get new people into the game. But also, it's the classic example of, right, like when you can just install Fortnite and drop in, you know, uh, to any place and grab a shotgun and blast, right? I don't play Fortnite. Um but I think it's the classic example of, like, a game that is very easy for, like, kids to understand. So if a kid is going to choose between, like, playing Fortnite, which is very intuitive and free, or World of Warcraft, after you have to pay a monthly sub for it, and it takes, like, a shit ton of time to actually even be able to reach the, you know, main quote-unquote content, a lot of people may not see the leveling process as the journey, you know, as a lot of us do. So, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say that it ruined the experience. I just think it changed the experience. And people who came for original Classic WoW back in the day, they stopped playing. And then other people like me who actually found the endgame rating side of things more fun stuck around and continued playing even through like WAD and BFA and Shadowlands. So it's just a different game, right? And now they have Classic, so both people can play it. Uh, is this Hardcore PTR? Yes, this is the PTR. Uh, gonna hit 60 Volpera Rogue by doing the Heritage Armor quest. Nice. That's a good way to level. Baron's chat just isn't the same without the Chuck Norris jokes. That is very true. I would imagine that, like, back in the day when, like, Classic first came out, Baron's chat was more lively. At least it was on my server when I first leveled. But, you know, it's hardcore PTR. Most of these people are just, like, focused on uh, actually doing stuff. Oh, wait, somebody died? <laughs> somebody said in general chat, my girl Bighorn didn't make it. Please F in the chat. <laughs> she was an amazing warrior. Oh, rest in peace, Bighorn. Um, yeah, WoW changed as the gaming community changed. This is natural, I agree. Yeah. But hey, at least, you know, classic's still around for people to experience it. Uh, but yeah, so hit level 14, streaming for over eight hours. So, you know, fairly long stream as uh, most of mine go. So I'm going to be stopping it here. I will once again, I'll repeat it just for anyone who is only joining in very late. I will be streaming again tomorrow, once again at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to be doing an augmentation evoker 60 to 70 speed run. And I'm probably going to do more classic hardcore after. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the stream, and I will catch you tomorrow. Peace.